I see you bobbing your head. Oh, she's oh, yeah, going to start this is singing my jam. in a minute. Yeah. It was. It was either the first cassette or first CD I ever bought was Ace of Base. Saw the sign. 97 1. We're going to talk wings in the nine o'clock hour. JJ McCarthy not going to the draft. Hmm. 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 Indeed. I want to preface this with I definitely did not burn my house down. And when you guys label this in the Odyssey app, my wife's not listening. But she does occasionally scroll. Don't label this Jim almost burned down the house. Just for my own sake. I was alone yesterday. Oh, we can get food. very creative with that. Yeah, I'm sure. And I'm sure you guys have been there. You've got a couple burners going. You're making yourself a meal. Mm-hmm. I'm not staring at the stove, watching TV. And the smoke alarms start going off. Fire, fire, fire. I walk over. I had lit... An oven mitt on fire. So like there the were thumb. actual flames. Yeah, it was like there was yeah smoke and like the little smoldering uh-huh, on the thumb yeah. of it. Were you wearing it? I was not wearing the oven mitt. <laughs> I walk over. The house is starting to fill. I'm starting to crack windows open. I threw the oven mitt in the garbage. Smoke starts. In the garbage. Go- in the I, wasn't, garbage. I wasn't thinking. What? I wasn't thinking. Wait. I just wanted to get it out of the way. There's a sink right there too I, I in your know. kitchen, right? I yeah. Know, I know. So you with throw water? it in with all of the, I, the 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 flammable items. Yeah, I was lucky there wasn't something flammable what? in there. It wasn't like on fire. It was more smoldering, and you know, had it started. Still, not yeah. a not a great decision. So I, I circle back and I see smoke coming out of the garbage can, and I go, "That's not a good." So I grabbed it out <laughs> from the non-smoldering end. Yeah. Put it in the sink, washed it out. But the second smoke triggered the alarms a second time. And we had more fire, fire, fire. And I got to get up and, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, you have ones that talk to you? Yes. Oh, it does? Yes. It actually says fire, it fire? It says fire. It's like yelling at me. Oh, I've never heard and that. And I'm like, I get it. I screwed up the first time <laughs> and the second it? time. Yes. Oh, I'm sure you can. You, I'm sure you, can, you can. Yes, yes. But all it's... Jim, fire! <laughs> Save the cat! It's yelling at me. My cat's like running around. I'm like, okay, this is great. <laughs> I nearly set my house on fire. Has anybody had a close call like that? Oh, boy. Uh, um, not that ever burned down the house. We've had some water damage where somebody will throw on the the, the laundry sink a, a, a towel, something that they use to clean up a mess mm-hmm. and not put it in the washing machine, but they'll hang it on the edge and then all of a sudden it gets bumped in. You run a load of wash and it it doesn't allow the water to flow out of the tub. We've had that exact yeah. situation happen numerous times where we've then had flooding into our basement. Right. Mm-hmm. We had one time mm-hmm. our dog, I think we only had one dog at the time, left the house and I, I got into the garage. I was like, I think I smell gas. Like I, something, it smells like gas. And yeah. before I even opened the door, I could hear that tick, 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 tick. The dog had turned, jumped up onto the oh. oven and had twisted the knob. Kaboom. And had, yeah. So our dog almost burnt down our house. Near Blew death it up. Yeah. yeah, no kidding. <laughs> uh, I have my grill sits in the back, right outside the back, one of our back doors. And every once in a while, you know, I, I don't clean it. Nobody cleans their grill like they actually should. And I had started the grill, getting ready for, you know, throw some burgers on, some steaks, mm-hmm. whatever. And I come back and I'm like, wait a second, I didn't put the... And put the steaks on you. Why is it smoking so much? And I, I lift up the grill. As soon as I lift up the grill, whoosh, the flames are coming up, and it was you burning burn off. Your face off. <laughs> yeah, I did lose uh, some eyelashes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Eyebrows gone. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And you know, it, it's just kind of one of like uh, even lighting a grill sometimes, where you know hey, the lighter on it is broken, and so you're using the uh, you know a little torch or or a lighter to to light it, and it finally catches it. Poof. Like I've done that. And so when I lifted up the grill, obviously flames everywhere. And so I, you know, quickly closed the grill and then scooted the grill. You know, it's got wheels on one side as most grills do. And moved it a little bit further away from the house. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. I think most people have had some sort of experience like that, John. I've learned uh, that you really shouldn't be multitasking too much Mm -hmm. if you're burning off the grill, kind of. You know, leaving an untended grill can have dire consequences. Oh, sure. Yes. 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 I've seen seen friends that have done this and have actually melted their grill. Yeah. Yeah. I've had a pretty scary experience, and I was young. I was, I was probably 20-ish, and I was making a frozen pizza. And the oven that we had, you know, I'd just do it like I'd always done it, turning up to 400, 
let, and letting the thing cook, all of a sudden I start smelling something. The element inside the oven caught fire. And there was like this, just this little blaze, and it was moving towards the back of the oven. Like a wick. Like a wick. Like it was going to, and then eventually it goes into the wall. It's electric oven, obviously. And your, your wall would have caught fire. The wall potentially Your house could have burned down. And I'm, what do I do? What do I do? And your always first thought is, is there something I can do before I call 911? Right. I didn't know what to do. I was pretty ignorant. And then I had like this like uh, spark go off in my head. What if I turn off the power to the entire place? Oh, like the fuse? The fuse, yeah. yeah. And it stopped. Oh, there you go. Lives to tell the tale. Mm-hmm. 248-539-9797. Your close encounters nearly burned down your house or caused damage to your house. I don't know why I threw it in the garbage can, John. I, I just keep going back to that. I had thought like it was done burning, I guess, because it wasn't like actively on fire. There weren't flames. There weren't flames, and I was like, I just need to get it, because it was making smoke, and smoke was going to make the detectors go off, so if I just shut it in the garbage, the smoke yes. would go away. That's not what happened. No. The smoke just found yes. a way out of the garbage. And and the fire probably was uh, moments away from reigniting. Good thing I had taken the garbage out earlier. It was one of the only few things in there. But mm -hmm. anyway, multiple fire alarms going off at the house yesterday. Two, four, eight, five. I love it that they were screaming at you, fire, fire. You guys don't have those? No. No, no ours ours beep yes. uh, when the batteries are dead. And then when they go off, it's, it's the most annoying sound in the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure it set off like the whole house because it wasn't just one. I could hear the ones upstairs oh, yelling all at connected. me too. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. you got to know upstairs if there's a the fire, fire downstairs. downstairs. Get the hell out of the house. Yeah. 248-539-9797. Your stories. We'll get to J.J. McCarthy's decision not to go to the draft in Detroit. And yes, the Red Wings. All coming up 9 o'clock hour. It's 97.1. Making some pasta, boiling some water. Oh, a little bolognese. That was not bolognese. I knew you were going to say that. Boiling some water. You're impatient. You crank up the heat. I left an oven mitt too close to the flame. Walked away. Smoke everywhere. Mm. Oven mitt on fire. Well, not on fire, but smoldering to the point where smoke yeah. filled my home and the detector started yelling at me. Fire, fire, fire. <laughs> that's, that's how it sounds. And uh, yeah, then I, I, I thought I had... Remove the situation. No, just remedy the situation. Complicated it a little and bit I, more. And then another fire, fire, fire. Your stories, 248-539-9797, nearly burning down the house. Ticket texture says, new nickname for Costa, burnt cookies. What a dumbass. It's from Tim. <laughs> Is this what I asked you guys for relatable stories so I wouldn't feel stupid. Instead... Everyone's just going to make fun of me. This one says, now we know Costa can't react under pressure, which is something he's going to bitch about when players don't do. Imagine him freaking out like a child. LOL. So much for uh, playing along. Just going to dump on me. Uh, you guys got stories. Let's get to Jeff and Macomb. Jeff, good morning. You're on 97.1. Yeah, guys, I had a, uh, a similar situation. My wife was went to put something in the microwave, and we had just had a birthday party 
for my daughter, and the plates had uh, metallic like designs on the mm-hmm. outside. Mm-hmm. She didn't know not to put it in the microwave. I'm sitting there at the kitchen table, and all of a sudden she goes, quick, quick, quick. I'm like, what? What would you do? <laughs> I look over, and there's flames in the microwave already. Oh. And she opens the door, and the flames get bigger because now they got oxygen. Yep. So she goes to go for the fire extinguisher, and I said, no, no, I know how to handle this. So I grabbed the towel, I wet it with the, in the sink, and I threw it over the plate, and it doused the fire with no smoke. Oh, it saved go. the microwave. Oh, saved the microwave. There yeah, I you figured go. that was just toast. Do you still yeah. use that microwave? Yeah, it still works. <laughs> I guess that's the thing. Yeah, if you ever have a fire, if you ever have a fire, take a wet blanket, throw it over it. Okay. There's a joke. I learned that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I learned that from work. I, I put some corn tortillas in a uh, toaster oven. And don't do that. They start on fire. (laughs) Experienced man. Yeah, so I've had a few experiences. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. I think we've all seen the the metal in the microwave at one point or another, Uh and and you start to see the the sparks. Yep, I did that when I was a kid. My mom used to put Capri Suns in the freezer so that I'd have them at school, my Uh lunch, and they'd be cold. Well, I wanted one that moment, and they were frozen, so I just... Put it in the microwave the and <laughs> <laughs> whoops. But but once it goes and it melts the inside, shouldn't it douse itself? Probably. I mean, I don't remember. I don't remember sun? having yeah. to like do anything, but I remember seeing sparks in the yeah. microwave. It's not supposed to do that. Yeah. Huh? Uh, Craig in Ortonville, this says that you did burn your house down. Oh no. Well, my forty by sixty garage. I was. Uh putting my snowmobiles away for the summertime because the season was over and I had pulled the batteries out and put them on charge on my workbench, which was next to some paint thinners and paint cans and stuff like Mm. that. They arced and I had every fire department from four different cities there trying to put it out for hours. Oh, Oh, geez. Oh, yes. Propane tanks going off in the garage. I mean, it was terrible. Jet skis burned to the ground. I'm, I'm everything that was in that garage, every toy, every everything, gone. Oh. How close was the garage gone. to your house? Not attached, I'm sure. Uh, about forty feet. It was me with a fire ho- with a garden hose while this was going on, spraying the side of my house Oof. while I watched my garage going boom. <laughs> propane tanks going off, paint cans going off, everything else. So, yeah, it was uh, not a pretty sight. No. Ooh. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> Made me feel a little better. <laughs> yeah. Do you grill? I do. Okay. Yeah. Propane. Well, obviously. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I could yeah. be a charcoal well, could, guy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you could be. Yeah. I could have a gas yes. line from the house. Some people do that sure. now. Yeah. Yeah. That's the ultimate way. Yeah. If you can, if you got that set up. Mm-hmm. Jeff and Romulus, what's your story? You're on ninety-seven-one. <laughs> Jeff. You're welcome. What's Jeff doing? What do you guys think? Jeff? Oh, I think he's a he's is he EMS. Oh. Oh, maybe he's he's listening to the CB. Who still does that? Jeff? Truckers? Yeah, I mean, what what's wrong with a CB? Do you have one? Maybe. Nothing's wrong with it. I just didn't think people still did that. Oh, yeah. My grandpa used to do that. Uh-huh. Yeah, love the CB. I want to put Jeff on hold. Maybe we check back in and see if anything's changed. Yeah. All right. Let's get to Mike in Windsor. Mike, good morning. You're on 971. Good morning. So I've got a story. So I'm a hockey referee, and I had this thing called the hockey locker where it looks like a metal locker. It's got a heater on the top, and I put my stuff in there to dry out and to warm it up before I go on the ice. So I've got a game in a couple of hours, so I turn the hockey locker on. Now, to add to the story, the motor burnt out, and I had a hand dryer in the top of this thing. But I had it on a timer. That's my saving grace to my wife. By the way, this didn't work. So I heated it up. I go into the house and relax for a while before my game. And all of a sudden, I hear the smoke alarm going off. And it's like, oh, it's by the front door. It's no big deal. My cat bumps into it. I realize it's not coming from the front. It's coming from my attached garage. I go to the garage door, look into it, and it's hell. It's black. Nothing else I can see in the garage. Now, right next to my hockey locker is my motorcycle and about 75 liters of 93 high-test gasoline. Oh, boy. Okay. 
I'm screwed. So what do I do? Like an idiot, I put a wet towel over my face, go into the garage, and open the garage door. You guys know where this is going. Oh, yeah. Uh, you fed it with the more air. Black smoke is pouring out of the garage. Oh. Just then, the fire department is coming into my driveway, and my wife is coming home with my daughter. Oh, boy. I come out of, I come out of the garage hacking and, and coughing. Fireman, who's a friend, a hockey friend of mine, says, Mike, did you go in the garage? No. And I'm hacking away on the horse. And I realize, I turn around, and it was all the plastic of my helmet, my skates, my pants were all burning. But what was, it was the black soot. Yeah. Because everything was plastic and it's all burning. So it stained the entire inside of my garage black, but all the flames stayed inside the hockey locker. Oh, so you saved your bike. Oh, yeah. And the garage and the house. And everything. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> and everything. Uh, Ticket Texture says you sound like Derek Lalonde. Have you heard that before? <laughs> yes. What's your are, expect- are you Derek what, you know, what, What's your expectations for so, next year? Oh, I you know, <laughs> I don't want to say. <laughs> Could you imagine if Derek Lalone called in and was like, "Speaking of things that are being burned down right now, our season." Yes. Yes. Um, do you see who's on line one? I do. It I says do. yes, the Michael Stone, Stony, Stony. Good morning, hey guys. Hi, guys. Great show. Uh, I'm surprised Gov didn't even mention this because, and John, you might not even know this. I, I once um, was trying to do a good thing and uh, cook my kids pancakes. And uh, all of a sudden, the fire alarm, uh, the smoke <laughs> alarm's going off, screaming. And uh, yeah, idiot me cooks pancakes on a cookie sheet. What? what? <laughs> no! <laughs> you poured them yeah. on the cookie sheet and put so them in the put oven? A cookie in the sheet? oven? No, on the stove. Oh, the right. stove. Oh, on, on, the, on the stove. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> How'd that you go for you? This, John? No. Oh, I went for that great. There's smoke, pillar, smoke everywhere. <laughs> at, at the exact same time, my Cindy comes into the house. She goes, what's going on? And I said, I got it under control now. <laughs> oh <my gosh>. yeah. <laughs> it's words. the scariest yeah. words. Yeah. Uh huh. I've got it under control. Well, Don't worry. I'm sure she believed you. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. So that was, you know, that's, I, you know, see, see what happens when you give Winsworth the day off. Somebody else has to cook. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. good. Better than uh, I was doing better when it was five five last night. But yeah, I'm doing all right. Oh my gosh, I'm doing fine. I'm back uh, with I'm, I'm with uh, Gator on Monday. All right, all right. We'll we'll look forward, we'll look forward to uh, the crosstalk. Hopefully the season's and not over you. by then. Yeah. yeah, exactly. We'll see you Monday. Then. Yeah, hope, 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 hopefully. Yeah, the season won't be over. But uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't want to be. I don't want to be negative. You know, I might get Jared Gop on that. <laughs> <laughs> Stony, it's always good to hear your voice. Big boy. Yep. I, Gov, you had to know that story, right? You've worked with the guy for like. Ever. Yeah, I knew it. I mean, okay. I guess I don't throw Stoney under the bus all the time. Right? <laughs> I mean, so he put the pancakes the, the, the on cookie a cookie sheet, sheet on, the, on stove. the stove and decided that that was how he was going to. I mean, it, I guess it, you could look at it and say, well, it's, I can make this a griddle. And he could make more pancakes at one at time. One, at one time. I, yeah, but maybe. you have to multiple burners on. Not in his mind. Okay. I'm guessing. I don't know. I swear he did something with a grilled cheese once too, like trying to make one in a toaster or something. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> oh. One of a kind. Danny Farmington Hills, tell us your story. You're on 97 1. Uh, yes. I, uh, in college, uh, me and my buddy thought it would be a good idea to smoke a few joints in our dorm room. Uh, quickly to realize that's not really a good idea. Um, the smell goes everywhere. So my buddy threw a thing of popcorn in the microwave, hit, I think, like 10 minutes. We went and did something else. Next thing we know, the microwave is on fire, um, and the entire dormitory was evacuated with uh, fire trucks showing up. Uh, thankfully, uh, nothing happened. But <laughs> don't put my, don't put popcorn in the microwave for 10 minutes. We go back the you know, the, the brick of, uh, it's a brick, a charcoal brick <laughs> all of a sudden. Yeah, use the popcorn so. button, right? That's what you do. Uh, 
Well, yeah, you do is you also don't do that after you smoke a joint. No, you're no kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I know where your issue started, and we can trace yeah. this back to uh, Danny. Good stuff. Good story. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. I did not almost burn down my house yesterday, but the detector went off twice. Not my finest moment. You guys have had some clearly. Scary stuff happened inside the home. We'll get some more of your stories. I need to know John's thoughts on J.J. McCarthy not showing up to the draft in Detroit. And yeah, we'll make time for the wings before the hour ends. It's 97-1. Hey, in an instant, an auto accident can put you in the worst financial position of your life. It is a must to hire the right lawyer who will make sure that the insurance companies pay what they owe you. Injury attorney David Femininio and his team have been making insurance companies pay for almost 30 years. And he can help you with your injury case as well. David is ready to speak with you personally right now and share that three decades worth of experience. If you call 855-65-CRASH or go to his website, getdavidgetpaid.com. That's 855-65-CRASH or on the web at getdavidgetpaid.com.
<laughs> yeah, you're welcome. There we go. Burning, Burning down, down the house. house. Knew that was coming today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Some ticket tax coming in. <laughs> Lit an oven mitt on fire yesterday, threw it in the garbage can like an idiot, caused a second round of fire alarms to go off in the house. We've got some of your stories on the ticket text. John, I do, before we get back down that rabbit hole, the list of players who will be in Detroit for the NFL draft is out. It's only 13 names. Mm -hmm. Feels kind of light. And the one that people have noticed, J.J. McCarthy, not going to be at the draft. His prerogative. How much of this is the uncertainty of where he's going to go? Oh, I think a lot of it is. The, I mean, I've heard as high as two with Washington, and I've talked to some people there that they're they're starting to really get on board with with him as a player. Um, but it, it, we've seen as high as two. We've seen you know early on in this process, not even in the first round, and we've all seen other guys like Kyler Murray rocket up. Uh, you know, draft boards. We saw it with Baker Mayfield. All of a sudden, he becomes number one pick. Now, I don't think anybody is is going to misconstrue this as J.J. might be the number one pick. That's going to be Caleb Williams in Chicago. But w- there's, there's a wide variance of where he is being talked about as being drafted, and not just among the mocks, about, you know, general managers and organizations. But here's the other thing, and, and th- here's where I'm disappointed as a fan. The draft is in Detroit. This is an opportunity to have one of our own, and it wouldn't matter if it was Eastern, Western, Central, Michigan State, Michigan, one of our own to be able to walk across the stage in our town as a top draft pick. And I would, I would love to experience that, be there, cheer them on, and just have, that's one of us. I'm not going to ask you to speak for him, but you know him better than I do. He's a guy who seems pretty pretty chill, right? The whole meditating. I can't imagine he's afraid to be shown on TV falling. Like, why is this a preference of family? Like, why do you think he's not there? Well, I know that him and his parents and his sister, um, his fiance now, they're all very tight, and and I'm sure that they would uh, they're they're choosing to do this at a separate location and watch by themselves. They're still gonna be. ESPN, NFL, all of the, the the networks will have cameras there viewing the moment that it happens. Um, but it's just not going to be, you know, live downtown Detroit. In our backyard. Some ticket decks coming in on burning down the house. Good morning. Love the show. In kindergarten, the fire department came to my daughter's school to talk to the class. And the fireman asks, does anyone know what it means when the smoke alarm goes off? My daughter excitedly raised her hand when dad's cooking. She's nine now, and every time a smoke detector goes off, the family yells, Dad's cooking. It's from Scott in a car. Ticket Texter says, My roommate once came home drunk and put a pizza in the oven at 3 a.m. and passed out. It was very concerning when I woke up to a house filled with smoke. Gov, you didn't think to just turn the oven off? You turned the whole house off? He panicked. It was a big, you know, hey, you don't want to. I said I was pretty ignorant and I just had a big light bulb and I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess I'm going to turn off just the, the one fuse. Yeah. Yeah. But then you're sitting there reading it. Uh, which one is the yeah, other one? Uh, yeah. They, as I'm going to tell you right now, it was heart racing watching this little flame go through the element and trying to get to the back of the wall before I figured out what to do. I often make myself poor man's nachos in the oven, just tortilla chips and cheese. One time I put the oven on a broil instead of bake. Went back after five or ten minutes, the pan was literally on fire. Oh! I put the whole fa- I put the whole pan outside in the snow. Parentheses, not in a garbage can. <laughs> now the trick with the nachos in the oven is you put it on bake and then you finish it with the broil. with the broiler. Yeah, just to get the yeah, just little, a little toasty you know, minute. After a couple beverages in college, fire up chips. I may have forgotten to add water to my Easy Mac in the microwave. Thor Paul was not very happy. <laughs> College came home from a night of partying, wanted pizza rolls, passed out on the couch while they were cooking, almost burned down the entire row of townhouses on campus. Oof. That's one. You know you're tired. You got to stay there and watch so you don't fall asleep. As soon as you sit down, you're out. And people love the Stony Pancake story on yeah. the ticket text, too. Speaking of uh, things burning down, the Red Wing season, we'll get to that at 9.35. But first, Heather with the news. 
So uh, Ron Goldman's father, Fred, has reacted to the death of O.J. Simpson, saying that he's really only thinking about how Ron died nearly 30 years ago and not about how the man acquitted for his murder has finally passed away. Um, Goldman said he's focused now on all the pain that he has dealt with over the years since his son passed away. He added the only important thing is remembering Ron and Nicole Brown Simpson yeah. in, in light of his passing. Right. And he did go on to say that Simpson's death was, quote, no great loss to the world. Um, Simpson did die owing the Goldmans more than $100 million plus interest, which yeah. uh, they're likely not to see say, how's that going to go down yeah much yeah. of that money no. they all they'll try to get what they can but most likely not walk away with much of anything uh detroit officials have released some transportation details ahead of the draft which is just weeks away so on thursday that marked the two weeks from the start of the draft well mayor mike duggan and some other draft planners held a press conference to help make sure fans really uh, comprehended how crazy it's going to be down there. He kind of said, hey, if you're used to going to a concert or you're going to a game, you can get there an hour and a half ahead, you know, park a couple blocks away, walk, get to your destination on time. He's like, it's not going to be like that for the draft, right? It is going to be crazy and you need to be prepared. Um, Another official kind of said it's going to be like Times Square on New Year's Eve. It is going to be packed and it's going to be busy. So there are several options for transportation. Fast shuttles, Park and ride shuttles, you got the Q line, smart bus shuttles, DDOT, there's Uber and Lyft, a Detroit People Mover, and Smart Bus is offering these park and ride services from 12 locations across Metro Detroit. And when I heard some of these locations, that's when I really started to grasp how big this is the going scope. to be. Yeah. Uh, Great Lakes Crossing, right in my backyard. You can park there and you'll get a bus ride from Great Lakes all the, all way, the way downtown. downtown. Wow. And they're all over Lakeside Mall. You can park there. Um, that's a hell of a bus ride. It's a long bus ride, but that's the scope of it. How crazy it's going to be. You're not just going to be able to drive downtown, park and walk, especially if you want to get right there in the action. If you want to be right there by the main stage, it, it sounds like that's going to be hard to come by. And don't be disappointed if you don't get there. And they do say, hey, there's going to be tons of events going on all around the main stage area. So take advantage of all those things, too. And don't be disappointed if you don't get to stand right where you hope to be and, and plan ahead. Yes. You got three yeah. days. You got Thursday, you got Friday, you got Saturday plan ahead. And they say, make sure you download that NFL one pass app onto your phone. You want that. It's a ticketless event, but you want to make sure you have that app downloaded and ready to go. Uh, let's talk about Shohei Otani, his former interpreter. You guys stole more than $16 million over two years from the superstar to pay off those gambling debts to an illegal sports book. Feds announced on Thursday that he is being charged with federal bank fraud, huge charges. And uh, during a news conference, U.S. Attorney Martin Estrada discussed details on how the interpreter got into illegal betting in the first place. Some things that stood out. Mitsuhara averaged 25 bets per day. Whoa. Per day. Lost a net balance of negative $40 million in total with all the wagering over that nearly three-year span. Couple other notes. So there's some text messages that came out in all of this, right? Uh, With the, the bookmaker. And the bookmaker said, yeah, it's all BS. Obviously, you didn't steal from him. I understand it's a cover-up. I totally get it. Mitsuhara replied, technically, I did steal from him. It's all over for me. Oh. Well, there you have it. Jeez. A 20, you said 25 a day? 25 bets a day, John. And huge they were bets. averaging, what, $12,000? 12, yeah. Yeah, oh, huge. Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm going to end with this one. Do you guys know BarkBox? Are you familiar with BarkBox? It's like this subscription-based box that gets sent to you with like dog toys, dog treats. Oh, okay. It's specifically for your dogs. And yeah. there's all sorts of things for humans like that. Um, but this one, we 
We've done this before. Didn't last too long. But anyway, if you're if you're familiar with it, um, BarkBox is now expanding and they're offering something crazy. They're going to open basically their own airline, Bark what? Air, and you can now transport your pets on a private, friendly, pet friendly charter flight. And it's uh, not cheap, though. So starting on May 23rd, Bark Air will fly weekly between New York and L.A. And then they're also going to offer bi-monthly services between New York and London. Right. And you can go and reserve a spot. Now, get this. Um, So the one way cross country flights cost six thousand dollars for one dog and one owner and then the transatlantic flight will cost you eight thousand dollars so this isn't for regular people no no it's not no it's for people no not at all it's for the elite the the elite that have large dogs that can't fly on regular commercial flights is it only dogs well and the owner no i know that but like like uh, could you take a turkey a turkey, like because we 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 had Wait, those news stories with these weird animals showing up. I think up. it's only for dogs. Oh, okay. Yes, just for your for a dog. But so but I'm trying to understand the market so here. Let's if you're say really you have rich, a great Dane. But if you're really rich, you just take them on your jet. If right. you're not rich, you, you're in you, that middle area. This is a yeah. weird market. Uh, it's space like, in between. Yeah, I guess. If you have a small dog, you can take that on a regular flight, right? Yeah. Which a regular flight flight from New York to LA is about 220 bucks. You can put them on your lap or under the seat, or you could do a cargo hold. But most people don't want to do that, so put them in a kennel. You, well, people, maybe people you're also moving. don't want to do that. Yeah, drive across the country. Anyway, that's Heather with the news. Dive into the best pool in history, Stadium Swim. It's located at Circa Resort and Casino, where you can catch all the biggest games at a viewing experience built for sports fans. Chill in one of their six pools, three different levels, perfect view of that massive 40-foot-tall high-definition screen. It's Stadium Swim. It's America's favorite place to watch football. Playoffs coming up in basketball and hockey. You got baseball underway. The swim up bars, the Insta ready selfie walls. It's a nonstop party. Score your perfect game day spot with the cozy day beds, private cabanas, or grab a lounge at the center of the action. Reserve your place today. It's 365 days of sports poolside. It's located at Circa Resort and Casino in downtown Las Vegas on Fremont Street. Stadium swim, all sports, all seasons. Book your spot today at CircaLasVegas.com.
Yeah, rocket shot from Carlson. Needed Lion to make a big save at some point yesterday. Wings lose. They pick up a point. Woo! Uh, they need two. We're at the yep. point of the year now where I know, hey, one point, it could still matter. They're not out of it. 15% chance to make the playoffs. You need two points. Didn't get two against Washington. Didn't get two against Pittsburgh. John, this is the game they've been playing, though. They're not out. They're not dead. They're not in. They're just kind of sitting there in purgatory, dangling that carrot in front of Red Wing fans going, hey, come on. We're close. Right. You're so close. You're so close. So the positive side of this is we finally have a team that's in a playoff hunt. The negative side of this is th- four weeks ago, five weeks ago, they had a nine-point cushion. It has completely evaporated. So there's frustration and the, the frustration is even more because the teams that they're competing with, the Penguins, the Caps, and the Flyers, other than the Penguins, no one's really done much. They've allowed the Red Wings in a very soft bubble at 85 points to remain in the mix. Mm-hmm. And all you're, all you're hoping for is just one win. One win against the Caps who had lost, what, six in a row – and I know that the, you know the, the the Penguins are kind of on a heater. They've won seven of ten, mm-hmm. but this is where you need the wins the most, and they just keep coming up short. Because one point, no, it's not. It, it, there's no need to celebrate one point. They have a pulse. Do you? They're still alive. Are you still invested, or are you emotionally done? They're not out. Fifteen percent chance is slim. I mean, they probably got to go three and zero here. Two and one if Pittsburgh collapses. See, that's the thing. That's why that point was so big. They're hot. That was your chance to leap ahead of them, stay ahead of them, control your own destiny. With Washington losing, it was right there for Detroit. It was. And I mean, does two oh and one? Does 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 five points get you in? Five points put you at ninety. Kind of feels like maybe ninety will. So you're so, saying there's a chance. But but their margin for error, even going into the Washington game, was was very small. They lost that one. Margin for error even less against Pittsburgh, and they they split the difference. They come away with one point. There is all there is no margin for error now, and that's the world we've been living in. And I mean, I I'm going to see it through. I mean, but in terms of like feeling good about it, no. When you say it's a playoff race, like I think if you would have said, "Hey, the Wings are in a playoff race," people would be excited. But it's the it's the way the race has been run. It's not like you've got the wings sprinting and the penguins are sprinting. And everybody's giving it their best and they're all and everybody's winning left and right. It's a lot of losing. It's not really a sprint. It's it's the, they're falling down a, a cliff and like technically you're moving forward, but it's kind of clumsy. This whole thing has been clumsy for the Red Wings. And even the game last night was clumsy, right? They get down early. They tie it up. They get down again. They tie it up. Lucas Raymond, unbelievable. He has a hat trick. He won't let them lose. They get to overtime. They still don't win. I mean, they gave up a shorthanded goal in the game, and I thought that was it. But you can't bury them because they come back and they 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 suck you back in. They yeah. draw you back in. You can't turn the TV off because here we go. It's overtime. <laughs> you never know. That's been this season. And I just emotional check in for Red Wing fans. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Yeah, it's it, it's been very painful. Since the end of February, March was horrific. And now we thought, well, maybe April will be a little bit better because they are right there and it's, hey, it's it's put up or shut up. And they've basically shut up because they, other than last night, Lucas Raymond and his hat trick and Mo Sider, and we celebrated his 10 saves the other day. He's been playing well. Like those two young guys, the benefit is that they're getting this playoff you know, competition, experience, whatever you want to label it as, now as young players. And I think it will benefit them. But in the grand scheme of things, okay, that's for future years to look back on and say, here's how we've got to continue to do things. Right in the here and now, we want a team that can go out there and get a win and get into the playoffs. There is this belief like, hey, um, you're in a chase. This is progress. You're further along. I have a hard time feeling good about falling short of the playoffs. For a team that began the year adding Alex to Brinkett, give up a first round pick for a guy who can score 40 goals. That was a clear investment to start winning a little more. Patrick Kane, not a young dude. That's a, hey, we're trying to win a little more. 
The opening night roster featured two Iserman draft picks. It wasn't exactly a developmental year. It was, we've got adults in the room. They build up the cushion. I know we've talked about it a lot. Everybody knows they're up nine points, but that's part of the story. When you got a bunch of vets and you got a nine point cushion and you choked at the end of last year and you're choking at the end of this year, I can't go, well, it's progress. I have a hard time with that. I know Lucas Raymond is ascending before our eyes. I know that Mo Sider has been handed a really tough role and has had to lunch pail it every single night and I think is better for it. I just have a hard time looking at this and being like, hey, it's progress because they're in a race. Because it's the how. It's how the race has been run that I really struggle with. I know this is progress. I know they have more points this year than last year. I know eiserman has got a pipeline of picks that are on their way. I do think better days are ahead and all that stuff. But how this has gone down, where there was a real effort to make the playoffs, only to have them go, what is it, 5-15 and 15 the last 20 yeah. games? They could pick up a couple overtime points. But wins and losses, right? We talk about how you need twos, not ones. 5-15 and 15 the last 20 games. Last year, 7-18 and 18 at the end of the season. Like, I'm sorry, I can't feel good about it. But they, but I know, they, they, John, they're not out of it, so I got to watch Saturday night. I have to, because if they win and Pittsburgh loses, they're right back in. Well, they're in, they're holding a spot. And then they get Montreal the last two games. Like, this is the game they're playing where they, they won't let you check out. They won't let you bow out. They're in it just enough to tease you. Well, and, and there's there can be a lot of fun in this. Like, that's the one thing. when Coming into the season, I thought this should be a playoff team. And there is progress because they're in a playoff race. And if you're looking at it is in, in, in the form of entertainment, entertainment has been extended past the trade deadline. Now, it hasn't been great entertainment, but it's been entertaining. And and I think when you mentioned that, like, yeah, you want to be excited because you know it's progress, not the progress that you were expecting. Yeah. It's like the the whole, you know, oven mitt and the, you know, the wet towel. When Derek Lalonde comes out and makes the comments that he made about, yeah, we don't know if we'll be here next year, that was a total wet blanket on any progress that or any positivity that you were looking at going, okay, well, maybe they can build on this for next year. If they miss out, maybe we can build on this for next year. doesn't do anything good for the, and I kept, I said this already for the here and now. Yeah. I, I don't want to take the coach out of context. We have the audio. We can play it for people. I don't think it does him any favors. I think there's been a lot of, oh, shucks. We shouldn't even be here. We might not be. I would love some confidence publicly from the head coach of a team that's very much in the race and controlled their own destiny as of two games ago. But let, let's – you want something before we play alone? Tom, you had a I was just going to say in general, listen to you guys, in the raw emotion in the back and forth, this has been a monumental collapse. I mean, this team – who would have thought when they were at 72 that they couldn't get the 90? I know. That was less than a point a game. I mean, and and so I think you got a coach here that's maybe saying things that he even doesn't want to say or is trying to control and not make it as bad as it is and stuff. I mean, you're absolutely beside yourself to this. That that all you had to do, they couldn't win just one of these two. And right. the story's so much different. This is the Lalone comment that John referenced that we've referenced that the people have seen. This is Derek Lalone, Red Wing head coach. Okay, real quick. Why wouldn't they be in this spot next year? Like, I, okay, I'll, I'll play dumb. I'll play naive idiot. Why wouldn't they be in this spot next year? They're a young team, allegedly, right? This pipeline of prospects, and Iserman's a great GM, and they've got an offseason to add to it. They've been better every year under his watch. Why the hell wouldn't they be in this spot next year? Well, I'm trying to figure out these comments, which, which I mean, they're is he very implying confusing. they're going to be so good that they won't be? I don't think that's no, what no, he no. meant I, at all. I... I if he's meaning if we're at 85 points next year, like we are now, and a team like New Jersey's at 100, and all the other ones are performing better than they did this year, then they won't even be in a, a, a there won't be a shot at a wild card spot. Yeah, but the idea is, well, New Jersey's going to be a lot better. So should 
you. I, I agree. Have That's why a it's, set of cojones. We are going to be better. We don't want to be in this spot next year because we're going to handle our business against the Arizonas of the world and the San Jose's of the world, and we're not going to wallow. We're not going to have another collapse at the end of the season. We're going to be a good hockey team. Has Derek Lowe ever said we're going to be a good hockey team? How about next year, Derek? Are you going to be a good hockey team next year? I mean, come on. That's why it was such a wet blanket, because even if you miss out on the playoffs, this year was better than last year, which was better than the year before. And now we're expecting the trajectory to continue, that next year is going to be better. No, you're not going to be in the same position next year because you're going to have performed better throughout the course of 82 games. Good ticket text. People on hold. We want to hear from you guys. Your emotional check-in now. Three games left, 97-1.
That's Ken Cal. Greg, you want to share what you told me today when you saw my email? We came, we email topics, things we want to talk about on the show. And I brought up, hey, I nearly burned down my house. Yeah, and that was the first topic that you put on your show sheet. And I thought it was in reference to the Red Wings game. <laughs> this got so mad. When when would that have happened? When they were down 2-0? Well, they weren't down 2-0, well, right? Because they, they got one nothing, well, and then yeah, they tied one, it up yeah. right away with Raymond. But they were, they were trailing at so many different yeah. key points during that game, including when they were down two goals following the shorthanded. Right. Yeah. And I texted you guys, mother... Yes. Yeah. Not happy. Yeah, not happy. They get a point. Ooh, they're not out of it. Ooh, you got to win. You got to get two. Let's get to the phones. Let's get to Chad in Birmingham. Chad, good morning. You're on 97-1. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Yeah, so talking about the last few games, I mean, I'm just I'm checked out at this point. You know, I'm sick of alone, the lack of urgency. It's it's gone on too long. I think he's he's honestly an AL, AHL coach at best at this point because he seems to be more focused on developing players' mentalities and focusing on them clawing back. And even last night, I don't know if you guys heard the interview, but he's clamoring about one point. Like that's a huge point. I mean, we got to win oh. games. Yeah. This is not a winning culture that he's building here. Take your one point. I'm with you. you. Know, so it's it's frustrating. I mean, I'll watch because I'm I'm a diehard fan. That's what I do. But it's just uh, it's frustrating. And I, I want a coach here that's going to build a winning culture. And there's that part of me that we kind of hopes we don't make the playoffs, even though I really can't root against them because I love the wings. But man, I'd love to have a guy in here that just comes in and is like, let's let's win some games. You know, I don't get that from alone at all. No, and that's, it's echoed a lot on the ticket text. The coach says the dumbest things. I'd rather him be overconfident than make excuses. He needs to go. This is an embarrassment for a storied franchise. The Red Wings are very disappointing. They're out of the playoffs, and looking at next year, I see little progress. Aging veterans and prospects not ready for the NHL. How will next year be any different? We had a nine-point cushion, and Lalone said we had overachieved at that point. We may not be in this position next year by we, he's including himself, because he might not be the coach next season, is one read on the ticket text. Well, it's it's just it's so disappointing. And I and at this point, with the with the collapse that has happened since the end of February, whether if miracles happen and they end up getting into the playoffs. Or if it goes the same trajectory, they follow the same trajectory as they have over the past five weeks and they don't make the playoffs, I don't really think it should matter in the evaluation of Lalonde. Like if you get in with with 89 points. Skin of your teeth, everybody else loses. You win a tiebreaker to get in, whatever it might be. Like I, I don't Still think encouraging, that. Yeah. No, and, and I don't think it should matter to Steve Eiserman. Like you had, and he went in and you know read the riot act. And then for a couple of games, they seemed to be playing better. But it, there was no lasting thing. There was no lasting effect. And for it to be a lasting effect, you have to have the backup from the coach. The question of how they're going to be much better next year. A couple things. You want Patrick Kane back. That's still an unknown. But you may have a star in Lucas Raymond. At mm-hmm. 22 years old, he's putting the team on his back. Not just with his play, but I thought emotionally last night too. He was fired up. He thought he got jobbed on um, on the fourth goal of the game where he was slashed at, and I think he was right, but he didn't wallow in it. Like, that's the thing. People go, oh, they got screwed. The refs were, the refs were pretty brutal in that second period, but you got to find a way, and Raymond found a way to get that game tied, and he has displayed a lot of mental toughness. He physically bulked up this season. You look at him at his third season in the league, Nikita Kucherov, who's chasing the Hart Trophy with Tampa, they're on the same level three seasons in. Now, you got to make the jump to 85 points in year four the way Kucherov did, 100 points in year five the way Kucherov did. But Raymond was a number four overall pick. Like, this shouldn't be surprising, and it's encouraging that he's playing well. Like, that shouldn't be lost in the loss. That's going to be a big key for next year. Cider, another step forward next year. Do we see Edvinson for a whole year? I would sure hope so at this point. More of these call-ups, more free agency, another trade new coach, there's reason to believe next year should be even better. I don't like the idea that, wow, we're, we're lucky to be here. Well, and for Raymond to make that jump, would you say in year four, he's got to be 85 points? 
Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not that far of a jump to no. go. I mean, it, I think by the time this season is over, over the next three games, he's at 68 right now. He's going to be above 70. He could be a 30-goal scorer, 70-point guy. Yeah. Yeah. And so th- to make that jump and then Mo Sider to continue to show improvement and, and to show that he can play and, sh- and provide some toughness on the back end like he's done here over the past two or three weeks. The other thing I like about Raymond, too, is he's not like a power play merchant. It's not like some of these guys with the big totals, they just take advantage with the man yeah. advantage. A lot of these goals are even strength. A lot of these goals are are tough goals. The go- the second one that he made, great finish going backhand, he he is on the ascent. And, and I know it's not the biggest story today. The biggest story is they lost the hockey game. The biggest story is they're out of the playoffs. The biggest story is they don't control their own destiny and they've squandered chances after chances after chances. Yeah, and it's just been it's been frustrating because they have they have been given a great opportunity. They've earned the right to be here, good and bad, but they're in a playoff chase. And in the last two days, it's been very disappointing. In your home, your own ice, you lose to Washington on the road. You only come away with a point. Gator, I know you guys read the quotes yesterday, right? The Lalone quotes about yeah. next year. You didn't like them. No, nobody likes them. How could you? Where does that come from? Like he tell me he's not addressing the team that way. I can't tell. I don't I know. know what he's saying. I mean, honestly, it's I can't believe he would. Um, I don't know if it's just continuing to keep the expectations low or whatever, or if there was maybe it just didn't come across the way he wanted it to. You know, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt here, but that's a, that's a horrible. It's just a horrible way to phrase things. I mean, you could say like there needed to be something said after it, right? Like when you say that kind of thing, and <clears throat> then you have to say. But we're that's that's not what we're in, right? What we have to do, we have to be better than that. Yes, we have. To, we need to be better. We need to be a playoff team next year. We we still expect to be a playoff team this year. Yeah, we don't want to be on the bubble next year. We're we're right. trying to fight out of it this exactly. year. Don't say we might not be there. Well, you know, I didn't like that. No, I did not I, like I, that. I, I, Doug didn't like it. No, nobody nobody's liked it. Well, I mean, what matters lose. more is what you do on the ice, and what is happening on the ice ain't great either. You right. start combining these two things, and you have to wonder and. You know, we, we're we not particularly quick to fire the coach. Um, we're not fire the coach guy, but uh, that's – you start combining these things and you have to wonder. You have to wonder. But there's – I mean, the crazy thing is this team just won't die. As we keep saying. They won't die. And I the, what the fan base is enduring or enjoying, I don't even know how to describe what the fan base is going through right now. They played back-to-back must-win games. They haven't won either of them, and they're still <laughs> – yeah, Still a point winning. out. Yeah. And mm-hmm. well, I'm sure you guys will talk about it. Yes, we will. Anything else? Ah, uh, sports. Sports. Yeah, stuff. I got some Dallas. A, 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 a rumor out of Dallas. We got uh, some draft talk. Oh. Is is the game plan shaping up for the Lions? All that. Oh, it's all coming up. Karsh Anderson, ninety-seven one.
Friday and our hockey team is somehow still alive. <laughs> the Flying Fish? No. Oh, the Red last, Wings. Last, oh, I'm sorry. Last game was a considered retirement game for this guy. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, that was awful. I th- we lost 5-2, and I think it was minus 4, and directly responsible for 3 <laughs> of the 4 that were given up when I was on the ice. I mean, directly responsible. It was, it was not good. Um, but we have a critical game this weekend. But so do the Red Wings. <laughs> Uh, so do the Red Wings. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Fire it up. Mm-hmm. They lose in overtime to Pittsburgh 6-5. Buffalo beats Washington 4-2. Thank you. Philly beats the Rangers. Philly still hanging on. And Detroit's a point back. With one playoff team left on the schedule, Pittsburgh's a point ahead with three playoff teams on the schedule. Uh, I, you know, I don't know what to say. Um, it, we, we've used this term in jest for a long time. It's a battle of who wants it less, and that's what this is shaping up to be. Is nobody has taken this thing, has taken this thing, and and said we're going to be that team. We're we're slamming the door on your chances, everyone else. That second playoff spot has circulated between three teams in the last week, <laughs> and uh, Detroit had it, Washington had it, now Pittsburgh has it. For now, so look, man, this is. Um, I don't know what to describe, how to describe what the fan base is going through. This is what we asked for at the beginning of the year. Beyond the graphic. Battle to the end for the playoffs. Get in. Oh, oh they're on the graphic. Oh, they're on the graphic. They kind of are so the graphic. They've been, they've, been, they've been burned into the graphic for weeks. And yeah. and yet I can't imagine that Red Wing fans are saying, this is awesome. No, there's a new group of five. <laughs> the Islanders, Philly, Washington, Detroit, and Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. and the Islanders are like, we're not part of the group of five. We're we're, we're already we're distinguishing we're, ourselves. We're further apart. Like they're only three points ahead of Philly. So we got a hockey game and a hockey team to talk about today. Gator, the Pistons have two games left. I need them to win three of the final two, and I am not giving up. Some people might give up. Not me. Not you. Nope. Can not, they find a way? Not up in to here. get three wins in the final two games. I'm holding out hope. Uh, Frozen Four last night, Boston College, better team one. Better team one. Shut Michigan out. Uh, it's good. Nothing. Team. I did discover something last night. For the first time, I had, you know, I got the multiple TV set up. I am going to draw the conclusion that for this guy right here, Doug Karsh, the hardest sport to watch two games at the same time is hockey. hockey. Without a doubt. Because it's, it it's is. just turnover to turnover, turnover. turnover and it's turnover, just turnover, back turnover. and forth. Both games mean something. And. You're trying to watch like March Madness when I had three games on at once. That was that was doable. Football's great for it. Hockey, two hockey games trying to watch. Look, these are first world problems. I'm uh-huh. not. I don't want to get carried away by just saying I couldn't. I couldn't quite zero in on one or the other. I found myself. No, I understand thinking, what you feeling mean. like I was constantly missing out. There've been many a night at uh, at 24 seconds where I've been just sat at the bar and. My neck, is, it looks like I'm watching a tennis you couldn't, match. You couldn't do it. I'm watching four games at once. Yep. Um, but like I said, I mean, you, you did my best <laughs> and uh, watched both Michigan and the Red Wing game. All right, so in the middle of all the Red Wing game and a disappointment, it feels like we're getting on the ground floor of a player turning into a star, and that's Lucas Raymond. And that's awesome. The hat trick and the assist, Dill Larkin chipped in. Jeff Petrie chipped in. <laughs> when Petrie scored, I thought, "Ah, oh, it's nice. <laughs> good, good for <laughs> good for him. Good he for Jeff Petrie. I, yeah, that'll keep keep, keep people pe- off his back for a little bit. Yes, yes, it will. But did it? I mean, it'll keep him for a minute here. But hey, look, they got they got a point, and it's not the <laughs> it's nothing to really celebrate. But that point might turn out to be very. Very critical here down the stretch. And, it, you know, Detroit has the easiest schedule. Well, Philly might. I mean, Philly has no playoff teams, but Philly is tied with Detroit and Washington, but only two games left. So they need a lot of help. Detroit just needs Boston to beat Pittsburgh this weekend, which doesn't sound outlandish. Well, look ahead at the schedule for tomorrow, right? Because Saturday, that's the day. The Saturday is moving day. The Wings are at Toronto. 
Islanders play at the Rangers. You've got uh, the Devils are at the Flyers, and the Lightning are at the Caps. So all those games, with the exception of the Flyers and Devils, they're all playing tougher opponents. Um, and frankly, the Devils are tough. They're playing better hockey now, and they're they're playing well below the season. They played well below what they should have been playing at. They're pissed that they're not really in this hunt anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so they can be motivated to beat the Flyers. You can argue that they're better than Philadelphia, the way Philadelphia's played lately, even with Philly winning last night. Yep. So all these games, tomorrow is the day. Tomorrow you'll know. You know, because you, 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 you might have a golden opportunity to get at least one point ahead. Well, you can only get one point ahead of Pittsburgh at this point. Um, but you need to you need to do it. You had this is we talked about is it must win on Tuesday against the uh, the Caps? Eh, it's kind of there. Is it must win last night in the game against the Penguins? It feels pretty close to it, but that nah, technically not really. Tomorrow might again not factually be must win, but it sort of is, right? You have to win tomorrow's game. The end of the season I think it's uh, Philadelphia and Washington play each other, or is it Washington and um, and Pittsburgh? I forget who it is who plays at the other at the end of the season. Their last game is going to be those two teams doing battle, and it's uh, it is it's Philadelphia uh, at Washington. You do not want things to come down to that game, and, and that the, the, hey, winner of that game gets the playoff spot. You don't want to hear that. Take care of business tomorrow, please, God. Take care of business tomorrow. Yep. This this season is I mean, I can't remember a season where it's been like this, where it, where we're just on bated breath at the end of the year. Are they going to make the playoffs? Are they not going to make the playoffs? Are they, I I don't remember this many teams being being in it with the Red Wings as part of them to try to just get into the playoffs. Yeah, this is I mean By definition, we should be enjoying this, and I don't think we are. (laughs) And I I, I really, I don't, How I mean, Red Wing fans, you know what this feels like? It feels like that relationship that you're getting let on. You're like, I don't think, I don't think she's into me. (laughs) Right. Maybe she, oh, wait, no, she called. She keeps making me pay for things. Yeah, we keep, we keep hanging out, but is she, is she into me? really gotten there i'm doing all the boyfriend stuff and i'm not getting any of the boyfriend like i'm, I'm, holding, her, I'm holding her purse while she's in yeah. the restroom mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i don't quite get this yeah i pay for the bill yeah uh-huh. yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah did that I drove. Friday yeah, night, she, right. yeah. she called and asked me what we're doing and if i'm doing anything tonight that feels like but I can't tell if she's into me. She didn't have that second cocktail. Is it? No, no. But she did order dessert. Is yeah. this? She wasn't hiding that. No. I mean, are, are we? Are they, are they leading us on? Are they? Are the Red Wings leading us on? Now, I, I, as far as the way they played last night, I didn't feel as good about the way they. I mean, they scored some big goals, but I didn't feel nearly as good about the way they played last night as I did in the Washington game. I think what we feel good about is they battled back from down 5-3 to tie it, and that was in the third period they got down 5-3, and they tied it. And you could the emotion on Lucas Raymond's face when he scored that goal. That was cool. It, yeah. it was awesome. And unfortunately, overtime happens, and there's a misplay, and then Gossis Bear, whether or not he's supposed to challenge the shooter or not, he just they didn't, and Carlson just blasted the shot, and game over. And it's it just happened as quickly as that. No, I don't think they played. They definitely didn't play as well as they did against Washington. Just the overall game. I mean, they the just were, they were right. leaky defensively. Like that and, was that was a game where the Red Wings dominated that game and they didn't win. This was one where I don't think you could say they were dominant and they gave up some horrible opportunities, more catastrophic mistakes. Yep. They they just have a way to make that catastrophic mistake. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Red Wing fans. <laughs> Is this excruciating and painful, or are you enjoying this? By definition, we should be enjoying this, and I'm not I'm not sure that's an accurate description of what's going on. There are three games left, and they're still in it. 248-539-9797. It's Carson Anderson, 97 won the ticket.
Doug Carr, Scott Anderson, 97 won the ticket. Open lines, 248 539 9797. It's Carson Anderson. <laughs> Red Wing fans, are you enjoying this? Like, how do you characterize what this is? It's frustrating. It's it's ungratifying. But it's also kind of what we wanted. <laughs> and so now, now that we be careful what you wish for, playoff chase. Uh, but I mean, they got one point. They needed four. They got one. Three would have been useful. They got one. <laughs> yep. Two was a minimum requirement. It felt like they got one. And we sit here and go, must win, must win. I want to must win. Because, I, I mean, is Pittsburgh going to run the table? I suppose they may, in which case Detroit's done. But that would mean wins over three playoff teams, Boston, Nashville, and the Islanders. And, and as, as, as you know, Pittsburgh was a better team last night, give them credit. I didn't feel great about the way the Wings played compared to the Tuesday game. Uh, just too many, too many chances for Pittsburgh. Uh, I, I guess I'd rather lose 2-1 than 6-5, but whatever. Um, I give the Wings some credit for for battling back and at least eking the point out. And Lucas Raymond, hey, man, Detroit loves you. <laughs> you have really, really come through. 248-539-9797. Anything else to add? Well, I was going to say, you know, going into last night, I thought seven points out of the possible eight remaining mm-hmm. in the season is what they need to do. So they got one. Now they have to. Now I think the Wings have to win out. I really do. They have to. I think they have to win out. It's just kind of the math involved with it. You got Tampa and Boston and Philadelphia. That's what's left for the Caps. Um, that's not easy. First two games are tough. Nope. But you know what? They can win one of those, and then they, then it's a showdown at the end of the season. I, I don't. I don't like getting into this territory with this team. I, I just. I'm. I'm nervous right now. I'm really nervous because I feel like they do have to win out. To get there, it's not it's not good. You mentioned what Pittsburgh's schedule is, right? Yes, they've got Boston, Nashville, and the at the Islanders. So, so Philadelphia, they've got two games left. That's it. Yep, New Jersey, They're and home, Washington, both at home uh, against New Jersey and, and Washington. Okay, it's probably the easiest schedule, but they also are. But they're also operating in a behind, deficit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's go to Sod. You're on ninety-seven. One to take it. What's up, Sod? What's up, guys? How are you? Okay. Good. It's a little painful to watch towards the end. For the mere fact of where we were at, I think the closest team was 10 points. It was, I, I think it was were, eight. Uh, I think it was eight. But. eight, or, yeah, eight well, there were eight points and in. Then, I don't know if the closest team was. but. And then that losing streak comes in, and Alex Lyon not playing up to – I mean, that's a must-win game from yesterday. And letting in five goals, a couple of them were extremely weak, extremely weak. And you just can't have that, man. You should have covered that puck up for GN. You don't play that with, with Sidney Crosby. Um, Lucas Raymond played like a stud, is a stud, going to be a 40-goal scorer in this league. Um, that's the good things about it. But it's just, like I said, just painful to watch towards the end, man. It's it's it, where we were at. I expected to be in the chase. But <laughs> from a month and a half ago, thinking to myself, all right, man, I can't wait to buy playoff tickets. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do this. We might win one or two games or three. You know who knows in in, in round one. But now it's just it's disappointing to watch. I I I think you I think you've summed up the way a lot of fans feel. Yeah. I, I, I mean yeah. I don't know what else to say. You're 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 spot on. I think Lion probably wasn't too pleased with that goal he gave up to that twerp Latang, but he did. Oh, wow. And I you know at the there end of this. the day, um, there was some some. Too many defensive lapses. And, I mean, I, you're right about LFR. He is absolutely shining, and it's great to see. And uh, I'm, I'm, I hope that this guy really is truly blossoming. And, yeah, uh, you know, there's, there's still work to be done. And the funny thing is, if I had to bet right now, is Pittsburgh running the table? I'd bet no. Now, <laughs> is Detroit running the table? Well, that seems shaky as well, even though I mean, this Toronto game Saturday. Oh, yeah, I know. It's, 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 <laughs> I don't want to say it's a must win. You I know said what you look like right now? Right now, you look like you are hung over to hell, and you, you just grab the microphone like you would grab a toilet. <laughs> that's what you were doing. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, And that's kind of like how we feel, right? It's the ready, set, puke game. First decision. Do, do you start Alex Lyon or 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 Reimer? Reimer. 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 Yep. 
I mean, Reimer I last. Think, I think I start Alex Lyon. Lyon faced him way back in the beginning of the season. The Red Wings, I think, lost 3-2. to two, Way back in the beginning of the season. Reimer faced him in January, and the Red Wings won 4-2. to two. As far as what's going on, right? I mean, I, I don't there's, know. There's I, no I don't sample know. size there with, no. <laughs> with Toronto, but I mean. Who do you start? I don't know how to answer. I, I guess I start Lyon. I haven't been thrilled with Alex Lyon lately. He's given up 15 goals in his last five games. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the. Do they play better defensively in front of, in front of Reimer? I, I mean, are they going to get anybody back for tomorrow's game? Is Rasmussen coming back? Is is Cop going to play? Is he going to tough it out with a broken cheekbone? And I don't know. I mean, these are these. This is why when coaches make decisions, they have information in front of them, things that they know. Yep. Like, and if if Rasmussen is, hey, he's healthy enough to play, but is he still slow because he hasn't played in a week? Do you want him to play? I, don't I think know. I think I do because I I do because of shake what he something up, yeah, and shake something up here. Uh, when does the Doug Karsh everything's fine? They played hard radio show start. Is this guy? <laughs> Actually, they didn't play. I I mean I I don't think everything is fine. Like I didn't I didn't love the output last night. Now, it wasn't an effort thing. I just thought they were a porous defensively. Compared to Tuesday night. But if you're trying to get me to say the season's over, I'm not doing that. Are you? No. I, 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 I kind of meant it towards I, the texter. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I know I'll offer my opinion. Yeah. I do think they have to win out. <laughs> I think they have to win out. For my sanity. The, but the truth is it. they don't because of the way everyone else is. Here, you take it. Still hanging around. No, I know. Take it. It's nuts. It's nuts. I I mean, here's more feedback. Everyone says, just get in the tournament. Then you have a chance. And our dumbasses are actively trying not to get in. That's funny. That's from an unnamed texter. Uh, Mike in Marysville says, the Wings cannot give up six goals and think they should win. Get a goalie and a defenseman that plays defense. I mean, yeah, I think that probably not the best effort by the blue line and the the netminder last night. So I, I forgot to realize this, too. Another showdown game at the end of the season, Islanders and Pittsburgh. That's that's the is that the Wednesday game? Yeah. After the Wings After finish the season, Wings finish the season. We're gonna be. I, well, I don't have a sneaking suspicion we're gonna be watching that game. I want to vomit now. Yep. I want to vomit now. And we're gonna have nothing to do with it. And the Islanders might have their position locked up. That's the part. That's the problem that's looming. Is the Islanders might have nothing to play for. No, uh, but they're the Islanders play at New York tomorrow. At the Rangers. That shouldn't be easy. Then they play at New Jersey, who's a pissed off Devils team. That shouldn't be easy. And then they got to finish up with Pittsburgh. Well, Well, the thing is, one of those, somebody has to be the other, somebody has to be the third spot in the the division. So somebody's in automatically, right? Yes. Because that's why the Islanders are already in, because they're the third in the division. But if they lose... You know, the next couple games. Which I think sudden, we want them to. We I think want we them do. to lose because we want them to care about the last game against Pittsburgh. But, hey, look, everything's fine. They played hard. 248-539-9797. <laughs> it's Carson Anderson, 97, won the ticket.
All right, so let's zoom out here for a second with the Red Wings still in this thing in spite of themselves. Um, I mean, I would have to imagine, because if I always try and think of this of what they're thinking in the room, what the coach is thinking, what the GM's thinking about what's next. And what I mean is these three games. They probably actually feel pretty decent about stealing, get grabbing a point at the end of that game because they were they looked like they were going to lose. They were down a couple goals. Uh, <laughs> Jeff Petrie scores a big goal, and then Lucas Raymond at the end scores a huge goal uh, to tie the game at five and force overtime. Uh, so they they get a point and and yet blow their opportunity to move back into controlling their own destiny as the second wild card team. But if if you look forward, you're still trying to find a way to win this game. But as as we zoom out and say, all right, what's the issue here? Is this roster just simply not good enough? Is the coaching not good enough? Is the organization's mentality not been good enough? And I think all those things have have come under the scrutiny of fans because the mentality includes the comment, well, we might not be here next year, which mm. is weird. I don't I, like, I don't love that quote, but it's a, a part of the mentality also. I don't even like the quote. No, but, but isn't part of the mentality also nothing at the trade deadline? Isn't yeah. that part of the mentality? I, I think there's a message sent there. There doesn't feel like there's there that they're operating with this massive sense of urgency in any way that the, uh, I shouldn't say in any way. I think their play, the guys on the ice, Look like there's a sense of urgency, and and I think it showed in the entire team performance on Tuesday, and I think it showed with the way they responded last night when they did score those big goals. <laughs> you could tell it meant something. I think Steve Eisman has got to be frustrated beyond belief because and, I think the reason that he didn't do something at the trade deadline uh, is, is because he believes in the team that they have here to to hold serve for what they were doing at the time. Mm-hmm. and that he didn't need to sell off part of the future just to make the playoffs this year. Yeah. He thought they were going to make the playoffs this year without having to do that. Great. And then they laid an egg immediately after the deadline. And he was like, are you kidding me? You know, mm-hmm. you could see he was frustrated in interviews that he did. And and as time went on, it only got worse because then they started that losing streak of seven games and eight out of nine. And uh, they're, what, five and 15 in their last 20 games? Yeah. I mean, this is a horrible, horrible tailspin. Even though they played better, but it doesn't matter if you're not if you're not getting points. And okay, they got a point last night, which normally you'd be pissed about because it's not enough. But the way everybody else is playing around them, it's enough to keep you in the hunt. It's enough to keep you know feeding the birds to come by for another another go round. You know, and, and we'll see. This is going to come down to the last night of the NHL season. It feels like it is. Now, the coaching. Is the coaching not good enough? This is under scrutiny. And I mean, I look, Derek Lalone, what I wonder is if Derek Lalone is a great hockey assistant coach who, now that he's in charge, isn't pushing the right buttons, which is a really vague thing to say. I mean, it's a vague thing. I don't call, I mean, I'm not down there every day. But it's a fair question to ask for a guy who didn't have a track record as a head coach, mm-hmm. but had a track record as an assistant coach on a, on a pretty because good I franchise. Wouldn't, I wouldn't call this a disaster. This isn't no. a disaster. They've actually gotten better. <laughs> yep. But to the level that you expected, you know, a month and a half ago, mm-hmm. no, they, because things went south in a hurry and there was like no answer for it. Like you would, Okay, things are in trouble. We've lost three in a row. Stop the bleeding. Can't do it. Lost four in a row. Stop the bleeding. Can't do it. And he got to seven. After you won six in a row. That's that's the part that's hard to stomach. Yes, there are factors in there. You lost Larkin. Yeah, I got it. The, the flu ran through the room. Okay, all that stuff. But seven in a row wiped out all the goodwill that you had with six in a row. And is Lalone the right guy? He'll address it in the offseason. I mean, I if they make the playoffs, he's he's back. If they don't make the playoffs, mm. and then you can directly relate it to the tailspin at the end of the season. You know, so it's almost like you've just lifted the button and you're you're getting the uh 
you know, the placard ready to, to get the launch codes, right? Yep. <laughs> Haven't done it yet. Yep. But I'm just, you know, let's just lift up that plastic covering over the button and let me see. Where I got that, that placard? Is it here on my neck? Uh, let me just undo a button to get it ready in case they don't make the playoffs because I think the, you know, even though expectations change and some of that can be really unfair, it's the comments that I didn't like hearing those comments. I don't want to jettison this guy out of the job because I think that there's something there with Derek Malone that can be really good. But. You can't ignore that if it's five and fifteen right now. They have three games left. How much is it going to get any worse? I mean, the best is they're going to finish up eight and fifteen down the stretch, yeah, yeah, which and, might be good enough to make the playoffs. And then I don't want to take away credit for the work they did to get into the position where yeah, if they not. if they make the playoffs, okay. And even if it's part of an eight, what did you say, eight and fifteen down the stretch? Yeah, that gets them in. Well. Not great down the stretch, but they did a lot of heavy lifting earlier in the year to allow them to, for that to be good enough. But uh, that game was accumulation of a massive collapse. What a failure and waste of a season. No team owned by the pizza boy will ever be successful. So two things about that. One is Holmes has given up. He's done because it's a failure and waste of a season. So I, I wish you signed your text so we can know who's on the record, <laughs> which is fine if you feel that way. What has the owner done wrong this year? I, I don't know. I, I don't know why people, people go right away to, to ownership. Um, you know, was hiring Steve Eisenman wrong? I don't think it was wrong. It was universally loved. And he had a track record. And he had a track record of, of building up what they did in Tampa to win Stanley Cups and be a contender for years. Steve Eisenman would have been a candidate for other organizations' jobs. He, number didn't, one, just get the, he didn't just get this job because he's a former Red no, Wing. He got the job. <laughs> Red Wings had the opening. And, of course, there's the history there. Steve Eisenman would have been offered any job in the NHL. If any job came open, guess who would be the number one candidate for every team? It'd be Steve Eisenman. So I don't I don't get why blaming the owner on this. What, you're not happy with that they – are people going to use the – oh, they're not spending money. Oh, they're, they're spending money. There's a well, salary cap in hockey. You You have to manage that as well. It's not like, you know, the old days where you could just go ahead and spend, spend, spend. You don't have the haves and have-nots. You know, the haves and have-nots now are based on talent, not based on money. So there's a lot of hot takes I see of people wanting the loan fired literally right now. And I'm like, okay, does that make you better or does that make you feel good because somebody got punished? Like, I, I, I it, what is the best way to win these last three games? Is it to fire Derek Lalone? <laughs> to outscore the other team. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thanks, Toe Blake. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this would be enjoyable if they were really in the mix, but it's just been a slow, drawn-out tailspin for the last month. The lead the Wings have squandered is a tough pill to swallow. It's from Alex and Fenton. And yet here they are, still I know. a point away. But they have squandered a lead. They have definitely squandered a lead. And you know how I talked about it's frustra- my most frustrating way to lose a baseball game is when you play really well for like seven innings, your starting pitcher pitches well, you build a 3-4 run lead, and then the bullpen yeah. comes in and immediately blows it. Right. This is kind of tantamount to the bullpen blowing it, right? They had, they built up a lead. They had gotten deep into the season, looked like they were a for-sure playoff team, and the bullpen's blown it. Yeah, I in guess. the last month. And this isn't a ninth inning blown save. This is a, it feels like it's a sixth or seventh inning. Started, did a great job. Hey, his pitch count got up. Let's bring in a bullpen. And then you're like, wait. Yeah. No. Uh, I wish it would have just lost last night and put us out of our misery. I'm going to watch as long as they're in it. But, man, it's been hard. That's from Brian. Understand. I, I, do you really wish they lost, though? <laughs> Come on. Tony in Northville. I know everyone was giddy when the Wings signed to bring it. How about one goal in the last 21 games for the Cat? Oh, t- total overpay for a one-dimensional player. Well, it, it his lack of goal scoring has been shocking. Um, had three assists last night. Yeah, I was about to say. The top, he the did top three guys had 10 points last night. You know, Raymond had four, Larkin had three, and uh, and Debrinkit had three. Patrick Kane had none. Um, so I think that's what it's worth. And by the way, one of Raymond's goals, he could have easily have given it right back to Debrinkit on a wide open net, yep. but but he took the shot and, and scored the goal, which is fine. Yep. Do it. You Nobody know. cares. Just hey, score yeah, the goal. Just score the goal right? Yeah. Maybe that would have gone some ways to getting people off his back. Although, he deserves to have people on his back because he scored so many goals early, and this is what he's paid to do. And it's he has it's right lately. here, right now yeah. that matters, yeah. 
Red Wing fans are being strung along like a desperate guy being led to slaughter by a slick, perfumed, overdressed, made-up hooker who swears she's the girl next door. That's a very specific analogy. (laughs) Someone's been there. Mark in Arizona uh, says, I'm a lifelong Red Wing fan being from Michigan. I'm so over it right now with the Red Wings. Let's just move on. If they make the playoffs, great. If they don't, that's fine, too. Very disappointing if they don't, and things you, need to change going into next year. You can't say move on because there's still three games left. Well, I... I <laughs> if they make it, great. If they, if not, whatever. Okay, but don't Actually, say if they just make move it, on. But by, by the way, if they make it, yes, great. Yes. Like, not sarcastically great. Great. Like, not on oh, nuts. It's on oh, nuts. 248-539-9797. Uh, we have news about a coach in Detroit that's also part of this radio show. Oh. We will get to that today at 1050 here on Carson Anderson on 97 won the ticket. Well, you want to watch any of the sporting events, and we got a lot of sports going on right now. The best place in town to catch it all. It's 24 Seconds Bar and Grill in Berkeley. They've got amazing food. The staff is amazing as well. Plus, they've got great deals going on all the time. The drink specials are all day, every day. And if you've got uh, draft plans, make sure 24 Seconds is part of it. If you're not headed downtown, go to the bar because the bar is going to be the place to be. They've got all types of contests going on. If you are planning on heading down, well, they've got the uh, the shuttle bus that's going to be departing at 5 o'clock on Thursday. So you can skip the hassle. Book your spot now because those spots going to – Fill up. We've heard about how crazy everybody's expecting to be downtown. Why not take the hassle of driving there out of the way and take the 24-second shuttle bus? Plus, they've got uh, amazing specials with uh, $3 margaritas on Wednesdays, $3 Long Islands on Thursdays. You want to check out the UFC events? This is the place to go. UFC 300, Pereira taken on Hill? Absolutely. There's no cover charge. Check it out there. Listen, for uh, Detroit hockey uh, games, you get $4 bottles of blue and blue light. Uh, same for Detroit basketball as well. You get uh, $4 bottles of Miller Lite and Coors Light for the baseball games. They've got lunch on Thursdays and Fridays now. That rooftop deck is going to be open on May 1st, weather permitting. Check out 24 Seconds Bar on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for all the contests they have. Every seat's a great seat. Flat screen, high definition TV is all throughout the place. Check it out for yourself. Uh, it's my favorite place to go. 24 Seconds Bar Grill on 12 Mile in Berkeley.
Get to some Lions stuff next hour. Penguins beat Detroit 6-5 in overtime last night. And look, I hope we look at that late goal and surge by the Red Wings to get the point as a big deal when it's all said and done. And uh, I don't want Lucas Raymond's heroic effort to be like just um, a footnote in an otherwise disappointing season. This point may turn out to be important. Um, In fact, if the Red Wings make it, I suspect it won't be by multiple points. I think it might be by a point, maybe two, but they keep the, 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 here you take it. No, you take it. That's going on right now at the bottom of the Eastern Conference is ridiculous. I mean, it's it's just wild. We talked about the game going into the game yesterday, and you said you expect this is a game where Dylan Larkin's going to step up. Yep. And you said. And he had three points. Yep. And I said, I could see that, but I think it's going to be a Lucas Raymond game. Mm-hmm. And Lucas Raymond has, you know, a hat trick and four points. They scored five goals, and it wasn't enough. That is so frustrating. When you have that many goals, and of course they had to come from behind to even get there, being down 5-3 in the third period. I mean, scoring like that is reminiscent of hockey in the 90s when there was all types of scoring. You don't expect that in today's NHL. And yet lately we've seen some crazy games that have been some crazy totals. And the series with the Wings and the uh, the Penguins, all three games this year, the winner has scored six goals. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we've talked about this on the air on occasion. Our guy Kang behind the glass um, last year was the emergency break glass coach for his daughter's rec soccer team, the Watermelon Sharks. And this year, there was he signed his daughter up again, and an email was sent back saying, hey, at this time, we don't have a coach. We have an update on the coaching situation with the Watermelon Sharks. Kang, you just got an email. Yeah, my wife sent me an email uh, earlier this week during the show, actually, that uh, the email stated, you know, to all parents, you know, with your kids in the soccer program, all this stuff. Basically, uh, just an update. We're letting you know that we still do, we still need volunteer coaches to coach the soccer teams. I don't know how many they need, if it's just specifically our child. I think this is one, you know, a mass email they sent out because they're short on coaches and need a couple parents to volunteer. And I I just, I saw this and I think, the, the season starts in two weeks, guys. Yep. This is dangerously close. I don't like where, where this might be headed. And, and I mean, here's what we've got. What happens if no nobody steps up? That's where I don't like where this is headed. If nobody steps up, I will do it. <laughs> okay, but yes. but it's it's like it's not like a, oh my god I hate this I just don't want to do it I I just genuinely would rather bring my my lawn chair yep. bring my other little girl my yep. wife sit there in silence and or you know cheering on the team cheering on my daughter p- fold up my lawn chair have her see her go get her snacks get her back in the car and go home. I don't want lineups. I don't want to do practice because we they do practice before the game, like Ugh. a short thirty minute practice, and then the game. I don't want any of it, and it's not because I can't do it. I just literally don't want to do it. Yeah, you're no different than every other parent on the team. By the way, no, I don't. There's some parents that are overzealous. I think, but they they're thinking they're coaching the U.S. Olympic trials out there. Well, but there's not enough of them. Well, apparently, I'm saying, I'm saying the ones yeah. in the, on, on, that <laughs> are need, part of the watermelon. You need more of those crazy yeah, people. Know, right? That's what you need. <laughs> here's what's gonna. Here's what's gonna. So Kang's gonna coach him, right? No. no, no he's well, not, what's, what's your drop dead time? The season's in two weeks. I know. I told her, listen, we'll get, we'll see where this goes. We, I mean, I'm still holding out. I'm not. We, we have to wait till. I'm thinking like a couple days before the season starts. If so they this, send out another urgent email, let me, let me I'll do this. it. Other teams in this league, do you think that they only practice before the game, or do you think that they? No, practice? it's every, It's like a standard thing. It's a standard thing. So yeah. nobody has like, hey, Tuesday was a practice, no. and we got a game on Wednesday, and it's always. The day of, because they're so young at this okay. point. It's just you. you know thirty minutes before, and then the game starts. You once you once you take the helm, and you will take the helm. <laughs> when you go to the games and go to coach and all that, you're going to take a look at the sideline and see all the dads and moms out there, and you are going to just be resentful. It's all <laughs> hell, and I love it. And you should be. You should be. You should walk up and down and say, 
I don't know why any of you are not here helping me coach. I mean, you, you, you're here for the game. You're here to drop the kid off for the practice. Clearly, you've got the time. Well, you think I'm, I want to be here? Of <laughs> course I don't want to be here. By the way, once you get roped in, you're probably coaching for years. You will probably be asked to do it again. Your daughter will ask you to do it again. And you are such you are such the girl dad, you're not going to be able to say no. Doug, that's the big picture fear. Yep. That's the long-term uh, we've got, fear. It, it, leave it to me to take the 30,000-foot view of your coaching career and how this is how it begins. Let me tell you how your life is. <laughs> no, I actually prefer to – it's like, you know how, like, you introduce yourself to the kids? You're like, yeah, you can call me Coach Kang or whatever. I'm going to tell the kids straight up. I'm look every one of them in the eye, these five- and six-year-olds, and go – you call me interim coach, okay? Because I'm not going to be here next year, all First right? First of all, <laughs> you're approaching it all wrong. You want to be the badass coach, you introduce yourself as Coach Win. No, that that's is what true. we do. We yeah. go out there and we win. No. So after Danny Hurley turned him down, after yeah. Nate Oates turned him down, after Scott Drew turned him down, after Billy Donovan turned him down, after Jay Wright turned him down, they turned to you, Kang. And, and it was pointed out here. Andy Reid said no. Yeah. It was pointed out here on Twitch by Rese that there's a game of chicken going on right now. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. you got to choose. You are choosing your drop dead time, which you haven't publicly stated yet. Yeah, Do you don't know what don't you, state it publicly. <laughs> just between you know us. Though. Other parents are listening. So wait, the season starts two weeks from tomorrow, I assume, Saturday games. Is that what it is? Yeah, Saturday games. Yep. So if you get an email next Friday. Wait, the draft? Well, there's no. Is there a draft? If there's a draft, let's have some fun. No, no, I'm saying that the first game is the Saturday of the draft. Yeah. Oh, I thought there was. You can't possibly about- coach. You've got. Well, it's, it's day three of the draft. Are you giving yourself an out? I'm trying to give yourself a, a just, blockade it, on this thing, and you're like, no, wait a minute, it's just the third day. It's the most important day. <laughs> day three. <laughs> <laughs> Rounds four, five, six, and seven. <laughs> Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Let's go to Isaac and Royal Oak. You're on ninety seven. Want to take it? Hi, Isaac. Hey guys. So, Kang, let me allow you the opportunity to look in your future, my friends. Three years ago, the coach's daughter went and tried out for a select team and made the team. They didn't have a coach. Didn't have a coach. Didn't have a coach. Didn't have a coach. I played a ton of soccer growing up. I finally jumped in a week before. Three years later, I'm still coaching yep. every single year. Every single year, I tell them I'm not going to do it. We're playing indoor now. It's it's outrageous. <laughs> now, in the end, it is really rewarding. It honestly is. And there's days where you don't want to do it. But I pegged you for a decent man and a good father, Kang. You're not going to be able to say no to your daughter. Um, and you're going to be coaching. So get your clipboard ready, bub. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac, thanks. Thanks for sharing. I, I hear that a lot. I get that a lot where, like, hey, they just did it for one year, and then, you know, five years later, they're still doing it or whatever. And I understand this can be very rewarding. I get all that. You know, I just, I kind of, I want to be the parent and not the coach. That's just what, that's the role I want to play personally. Dude, before long, you're going to be taking a travel team to Schaumburg, <laughs> Illinois, to Grand Park, Indianapolis. I know how this works. Uh, let's go to Matt. You're next on 97 the Ticket. Hi, Matt. Hey, guys, how are you? Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to piggyback on what Isaac just said. Uh, I was I have three kids that are grown and adults, but when they got into soccer uh, 20-some years ago, I was the same way. I was going to sit on the sideline, and I ended up volunteering for 15 years and <laughs> ran the league for six. Oh, no. Oh, God. So, uh, well, I'm not going to put you in that category, <laughs> but what I will say is – Make, uh, I can make your lineup in five minutes for the entire season. It's that easy. It's, it's a it's a simple it's a simple mathematical formula, and five minutes in your I don't know how many games your child's going to be playing ten probably. Yeah, it's and, a, uh, yeah, something like that, eight to ten. Yeah, I can I can have a lineup for all ten games in five minutes for I, you. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that you could. And Kang, it's, it, at that age, it really isn't that big of a deal, but, but start to plan ahead. So when they're like 14 and they're playing for the state cup up in Saginaw, mm-hmm. you know how you're going to handle it. Two, four, eight, five, three, nine, 97, 97. It's Carson Anderson. 
<laughs> Please, nobody else email. I want this to happen so bad. No, this is the ultimate game of chicken. Every other parent on this list is just waiting this thing out. Like they're the husbands, right? The dads are going, all right, someone's gonna volunteer, right? Mm-hmm. Someone's gonna Did you hear? Did you hear Kang said on the air? Yeah, right. <laughs> he, he said he'd do it. He said he forced into it. He's gonna do it. I so that, that we're in the clear. We you know what I gotta do, do this weekend? I gotta ask my daughter if she even wants me to, right? Hey, how would you feel, honey, if uh if dad was the coach? And if she says she doesn't want me to be the coach, I don't think I can do it. You want your overbearing father <laughs> to be there every day. Yeah. Don't you want a break? Because, you know, I'm going to coach you when we come home, too. A lot of coaching. Coaching doesn't stop. <laughs> I mean, if that's what you want. I'm going to make you miserable. But that's what it takes to yeah. be great. You want me to yell at your mother? 97 won the ticket.
get to some Lions stuff coming up. 11-20. Can we figure out the plan? Can we figure out the plan? In the What's game plan to get the watermelon sharks on top of the division? No, we're doing that right now. At 11-20, we'll talk about the Lions draft plan. Oh. 248-539-9797. Yes, indeed. There is a a mere, what, 15 days to the opener of the watermelon shark season. If you're new to the show, that is the name that Kang's daughter's team chose for their rec soccer team. Five? She's five, right? She's five now, yeah. Okay, yeah. So... I mean, it'd be one thing if she were really young, but now it gets serious. Uh, and there's no coach. There is no coach. It's crisis. Yeah. It's critical. You guys are getting a, a critical We're not critical point. yet. No, not yep. yet, man. Condition critical, man. Uh, <laughs> not yet. But Kag is one week away from saying, fine, I'll do it. One week unless somebody else steps up. And he doesn't want to do it. This is one of those things that when you make that decision and you have to do it, that maybe your wife cheers and your daughter's happy, and then you just have to leave the room for a minute to gather yourself. Maybe you you throw something against the wall, like a hat. So it, it's not like you're just throwing a ball against the wall; it's going to put a hole in the, the drywall. But you know, you, you got to unload some kind of anger quickly. Dad's got to step outside for a yeah. second. Mm-hmm. Dad will be right back. <laughs> Gator, you'll appreciate this. One Another reason I, I don't want to be the coach is you're going to have to get there first. Dude. Right, Gator? Yeah. No, yes. no. It's like you can't. Like, no, you can't be late. No, you you're can't be late. You're the coach. You got to set up the cones or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. You know, you got to be there oh, first. Yeah, there's, there's cones. <laughs> so when you're not the coach, you got to you got to just kind of like, hey, or we're five minutes late, whatever. Or you know, we'll you're get in charge there. of washing the goalie jersey. You got to yeah. set up the the parent yeah. email list. Yeah, whatever. The communication. Do you get the mess jerseys? Do you have all the? Do you have, like have to hand them out for practice? Well, no, I think those are we have real jerseys they just use now. Who's yeah. who's bringing juice boxes? Like it's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. I don't even. I, and I, care. I think yeah, like, like, <laughs> I, what's going to happen though is you're going to have you're going to have a lot more patience and understanding for Derek Lalone's struggles. I, uh, this just <laughs> came in. Scott writes in. When I think of inspirational sports pe- speeches, I think of Lou Gehrig. Today, I'm the luckiest man alive. Newt Rockney win one for the Gipper, and now Kang quote I really don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Now this is an opportunity for Kang here, right? Yep. Okay, because nobody's stepping up. Kang can step up. Can you got some leverage here, though. You can make some demands. You can insist on some things. Like, all right, all right, I'll coach. But on these conditions, and you set up however you want, I have nothing to do with orange slices and high C. Juice boxes, whatever. That's not my, that's up to you. And I need someone else to volunteer that, that, see, to that, help me it. set up. They weren't volunteering to coach. They're probably not running to volunteer to help the coach. He's just saying to volunteer to help set things up ahead of time. No, that's the that's on the coach, man. I'm, I'm trying to help you out. But Doug's to right. To rope somebody else into it. If someone's not stepping up now, they're not going to step up to help. You know, I think someone's going to step up anyway. It's chicken. It is chicken. It, it is a total game of chicken. Someone's stepping up. Someone's uh, let's get back to your phone calls. Brian, you're on 97 on the ticket. Hi, Brian. Hi, guys. Coach Kane, how you doing this morning? Um, I I just got to say this. They might be chasing butterflies at this level at turf tots, but here soon you're going to be coaching these kids while they're chasing college dreams and also going off to the service. It's been almost 20 years for me, and I started out just, yep, I'll do it this one time. Almost 20 years later, you're a coach. I have a feeling you're going to do it. But like Gator just said, make sure somebody does the snack route. Take that off your shoulders because you don't want to be a part of that right now. That's right. I hear you, Brian. Thank you very much for sharing, Mike. You're you, know, on- you know, Brian sounded like another coach in town. He sounded a lot like Campy. I'm wondering, maybe maybe you should call Coach Campy, Kang. Get some help. Might have some word of advice. Yeah. He's got a little downtime. Is but that how know? he got stuck? He just volunteered at Oakland and he's been there 30 years or whatever? Years, yeah. <laughs> Kang, we haven't even gotten into the pressure to win. <laughs> Let's go to Mike. You're next. Hi, Mike. Hey, how you guys doing? We're okay. Uh, my blood's boiling, Kang. You got me going today. Oh. I've been a coach administrator for the last eight years. Um, trying to find coaches is like getting tooth pulled nowadays. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Yeah, it's really a lot of parents that, you know, they do, they take the tact of let's wait till the last minute. Let's, you know, we'll see, someone else can step up and do this. And then when the season starts and the coach that started a day before the season starts, basically uh, their team starts getting murdered week after week. <laughs> and the parents all want to complain about, where's the coach? Why does our coach suck? Well, your kids didn't have any practice. Get out there on the field. Do what you have to do. It's not that hard. It's literally... 12 to 15 hours of your precious time every, like, precious. six months to a year. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, Ken. Go ahead and do it. Call them up right now and take the job. Mike, when you, you say you're a coach administrator, so your job is yeah. to fill the coaching, get volunteering volunteer coaches for a – is it a soccer league? Yes, it's a youth soccer league in Harrison Township. How many, how many teams do you have to, to find coaches for? Typically between fifteen and twenty a year. And how many? And when does the league start? Um, it starts in the fall and it carries over to the spring. But you'll have coaches that start in the fall and then they their kid doesn't want to do it anymore, aka the dad doesn't want to do it anymore. Or <laughs> right. Uh, right. yeah, it's really it's it's heartbreaking sometimes because it's like, especially in that age group, it's like the kids aren't doing anything. They're you got kids picking grass. It's not super competitive. Their parents aren't fighting and arguing one another. It's a it's, swarm really to the ball. To it. Yeah, mom. yeah, it, it's and it's rewarding, especially when you actually teach them something and you, you know, teach them a skill and they you see them develop underneath your tutelage, Kang. I mean, you have time to go play pickup right. basketball, buddy. He, oh <laughs> wow, God, not, not Mike, anymore. Mike's out guilting him into it. Uh, he dropped that. He is right about that. It is rewarding when you teach them something. But here's my question: I think we got championship. Where where are you in terms of your soccer knowledge? Uh, I used to play FIFA a lot. Okay. Um, oh, cool. you, then that you helps. are qualified. Yeah. World Cup comes around. I I, I check it out. Yeah. I check it out. You're okay. set. You uh, I this. know. I know who Messi is. I know who the good players are. Yeah. Did you ever play? Yes, when I was a youth, just like everyone else, it seems like, right? Okay. And I was fine. It's it's not like I don't have a passion for soccer. I don't hate soccer, but I don't love soccer. At this age, you just got to teach yeah. basics, right? You got to. Here's Here, how you do a throw in legally. Here's here's what offsides is. Here are some of the basic rules. You can't, you know, knock somebody down and. I'm but like, I'm not gonna. I don't want to yell at little Aiden because he's just not paying attention, <laughs> right? Like, no, seriously. Look, look at Jackson. He doesn't want to play. It's Jackson. too hot out. Stop. I don't want to mess with these kids, right? Like this. I'm not gonna. Let's go, McKenna. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Madison. Here we go, yes. Riley. That, that it's is... up to you. <laughs> Honestly, you guys have nailed it. Yeah. Got all the names. It's like, Pre- I hear Preston's going to play. Is he going to play? <laughs> no. Feedback coming in. Nick writes in, freaking love it. Watermelon Sharks, baby. We knew you'd step up. Chris and Mount Clemens, Kang's only hope is a recently divorced mom's new boyfriend will volunteer to coach to impress the there MILF and show up yes. the likely deadbeat dad. Yeah. Yeah. Show him up. You got any of those? Have you, have you, have you done your uh, do research on the no, roster? They don't tell anything. I mean, because at this point, I think that once they find the coaches, they got to split up those kids. They can't be on the same you know team. Oh, the teams they haven't even formed yet? No. Not oh. that I know of. Brian writes in, I coach my son's baseball and basketball teams because my wife signed me up to do it. Fun part about being dad coach is when your son sits down on the court because he doesn't want to listen to dad anymore. Stay strong, Kang. That's fun. And this one, Kang, it will turn into a long-time commitment. Rob, eight-year-old league board member that offered to help nine years ago. Eight-year little league board member that offered to help nine years ago. Wow. This is, this is an eight-week contract, boys. At, Dude, at with, with our schedule, you should coach. It's not about schedule. <laughs> it's about one. <want>. Yes. <laughs> this is so great. Why don't you want? Let's get to it. Let's get to it. You know, why someone's going to step up. Want? They did last year. They're going to do it again this right, year. But why is it that you don't want to? I just is, told is, you is all it, the reasons. Well, is it a lazy factor? Or is this like you don't want the pressure of the having to deal with all, everything? It's, it's everything. Showing up first, you know, having to direct other children that aren't mine. You know, I'm I'm a big believer and I'm I'll parent my own kid. You can parent your own. This is kinda like you have to yeah. you have it's to tell the people's man. kids what to do. Yeah. It's all changing. Hey, just watch Ted Lasso. You'll be all set. It's Carson Anderson, ninety seven won the ticket. 
It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Actually, it's right around the corner. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel's your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 bonus bets guaranteed if your first bet wins or loses. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash Doug to make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Must be 21 or older and present in Michigan. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fandle.com. Gambling problems? Call 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help. We're going to push back and get to some Lions draft talk today at 1130. We got bigger fish to fry. I mean, honestly, this is crazy how much feedback we get on this because so many parents have been through it. Heck, if you played sports, there was typically a dad that that coached. Sometimes a mom that coached. Um, less moms when we were kids, but more moms do it now. But the point is, Kang is staring down this volunteer coach position that nobody is is stepping up and taking and for his daughter to compete in soccer it's 15 days away and still nobody said they'd be the coach and so <laughs> it's up. what 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 happened to all the control freaks out there where are the people 
Well, I'm I'm one. That's why you coach. Yes. So we're, we're, we're all the control freaks. Why? Aren't that's they? why I started coaching. I, I, that's why I was like, oh, we can make the schedule. That's what uh, the guy. Who, <laughs> it was Tucker Steele who said we're, gonna, we're putting together a, a baseball team. This is during hockey. We're going to get hockey kids. We're going to do baseball. I need an assistant coach. Would you want to do it? I'm like, nope. But then he said to me, you know, the coaches get to make the schedule. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and at first I'm like, okay, this is good. We can make the schedule around hockey. I can actually make the schedule that works for me. First thing in the morning on Sunday morning. Here's what I didn't realize, though. When I made the schedule, like practices and games and all that, we made the schedule out. The only person that could be at everything was me. I was basically going to be the team manager. And next thing I know, other coaches couldn't be there, which wasn't their fault. It was my fault. And then I ended up coaching. Now, this is literally like 12 years later, I am still coaching. And it's for my youngest son's team. And I will tell you, it is rewarding. It really is rewarding. And I enjoy the hell out of the kids. I enjoy the hell out of the, most of the parents. <laughs> but, <laughs> most. Well, I mean, seriously, when you get when you move beyond like the wreck and head and you get into travel and you're making your own roster, there have been, not, not for our team, but there are parents who you don't want around. And um, we haven't had really issues with parents. But the the... There have been people that wanted to join the team years ago. I kind of knew the parents and said, I don't think we want yeah, to. I'm it. sorry. We already have an Aiden on the team. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can I, can I get it you a Mason? It was, yeah, I right. want to say for the record, <laughs> I had no Mason. problems. I, it wasn't an Aiden. <laughs> I just want to say for the record because we had an Aiden, and I don't want the Aiden to think we're talking about him or his parents. It was a – What are the odds you had an Aiden on the team? Yeah, yeah. right. But oh, it, no. was a, it, was, it was a kid that never got on the team. That we were, I kind of knew the dad's reputation. Was it Doug? <laughs> it was not Doug. <laughs> Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Mike is next. Hi, Mike. Uh, hi. First of all, King, let me be the first to congratulate you on your new coaching position. <laughs> I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's a sacrifice, and how much you love your daughter to do that is just incredible. So I want to say thank you. It's an inspiration to me. <laughs> So here's what happened. When I was an early early dad, uh, now probably 10 years ago, our first rec baseball coach, he sat us down, first parent meeting, and you should really do this. He said, I'm the coach, you're the parents, you sit there. If I hear your voice, then you sit way out there. We don't do tunnels, we don't do snacks. We play baseball, we have a meeting, and then we go home. And it was the greatest thing ever, and I never was on a team that did tunnels or snacks after that. Gator doesn't know what tunnels are. Tunnels are when the game is over, the parents make a human tunnel. They put their hands up yeah. and the little kids run through them. And the kids, <laughs> the honest to God, the kids. I don't love know if it. everybody can yeah. hear the eye roll over the air when I heard that description. They absolutely <laughs> love it. Yeah, they do. It was a but young Jim here, Leland here, man. <laughs> Here's another thing that's really important. I did I did end up coaching my, my boys in baseball, and we coached them for seven years, and a lot of those boys were part of the state champion Novi High School baseball team. Not because of our coaching, was that, but it was really, really, really cool to see that happen. Are you, talking, no about, policy. Are you talking about last year's Novi team? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yep. We just we just played them. Don't worry, Gator. Cool They're good. They're really good. We make sure the tunnels are big enough for for all the kids to get through. Just okay. let me give you a couple more uh, things that you're going to have to learn, Coach. When you're going to have to learn interim, at you're, you're going to have to find. You're going to have to fill out that form and learn about concussions and concussion policy. That's all part of almost everything now. Get ready to ask about peanut allergies. Oh, Trust that's me, no. Like, I think that's like a just that's a hard rule and everywhere with dude, kids. Dude, I'm telling you, I think that's straight the concussion up. thing is they don't mess around with the concussion thing. What, the fact that you're going to this has got to be infuriating to you. Though. You're going because you're going again. It gets back to the whole the point I made earlier. When you see parents on the sidelines of the games, you got to be pissed. When you when you decided to coach, I was one of those parents. I last the last two years, I was on the sidelines. I didn't volunteer. The clearly, sec, the second that one of them opens their yap about anything having to do with the game and how it's being played, like no, Susie, you can't do that. You have to go inside to outside and say, "Here you go, Skip. Come on." Well, Give yeah, whistle. if you're going to do that, you may as well coach. I will say, I don't think you're going to have it at five. But this was the other thing I learned from Tucker Steele. He held the first meeting with the parents, and he was a total jerk. Like, it's my way. I mean, he read them, and I was like, oh, my God, what do I got myself into? 
I walked away. I was like, dude. And he goes, yeah, you do that the first meeting. They don't bother you all year. Now I'll be the nicest guy ever. And I'm like, watched it play out. And he was right. Now who, <laughs> if you, but you're not getting, they're five. I mean, that's yeah. when you get to, I mean, when you're well, coaching nine, travel, it's different. I was about to say, when you're coaching travel, <laughs> uh, Bob and Rochester, you're next. What's up, Bob? Hey guys. I'm one of those uh, parents that were on the sidelines who complained all the time and 2004, the coach handed me a whistle and he walked away. And I've been doing middle school lacrosse ever since. But like you said, <laughs> the years. greatest feeling is the uh, yeah. And the greatest feeling is what you said is when you see them accomplish a lot in high school when you sit in those stands. Mm-hmm. So one other thing, put it on your resume. Maybe your future employer will see what type of guy you are when you can coach. There you go. There you go. Help advance your career. Yeah, how did you start this? Oh, I was forced to. Yes. Yeah. Well, you don't say that, but <laughs> it wasn't gunpoint, but it may as well have been. Joe is next on ninety seven one. Hi, Joe. Joe? Anything else? Nope. Oh, we got an order going on. Yeah, of course, yeah. Yep. What are we getting there, what you Joe? Got, Joe? Hey, I'm going Mickey D, you gotta get some lunch here. All right, cool. Hey, advice for Kang. Yep. Two things. Number one, you need a rock solid snack schedule. Rock solid, that's important. Mm-hmm. And the second thing is you have to have the girls come out with a cheer and a dance. Cheer that's and a dance. That's the only two things that matter. They're not really interested in soccer. The cheer, the dance, and the snacks. That's what you need. He's more right than wrong. Um, but yes, I, I think tunnel. I mean, are you going to be a no tunnel coach? No, I got to do the tunnel. This, yeah. At this age, man, I'm very firm believer in you have to have the kids enjoy and love yes. the sport you and want, have fun. You want them to want to play when the exactly. season's over. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Because, yeah, I'm not trying to listen. No one else. Hey, I'll tell them straight. None of you guys are Alex Morgan. <laughs> none of you guys are Messi. None of you are going to make it. None of you are going to make it. <laughs> but damn it, we're going to have fun. No, why, why am I even doing I'm not doing any of this. I'm not going to be the coach. You yeah, guys you have are. tricked me. <laughs> oh, you have tricked coach. me. You got this. Remember, Matt. gear. Gear. It's all about gear. Yeah, you get some Watermelon Sharks merch. Uh, Matt in St. Clair Shores. Hi, Matt. Hey boys, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the bit for a second. Listen, the 16 years I've been listening to the show, there's been one theme: getting Metro Detroit men closer to by putting deposits in the bank of Goodwill. Absolutely, Kang, you are st- Kang, you are standing in the vault of Goodwill with the Goodwill Powerball ticket right now. You can get out of anything else you ever want to do by just doing this. You want to go golfing? Hey, honey, I just got to go golfing just to get off the soccer schedule. You want to go play basketball? Hey, honey, I got to do this for, you know, to blow off some steam for this. You have the Trump hand on everything for the rest of your being, Kang, and you are spitting it in his face. Yeah, he's so he's Kang, right. Kang, it's time to open that vault door, take all the goodwill you possibly can, and just walk down Main Street and enjoy life for the for the next twenty years. So all these these you know goodwill deposits I'm making, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know no, if you're just ma- one giant deposit. Well, You'll never well, have to make right, deposits. This one giant one. I don't know if you're married or not, but then I'll go to the bank to you know withdraw, and the bank has a headache. Or the bank is tired. Okay, so there, there's never a power shift in this. Okay, the bank all of a sudden is, you know, bank, I just want to go to bed early tonight. The, the, bank, the bank may not be all that impressed. No, the bank is, you know what, this is our time. We, it's a private business. We'll close when we want to. Carson Anderson, let's get to some Lions stuff. Draft. We're less than two weeks to go. 97 won the ticket.
Hey, what's up? It's Carson Anderson, 97 won the ticket. Spent most of the first hour talking Red Wing hockey. Man, it's a wild ride at the end of this season. They're still in it, people. In spite of their best efforts to take themselves out of it, they're still in it. And look, um, you know, they built up a, a lead. They've lost the lead, but those points they got earlier in the year are keeping them from being completely out of it. Right here, right now, but uh, barring a, a white hot finish and probably winning the last three. I mean, they could still get in if they don't win the last three, but winning the last three, I think, would do it. But <laughs> I mean, where do we have evidence? Where do we find evidence they're going to win the last three? I suppose if they beat Toronto, come home from Montreal and then at Montreal, weird schedule, by the way. Home from Montreal, then at Montreal. Yeah, it is a weird way to finish things up. And uh, it's also weird that. You know, Washington and Philadelphia play last day of the season for those two teams, and then Pittsburgh and the Islanders play on the last game, last day of the season as well. I mean, these it's amazing how it works out. All mm-hmm. these teams are vying for the playoff spot, and they're playing each other win the last game. But they play Montreal at home Monday and then at Montreal on Tuesday. Yeah, that's weird. And, I mean, it's cool that Montreal is not very good, and it's timely a timely time to play them. Well, it's also it's unfair in a way. Wings travel to Toronto. Yeah. They have to play at Toronto. Then they fly back to Detroit, play uh, home against Montreal, then fly back out to Montreal. Why wouldn't they have done it where you play at Toronto, at Montreal, and finish up home against Montreal? Dude. The hell. Dude, the hell. Uh, Okay, so we said we get to some Lions stuff. I'm going to say something and tell me I'm wrong. Okay. The secondary was the weakest position group last year. You're not wrong. Okay. I don't know if the secondary is a position group. Safety is a position group. Corner is a position group. I can see the As far as levels of the defense, there's the defensive line, there's the linebackers, And and there's the secondary. And I would say that of the three, secondary was clearly the weakest and probably... Probably on the entire team. Uh, So far, the offseason, as far as regular contributors, C.J. Gardner-Johnson, out. Cam Sutton, out. Jerry Jacobs, out. Chase Lucas, out. If Chase Lucas was a contributor, but he's out. And so far, they brought in Carlton Davis and Amik Robertson. It feels like there's still additions required here, doesn't it? Yes. Yep. So the Lions have 30 pre-draft visits. According to Pride of Detroit, the Lions have met with eight defensive backs so far. Seven of them are corners. Kool-Aid McKinstry, Quantez Stiggers, Terion Arnold, Andrew Phillips, Kalen Carson, Nehemiah Pritchard, Siona Vikai, he's the safety, but he can play corner, Enos Rakestraw. Quinion Mitchell has said he had a, a formal meeting with the Lions at the draft. So at the combine, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. At the combine, my bad, not the draft. Um, so there's a couple things here. One is when you have 30 pre-draft visits and you've used seven of them on corners, that's interesting from a perhaps shifting of philosophy standpoint, right? I mean, you, you, they always go best player. They always talk about their philosophy as best player available. Yeah. No matter what position that player plays. And in this particular instance, they've used essentially a quarter of their visits on one position group. That doesn't seem to fall in line with them going BPA, does it? Well, I mean, what you don't know is who they visited with at the combine. We don't know. All right, so that's a big part of it. And at this point, you know, as you've built up this team over the last few years, I think that you can you can take away that you know you don't have to go for certain positions. You don't have to interview quarterbacks, right? You likely don't have to interview running backs. Yeah. I mean, I. it sounds like they might, though. They might. I mean, they, they, you, you, could. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. you could. You're you right. Seven Dude, rounds of not... drafting. Who knows what you're going to end up taking at the latter rounds. But it doesn't feel like it's a, a sense of urgency, right? And maybe same thing with tight end. Mm-hmm. You, you brought Brock Wright back, so it doesn't feel like there's a, an urgency to get a tight end, though it wouldn't surprise me if they drafted one. I think that they'd like to concentrate on the offensive line, the defensive line, wide receiver, and secondary. It doesn't seem like they need linebackers. No, but the, here's the interesting thing about where the Lions are right now. They have they have cap space, and more than a little bit of cap space. If it were you, if you were running the Lions, Gator, how would you be addressing the corner spot? I would sign 
right now a free agent. That's what I would Full do. stop? Yeah. Okay, so you're not drafting one. No, no, I draft one too. Okay, but that's I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm looking for the no, full but, plan. But yeah, so right now the first first thing I do is I go out and I and I sign uh um somebody who's out there. Um Stefan Gilmore. Stefan Gilmore is out there. I, I go Xavier get Xavier Howard, Adoree yeah. Jackson. I, I sign one of those guys at corner. I, I might even sign a uh, a safety, Quandre Diggs. Dude, or, they, I think they only have three safeties right now under contract. Yeah, so I'm 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 looking to sign at least one, maybe two guys in the secondary, and I'm not ignoring it in the draft. I'm I'm I've got guys that I really like in the draft, and we'll see how the draft starts to flesh out. It, does it get to a point where, hey, you know what? I can move up and get Quinion Mitchell, or I can move up and I can get you know whatever corner that you love. To make sure that you don't miss out on them. Because you know there's going to be guys that they love and guys that they like. Okay, so your plan A is to sign a free agent. Yep. One-year deal. And draft one. Yep. Are you drafting one at 29? Are you drafting one in a middle round? Are you are you moving well, up? Well, the draft, that, that's where you fluctuate. And that's where you have to be fluid. And this is where you become Brad Holmes. The 29th pick is, it is what it's going to be. You don't know if you're staying at 29. I don't think he is. Do you have the opportunity to move up and get the guy you really covet? Or is that guy, is it going to cost too much to move up that high? So you're relegated to staying where you're at and and seeing what players come to you at 29. And if you don't like that, then can you move back, get more draft capital? So we don't have hard data on where guys are going to be drafted. We have very soft data. And what we're going on is the draft experts and their mock drafts. To get the pool of players that could be available in those dra- in those rounds. But using the soft data available, they've had two guys come in that aren't going to be there at 29. Terion Arnold and Quinion Mitchell. Mm-hmm. Now, the hard data might be different. <laughs> the Lions, in, in, in building their draft board and w- w- their intel from around the league, maybe they're bringing in Terion Arnold and Quinnell Mitchell because they think they will be available. And and before you say, and I'm sure we're going to get the text and the response, there's no way they're going to be available. Yeah, got it. Except every year somebody's available that you don't expect to be available. Um, so let's understand you prepare for all scenarios. I mean, if you're if you're preparing a draft, you are preparing for all scenarios. It seems unlikely. It seems, and using, again, soft data to, to support this, it supports the theory that the Lions are going to try to trade up or trying to yeah. find like that's exactly what it does. They got they got the initial intel. They like Terion Arnold and Quinion Mitchell enough that they wanted to have him in on a visit to see if they indeed are worth trading up for. Yep. Is that a conclusion that's pretty safe to draw? I think so. Yep. I think so. I think obviously they've they've shown the ability to move back up into the first round. Uh, or to move back in the middle of the first round. I think that that 12 spot is probably important somewhere you know, t- between 11 and 15. It's kind of like a sweet spot for Brad Holmes with what he's done. And if they feel like they can get one of those two defensive backs there, that they they could make an effort to do so. They, they would make an effort to do so. Will it be enough? You don't want to overpay for it. No. So we'll see. So they've had Rake Straw from Missouri and Kool-Aid McKinstry from Alabama also come in. They feel like they fall into that category of couldn't move up. Let's see if we really want one of these two at 29, right? Yeah. Or do they, do they need to move up to like 25 or 26 to get one of those guys you know, without having yeah. to go out to the middle of the draft? But can you, do you are you going to have to move up in the twenties to get, to get them? Then you've got the next batch of guys, Nehemiah Pritchard from Auburn and Kalen Carson from Wake Forest. These are the at 61 guys. Yeah. yeah. These are, we've, we've gone a different route, like offensive linemen or defensive linemen with the first pick. And now we need to look at a second group of defensive backs. that could be available in the second round. And then again, we've got Andrew Phillips, the corner from Kentucky and Quantes Stiggers. The kid from Canada that's available for this draft. These are the, okay, we're through three rounds. We haven't taken a corner yet. Are one of these guys worth it? 
it, it I, I feel like we have just done the best, like the best with the available information to try and create the bucket of players that they could be eyeing at the corner spot, which I would say that for the first time in Brad Holmes' career, because of unforeseen circumstances, they may veer from the best player available. And not that they're going to overly reach for somebody, but if the best player available in the second round is Theo Johnson, the tight end from Penn State and Windsor, but Nehemiah Pritchard, the corner from Auburn, they have ranked just behind him, they might veer away from their long-held and staunch belief because of Cam Sutton. Because part of plan A was Cam Sutton was coming back to compete for CB2. And without Cam Sutton now, having to release him with the -the off-the-field issue, it might mean that they have to change things. So have we outlined the corner spot there reasonably well? I think so. And there's another, another possibility. Well, let's get to that coming up today at 1146. It's Carson Anderson, open lines, 971. All this rain we're getting, I hope you called Natchway Lawn and Tree Service because when it stops and starts to dry up, your lawn's going to look beautiful, man. It's going to be green. You get green and you stay green with Natural Way. 888-GET-GREEN is a telephone number for a limited time only. You purchase a full lawn program, you get free grub control, but you got to mention my name, Gator, and the station's 97 on the ticket. Listen, you want to control crabgrass. You don't want to see it this summer. If you do, you've messed up. That first application is the most important for crabgrass control. It's not too late to fix it. It's so much easier to prevent a problem than it is to fix one. So go ahead, schedule early, and call right now. 888-GET-GREEN is a telephone number. Natural is great because of what they do. Fewer chemicals, environmentally sound practices. They've been around for over 30 years. They're locally owned. They have the 100% satisfaction guarantee. This is a company I've used for almost a dozen years. I love the way my lawn looks. Each lawn is assigned its own specialist. they got certified applicators and arborists that come out and custom tailor solutions specifically for your yard and your home. Give them a call today, 888-GET-GREEN, or go to naturalwaylawn.com.
Doug Carr, Scott Anderson, 97 to ticket. Talking a little Lions draft. It's it's coming up, but it's coming up quickly. Had some Red Wing talk to open the show. 248-539-9797. Uh, in the meantime, Gator, we've we've talked about the corner spot and how it feels like there is perhaps some anecdotal evidence that the Lions are going to change the way they approach the draft. They've had seven corners come in for their limited 30 visits. They met with an eighth corner at the draft, and I'm sure there's more that haven't been reported yet. And just because you meet with somebody doesn't mean you're going to take that player. Uh, And just because you didn't meet with somebody doesn't mean you're not going to take that player. But it feels like they are really doing their homework on the corner spot. The Cam Sutton situation, that late curveball, has probably, it's probably, I, I don't know, rattled him's not the word. It's 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 probably the unexpected that they have to adjust to. And it feels like that adjustment may come on draft day. You're interviewing players that would fall into a bucket if, if you can trade up. You're interviewing players that look like they could be on the board at 29. You're interviewing players that look like they could be on the board at 61. And you're interviewing players that could be on the board later in the draft. We talked about free agency. You've kind of been in the Stephon Gilmore camp for quite some time, and they do have space. I'm going to guess that if the Lions have interest, the reason that hasn't happened yet is because Gilmore is, wants to seek all his options out and is waiting to see if there's a better option for him, whether it be financial or just immediate path to playing time or whatever. Uh, but you said there might be another way that they're addressing the corner spot. Uh, no, the, the other thing I was going to say is that because – all this intel is out there about who they've looked at at corner. I mean, it, is it possible it's a smokescreen? I don't think so. And the reason I don't think so is because you have a limited number of visits, and I don't think you would have seven corners come in to throw people off the scent. Okay. Then is it possible they draft two corners? I think it is possible. Because they've doubled down before. Well, look, I mean, we mentioned there are four guys that played last year that have left. They've brought in two. So I think it's possible they sign a free agent and draft a guy. Because it's, I mean, it's what they did the first draft. They doubled down. They took uh, Lee McNeil. They took uh, Levi and Zarike, and then Ali McNeil. I, what if I told you that the Lions signed Stephon Gilmore, and then trade this year's pick at twenty nine and next year's first rounder for Quinn, the rights to to draft Quinn yeah. Mitchell? Okay, it's interesting. Because really, they kind of gotten really to the place. I'm about hoarding draft picks. I think the only predictable success in the draft for the teams that seem to do well is they they often have eight to ten draft picks. They they trade and have more draft picks. And and look, we're talking about organizations like New England, Pittsburgh, Seattle, although I think New England's draft success has been overrated. Baltimore. These are organizations that have hoarded draft picks, mid to late round picks, and have really been able to take advantage of that. And it speaks to the value of how when you find a mid to late round gem, they don't cost anything. You've got them for a while. And then you can supplement your roster with more expensive players. So I think as we approach this deal, the Lions are actually in a rare place where they probably don't have as many available roster spots as they used to. So hoarding draft picks might not make sense in this snapshot of time of the 2024 draft. Well, I think something that a reason, one of the reasons why Holmes might like to hoard draft picks is because he likes to put them together to trade. You know, it's not necessarily having, oh, we had a draft class with 12 guys. It's we had 12 picks going into the draft and we ended up actually using seven of them because we combined a couple of, of draft picks to move up to get this guy. I think that's what he likes to do. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. An unnamed texter says, "Brad Holmes is multiple, Doug. He has multiple uh, guys. Brad loves Iowa players. Cooper DeGene is the pick. Can play cornerback, safety, and return returns kicks. He's very versatile. Then why haven't they talked to him? Well, they might have. We just haven't heard it yet. But I, <laughs> I mean, if I'm going to go on that theory, solid theory. <laughs> does Brad Holmes like Alabama players? Yeah." If if he truly likes players from Iowa and Alabama, now here's what we know. We know that they have watched a lot of Iowa and Alabama film over the last couple of years. They've drafted players from those schools. But, but I mean, look, they they watch film of everybody. It's not like... And no stone is unturned. Yeah, it's not like they go, actually, we've, we've just watched McKinstry and DeGene. We're all set. <laughs> we don't need to look at anybody else. And Terry on Arnold. 
And Frank, if you're going to watch Iowa film, you just ignore the offensive side this past year. <laughs> just look at the defense. Was he good? He was good. Yeah. He's really good. He's very good. He should like Cooper DeGene. And with the return rules this year changing, you should love Cooper DeGene. Uh, more here. Do you think maybe that's why Brad said there isn't a need for a cornerback because he's got a lock, he's got it locked in. He believes he'll get one of them. Uh, it's possible. It's possible. And Dan Campbell talked about free agency and, and made it seem like they were still in the market for a safety. Yep. And there's still plenty of safeties out there. Some really good safeties out there. In fact, Doug, don't forget Tracy Walker gone. That's from Jeff and Warren. Yeah, we were talking about corners specifically, but you're right. Tracy Walker is gone. You just mentioned safety. He's mentioned safety. I said earlier they only got three under contract. There's still work to be done this offseason. We thought for a minute there they were going to take a full roster into the draft to allow them to go BPA, but that doesn't appear to be the case. Uh, Serdan writes in, Gator free agent isn't the only way. One could trade. Yep. like a player and draft pick. My question is which corner fits the Lions best. 100% true, and they've already done that. For Carlton Davis. Yeah. Would they do it again? They might. They might. And we still don't know if they're going to extend Carlton Davis or what? what's going on. Kang, you have any thoughts on this corner talk? I feel Brad Holmes is pretty straightforward. I think when he has guys in for visits, he's genuinely interested. There's no smoke screen going on. He didn't have time to divert others, you know, and play the game. I think they're looking at – they have a lot of cornerback and defensive back visits for a reason. Um, he likes to be – it sounds like from all the cuts and interviews Brad Holmes has done, he likes to see players – perform live and if he doesn't get to perform doesn't get to make it out to one of their games or their scouts he wants to bring him in to interview him I think he's just doing his due diligence and I think there is a hyper focus on secondary I think all those players you've mentioned every one of them is obtainable Brett Holmes has shown he will move up he will move back he will stay where he's at so no one's off limits you don't just sit there and go well we pick a 29 who's going to be available there and then we focus on that right he's I think there's a reason why they brought in so many defensive backs, guys. I think they are looking for whatever you want to call the Sutton situation. I think that rerouted them a little bit, and they're, now they're looking for secondary help. Well, look, they're uh, it, it's all there in front of them, and it's going to be coming up in 13 days, the first round of the NFL draft. Well, the other thing you can't ignore, and, and he has said it, many others have said it too, you can't have enough good defensive backs. No. So, I mean, that's why you bring them in. <laughs> And the roster's kind of short right now at yeah. corner and safety. So if you're looking at, at, like, projecting ahead, we're getting some news on this. Well, the other thing is, is you look at, we mentioned that Carlton Davis, they haven't extended him yet. So yep. so far, he's just here for a year. Uh, the other guys they have are on one-year deals. Um, so when you draft one, you got them for four or five, depending on if it's a first-round pick or not. Mm -hmm. So they don't have anybody that's, Guaranteed to be here for more than a year. And Holmes, he apparently loves looking at cornerback tape. He considers himself kind of a defensive back connoisseur, right? Is that what he said? Yeah. Yep. I mean, when he came in here, they got rid of Okuda. They brought in C.J. Gardner-Johnson, brought in E-Man, brought in Sutton. Now they're looking they, – now this past offseason brings in Robertson, brings in Carlton Davis. I think he – this is a – this is one of his expertise areas, or or he, or he just really enjoys looking at the secondary. I think they're doing this for a reason. They're, they're going to continue revamping this secondary. Buckle up, 248-539-9797. Phone calls, feedback, your thoughts on the Lions and the draft. How would you, what resources would you put into the secondary? Free agent, draft pick, both. Give us your plan. Your plan. Gator, I asked you right away. You said sign a free agent and – and draft. Yep. So you want you want two more corners brought in, and that includes the possibility of of trading up. The perfect case scenario for you is what? It's sign Stephon Gilmore. St Stephon Gilmore and trade up and take Quinion Mitchell. Yes. Who's mad at that? Probably nobody. Although uh, you have to give draft something. Capital, yeah. Yeah, they have to give up some future draft capital, likely to do that. What would your plan be, people? 248-539-9797. Some Tiger stuff we'll get to next hour. Also, Gator Sauce Show last night. I want to get your review. You're going to tell me off there. I said, let's save it. Let's All do right. it on the air. That coming up today at 12.05. We'll mix in your Lions feedback. It's Carson Anderson, 97.1 The Ticket.
What do you make of this new uniform story for the Lions? Inspired, apparently in some way, by the Ford Bronco. I don't know. In light of OJ just dying, I don't know if I want to have any association with the Bronco for a little bit. Seems really weird, doesn't it? It's a really cool looking truck right now, but um, yeah, I have no. We haven't seen the jerseys yet, so uh, with they're, they're touting them as being the, they're going to be the best in the league. We'll see. Mm-hmm. We'll see. So, um, did you see the story in the free press? For people who didn't see it. Um, it was about this. Rod Wood was a keynote speaker at the Detroit Economic Club's NFL draft panel. On the panel, it's Rod Wood, Dave Burkett of the Free Press, Nick Palmgrounder of the Athletic, and the Birchie kid from 97.1. And there's oh a picture. Really? Yeah, there's a picture of Birchie <laughs> up there being Birchie. And congratulations to Birchie on your Boston College Eagles. Better team won last night. They, they're they they're really, really good. Um as far as the new uniforms uh, are concerned, I always think that it's an impossible. Whenever a new uniform is introduced, there is there's a it, it's the impossible task. You're never going to introduce a uniform, and 100 percent of the people are going to go, "That's awesome," right? Correct. It's just impossible. It's almost as if the bar is, don't screw this up. Oh, that's definitely the bar. Yep. <laughs> um, you know, did the Lions have the best jersey in the NFL? No. Uh, is it top half? I love the color. I, I'm partial to it. I really like it. I think it's definitely top half. So don't do something that's worse than what you have. Can you improve on it? Sure you can. So let's see it. I mean, I'm looking at this in the free press, reading about the new Lions uniform. The reveal date for the new Lions uniform is a week away. Rob Wood remained tight-lipped on giving any details to the crowd before its April 18th reveal. So that's next Thursday. Lions made the decision to update the jerseys a few years ago after passing the five-year period of not changing uniforms required by the NFL following the latest update in 2017. Here is the quote. We've worked on this for two years with the league office, with Nike, who designs the jerseys, led by Brian Fuccini, our chief communications officer and chief operating officer, Mike Disner, and members of their team. Wood said they will not stray far from the classic Lions look with a modern twist. I think our goal was to honor the past. We have great colors and we have great history, but also put a modern twist on it. So I think when you see them, you'll see both of those things and you'll and you'll see hopefully uniforms that propel us for the next five years to be one of the great uniforms in the NFL, and we're never going to change them dramatically. But there's always an opportunity to modernize them, and I think people will see that. Okay, what does modernize them mean? There was an era there where modernize the hockey uniforms meant teal. <laughs> there was an era there where modernize the NFL uniform meant black. There was a modern there a, a time where modernize them meant highlight or yellow. They were all or green. There were all kinds of phases we went through. God, I was I was interviewing I, Tom I, Wilson once before the Pistons unveiled the horses' heads. Yeah. And I jokingly said, They're not teal, are they? And he's like, oh, you'll well, see. You and guess see. what? They were teal. Yeah. Because everybody was getting a teal version of their jersey, it seemed. Then adding black to the jersey became a big deal, or just going with a black jersey became a big deal. Highlighter colors became a big deal. What is I don't know I'm I'm not I, what does uh, the I'm modernizing to, mean now? Trying to think of teams that may have switched things up over the last couple of years with a jersey, and I think about the Rams, mm-hmm. and it looks like they had like the puffy jersey, like puffy numbers. I, I oh yeah, they're, they they look they like shiny and yeah they look they they actually well like puffy like a puffy sticker as opposed to it, a normal sticker. It does look. I don't want right. please don't do that. Please don't do that. Why don't you like that? I think it looks it's childlike. Is it? Oh, we know how you feel about what? I'm just that's not you hate it. children. That's we not know. it. You don't have to keep emphasizing. I'm it. just trying to emphasize the puffy sticker aspect of it. Puffy stickers are for children. These well, are men out there risking their lives for our entertainment. Don't wear a puffy jersey. Well, you realize it's not actually puffy. You don't know. 
Maybe they'll take it to that level just to, to make it. Uh, we're trying to. We're worried about the safety of the player in the NFL. Well, I, I do. <laughs> as we work on the 18th game and playing on Christmas and every day of the week. Yeah. What what does modernize it mean anymore? It means QR codes. Yeah. The QR code's gonna look like a lion. Like when you you know I'm just kidding, guys. Yeah, that's, not, it, that's not gonna happen, but I don't well, know. There was, it was like a camo era, not in the NFL, but in other sports with the digital camo was big. Yeah. Well they did some baseball uniforms did that. Didn't they they have that for like the 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 hoodies on the side on the sidelines, don't they? They had military stuff. Yeah. Yep, they did. So I don't think that's modern. I, I, I mean, that's just I, going I very will, niche. There was an era where I was coaching youth baseball where every team had a digital camel uniform. Like they all did. And so I, I don't, I want to kind of call our shot here a little bit, but I'm not creative enough. What does modernize the uniform entail in this day and age? Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. 97 With that said, they did, I think, please more people than not with the blue helmet they introduced last year. Is that a safe statement? That more people like that than not? I think it's a safe statement, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go too far because I love it. I, I love it too. But I know not everybody loves it. But I think I think for the most part, people are very, I think they, they definitely approve of it. The does that third helmet or the second helmet or whatever it is become the everyday helmet? Do you think? Do you think they build the uniform around that? I don't think they would. I wouldn't have an issue if they did. Yeah, but I don't think that's the case. Okay, how about? Okay, here's the modernized thing. The one thing I've thought of: flat mat, like the mat helmet look or the mat. Maybe incorporate that into a jersey. No, that's definitely that is definitely a uh, uh, a, a more modern, a more modern approach to it. I'm I'm not a fan of it, but I understand a lot of people are. So I I get why they would why they could entertain that. Yep. I'm thinking when you mentioned Ford Bronco, I'm thinking like you know the Bronco looks like it's got some interesting color schemes to it, like color options if you're going to buy it. Right. Um. Obviously, they're not going to go something way out of the ordinary, but is there gray or their blue is that a color that they want to switch to and what is it about that why is the bronco being brought up like, what is it about the bronco that i think maybe they're going to use the font maybe that bronco font as to, the way to write the lions Could or be. something maybe because i'm trying to figure it out too guys is that what it is why they're incorporating the two i don't know or why he brought it up i don't know i haven't been able to find the actual quote i just heard falar say it in the update um, but I, I'm, I'm intrigued by this and uniforms get a lot of reaction, man. Now it, what is it? It's hoping to sell more merch, change things up every five years. League doesn't want you doing it too much. So you, so you, you don't outdate your stuff automatically, but, and they are trying to get you back into the store. So uniform reveal coming up in six days. Modernize it. Do you what, think? What does that mean? Uniforms. I mean, if the team's good now, right? So, do you think almost no matter what they put out, people are just be like, "All right, you know, hey, this is this is the new grit era. This is this is Holmes Campbell. The team's good. They'll eat it up." It do, it it does feel like we've because these are strange times for us. So you might be right because it's easy to pile on a losing team. People are like, "Oh, that sucks. We're losing." You know. We, we're not good. These uniforms follow suit. Mm-hmm. But now they're good. It's like Goff says, enough with the negativity. We're good now. We're it, no longer the underdogs. Although what's weird is, and we've seen this happen before, when things are going well and you do anything to the uniform and things stop going well, people blame your clothing. Oh, do they? And <laughs> so there's that possibility as well. If they come out this year and aren't killing it, you know we're going to get the call. It's a stupid uniform, guys. Right, right. I just went on a uh, Ford's website to to build a Bronco to see because I want to see what colors that they had to see if there was something that could be relevant to this. Yeah, they have a blue, but the blue is really it's it's called Atlas Blue Metallic, and it's it's a little bit darker than what a Honolulu blue is, and I I don't see that. 
But they also have something called Azure Gray Tinted Clear Coat. It's kind of like a grayish blue. Mm -hmm. It's a really cool color. If it's a color scheme thing, and Kang, I hear what you're saying with like the, the, the font of the Bronco. Combine that, that'd be an interesting look. I yeah, like, it's kind, I it's like kind this. Of a, this it's like a light blue, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the azure gray is really kind of cool. It's a cool color. Interesting. Well, that could be it. All right, we got sidetracked. Stuff to get caught up on. We were talking about the actual football team and the draft. Uh, plus, Gator saw a show last night. I want to get your review on the air live. That today at 1220. Hey, it took all week, but we finally made it to the weekend. And Twin Peaks is ready to party. Twin Peaks loves April in the D. And... They can feature local pro hockey, basketball, and baseball action every day. And make sure you've cleared Saturday night for UFC 300. It takes center stage at Twin Peaks. What a card they have in store. Men's lightweight belt up for grabs. Pereira versus Hills. The women's strawweight belt dynamite matchup. Gaethje and Holloway as well. Plus Oliver and Sarakayan. Fight night at Twin Peaks just hits harder. $3.99 cheap shots like Howlerhead. Jack Flavors, and Screwball. Hand-cut New York strips. There is the House Smoke Brisket Tacos, breaded order boneless wings. It's not your typical bar food, people. It's really good. I love the food there. And they serve up their famous 29-degree draft beer that's cold to the last drop. Ice cold. Uh, have you ever seen beer crystals? And did I mention the Twin Peaks girls? They make it all happen. Come by and see why there's no better place for UFC action to find a location nearest you, go to TwinPeaksRestaurant.com. That's TwinPeaksRestaurant.com. Twin Peaks, eats, drinks, and scenic views.
Doug Carr, Scott Anderson, 97 on the ticket. What's on the agenda today? Well, look, it's uh, it's a reveling day, and it's a frustrating one, and I don't know how to characterize what, by definition, we should enjoy, a playoff chase, and yet it doesn't feel like Detroit fans are enjoying what they've seen. Uh, the last two games have been characterized must-win games. They've won neither of them. By definition, they also clearly weren't must-win games because the Red Wings are still only a point out of the playoffs. With three games left, uh, I would suggest getting hot right now and winning some games. That's my suggestion to the Red Wings. I'm sure they're open to suggestions and are probably pretty grateful for that. Uh, Look, I mean, Lucas Raymond did his part. I'd say Dylan Larkin did his part. Others did their part. They weren't great defensively, though. Like Tuesday's game felt like a very... um, a, a complete game in every way except putting the puck in the net. They had controlled play. They got shots on net. I didn't think they were that bad defensively. I mean, they only lost 2-1, but they just couldn't put the puck, the puck past Lindbergh and Lindbergh lingered. Uh, either way, they came out last night and they weren't quite as sharp defensively. Now, did they play with a desperation, trailing most of the game, and scoring a huge goal, a huge goal late, clawing back from two goals down, yeah. Yeah, they did. And that point might turn out to be very significant, right? Yeah, it ends up being very significant uh, because nobody wants to to grab a hold of the second wild card spot. Nope. Um, you know, the team, it, it, it's crazy. You think about how far back the Islanders were not that long ago. Now the Islanders are locked into the third spot in their division. Um, but everybody else is just fumbling at the opportunity to, to grab the wild card. So they're still in it with three games to go. But I think they put themselves in a position now where they have to win the three games. In the meantime, we're also talking some Lions draft stuff. We've got the uniform conversation that's out there. What does modernize the uniform mean in 2024 to you? I went flat mat. I think there'd be some flat mat elements. Gator, you think that there could be some elements, maybe a bit of a color change. Uh, what is it called? The azure gray? The azure gray. Yeah. Azure gray of the Bronco. Um. What do you think that means when you hear that the Lions are going to, quote, modernize the uniforms? What does that mean to you? 248-539-9797. Katie, you went and saw a show last night. I did. You see a lot of shows. Uh, I, well, I, yeah, I guess. Um, well, certainly expect. compared to Kang and I. Sure. I will agree with that. I'm so. about one a year. Kang, how many how many concerts do you go to a year? Like outside of my living room? Yep. None. <laughs> yep. Okay. So... My brother, who's a couple years older than I am, a couple, two and a half years older than I am, uh, he grew up and uh, and he was a big Pink Floyd fan. So, okay. kind of by proxy, I, I kind of became a, a Pink Floyd fan as well. And then uh, forty years ago, wow, I can't believe it's been forty years. Um, uh, actually, thirty years ago, thirty years ago, we went to see Pink Floyd play at. The I was Silver about Island. to say, funny. yeah. Well, it was the it was a thirtieth anniversary of the. Uh, uh, of a Pink Floyd tour that they played at the Silverdome. I remember going to that show and thinking, okay, this is really cool. It's visual. Silverdome didn't have great sound, but whatever. Um, but the Pink Floyd version 30 years ago was different from the Pink Floyd version of all the popular stuff that they had in the 70s because the two main guys split up. Mm-hmm. So over time, they've had different, you know, groups kind of come out there. There's David Floyd's Pink, uh, David Gilmore's Pink Floyd, the guitar player, and Roger Waters, who was the bass player and, and the songwriter. He came out. We did solo tours. So my brother and I would we we alternated a couple times buying each other tickets to see that, and it was great. So I saw this on PBS a while back, uh, a couple years ago actually, for the first time. And it's Brit Floyd. Brit Floyd is a uh, tribute band for Pink Floyd, out of as you would guess Britain, mm-hmm. um, and they were great. I, what I saw on TV. So when I saw they were coming to the town, I'm like, well, I'll, let's get tickets. So we got really nice tickets and uh, went out there to check out the show. And for a small venue like the Fox Theater, yeah, great place to see that show. You know, pretty good sound, and the seats we had, like I said, they were great. The visual effects that they had, it was like the tour from thirty years ago, and the band sounded incredible. Like they sat, they were spot on. Really, yeah. And the three different guys that would sing, and they all sounded very similar because David Gilmore's singing style is kind of easily repeatable. It was great. There was a. There were two things that were I found kind of interesting. Well, one wasn't interesting. I got pissed. But one was interesting. It was brought to my attention that 
guys in the pit that were the, the mixing guy, the sound mixing guys that they had one of their computers was on streaming the Red Wings game. <laughs> Hilarious. So because the game was on while the concert's on, you know, I'm periodically checking my phone, just get score updates and I'm seeing it, you know, like, damn, it's one, nothing, three minutes into it. Hey, we tied it up two, two. All right, here we go. And then I saw it was four, two, right, and then it was four, three, and then five, three. And I, I was getting pissed. I, you know, hearing, hearing all these hits in the second show that they had, they, the second act or whatever, you know, and all these great Pink Floyd classic pl- tunes. And I'm, I'm looking at the phone to see the score and I'm getting kind of pissed. But in the meantime, there's a couple of guys sitting next to me and they look to be maybe a little bit, not too much older, but a little bit, maybe five, five years older than I am. Mm-hmm. And maybe a little bit older than that. And the guy said to me beforehand, when he, when he sat in our, in our section there and, and we, were, we had a suite there, uh, he said, Hey, look, if I get too loud singing, you know, go ahead and hit me in the arm. I'm like, hey, don't worry. You know, it's a show. Hey, if you want to sing, go ahead and sing. I sat next to Stoney at the Spruce show. I'm okay, right? <laughs> so I'm like, and we laughed about it and, and made a joke about one of the Pink Floyd songs where they had the backup singers do this kind of acapella singing thing. And I'm like, just don't do it during that song and we're good. Said, yeah, yeah, no problem. And they were fine. No issues. You know, the first, uh, first act comes and goes and they did, didn't do anything. It was fine. They have a little intermission. They come back in the second one. Second song into the second set. And the guys start talking, and they're loud talking next to each other. Now, mind you, next to me is an aisle, and then the other side is an empty seat, and then those two guys sitting together, and they're brothers. And when I say they are loud, they are loud! Wait a sec. Two guys talking so loud they're disrupting a concert? Yes. Yes. So I keep, like, looking over, and they're like... You know, hoping to catch eye contact, like, dude, you know, relax. You giving him the stink eye? I'm trying to give him the stink eye, but they're not paying attention. And they're not even talking about Pink Floyd. They're just having a conversation about whatever in life that's going on. And I'm getting pissed. And my brother says something to me after a while. He's like, well, those guys are kind of loud. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to put an end to this in a second here. Look at you. And and I had enough. And and because it, it was so loud. And I'm like, dude, hey. Dude, and I'm like smacking the seat across the aisle, which is the seat next to him. Eventually, the guy turns around, and goes, looks, and goes, "Oh, I'm just, I'm sorry." I'm just like, "Yeah, it's okay. Just you know, keep it down." Like, I'm really sorry. And it was like it was like a dog that knew it had done something wrong. Just oh, <laughs> <laughs> he felt terrible. Two minutes later, they're back at it. I mean, and I'm like, "How loud do you have to be? You to be- have to be loud." So I, I say, "Hey." And like, oh, sorry, sorry. And he's constantly apologizing. I'm like, you don't have to apologize anymore. Just, Just shut stop up. Stop doing it. You know, but I didn't say shut up. I was pretty nice about it. And thankfully, they weren't jerks about it because it could have been a, 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 a confrontation. Been a, oh. and, and I didn't want Dude, did you have your that. cleats on? <laughs> this is why he wears yeah, cleats this to is, shows. Yeah, I mean. I didn't because I was up in, in, in the suite seating area of the Fox Theater. If I were on the floor seats, of course. But you might have gotten a scuffle and cleats would have come in handy. Yeah, they could have. I was looking for coconuts. Um, <laughs> oh, the suites would have coconuts. Yeah, sure. well, I mean, yeah. coconut and pineapple. That's why you enough. get a suite. Exactly. <laughs> Duh. Yeah. Sir, can I get you another drink? Yeah, just a whole pineapple. Um, but yeah, so. They again did the whole thing. I'm so sorry thing. And then one guy gets up and goes to the bathroom and he apologized for a few. I'm like, it's okay. Just enjoy the show, you know? And and then they were fine. Uh how old were these guys? They were probably, I would guess, late fifties, early sixties. Okay. You know, they were they were huge fans of, of Floyd. So I get it. And, and, but, but they were busy they talking, but they about, talking about, about it. That's about what was their four oh one Ks out loud. Yeah, something like that. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> But as I'm walking out with my brother, I said, and my brother was like, those guys are really loud. I'm like, I know, I know. And then I said, thankfully, they were cool about it because I didn't want it to go south. And it did not go south. They were very apologetic. But what nonetheless, it? It, it was starting to ruin, I mean, in some really good timeless Pink Floyd songs. You know, I'm hearing the song Money by Pink Floyd. And I'm like, shut up. You know, I didn't say shut up. I said, excuse me. Can you please, you know, get it down? Wow. But the show itself was fantastic. Well, I'm glad there was no incident. No incident. Yep. No. It was a looked to be a pretty pretty well sold out show. Um with the exception of a couple of suites, but the floor seats were all taken up and they were fantastic. I'd I'd see it again. All right. Well, there you go. Uh two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Aren't you doing another 
Yes, tonight I'm going to another trivia. Yeah, I don't go to that many shows, Dude, Don, he said, Don. I don't go to. I yeah. said, you go to a lot of shows. Well, it's what? Been, they kind of yeah. come in bunches. That's mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's funny. All right, because I went to Tesla a few weeks ago, and now I'm going to go to the. There's another. I'm going to a show in uh, in Windsor. <laughs> At, uh, International. Quite frankly, going, yeah, quite frankly I don't know anybody who goes to more yeah. concerts. Than <laughs> Doug, I don't go to that many. I'm going to three this week. <laughs> I've been to five in like the last, it'll be five in like six months. Uh, I've been f- to five in six years. Right. But uh, yeah, so tonight at Windsor at the at the casino, uh, in the, the auditorium there, there, there's a Journey tribute band that's playing, but my friend's. He's Jody, in a tribute band phase, people. Well, yeah. my friend Jody Rafu. He comes to run on tribute bands. Yeah. Jody's band is opening up for him, so uh, he asked if I wanted to go. I'm like, absolutely. So I got a couple tickets, and we're going to go see the show tonight. And I like Journey. I'm, I got no problems with Journey. And it should be a, another packed house. And uh, apparently this is a really good Journey tribute band. We'll see. You got a lot to measure up to after what I saw last night. All right. Uh, memorabilia item that's out there. And it just so happens we have a collector on the show. Oh. The host of Kang Collects, the podcast. I want to get your take on this one of one item. You mean the coach of the watermelon sharks? Yep. That is not official. <laughs> not official. The soon to be named coach of the watermelon sharks. Uh, we will get to that today at 1232 here on Carson Anderson, 971. We got spring, the red, white, and blue trucks. They are on their way to help you out. If you got a flooded basement or maybe your your house is just gonna be scorching hot because you haven't done anything with the air conditioning, get it all checked out. Call the great folks at Birmingham Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. And Frank, he's the owner. He's got a great deal right now. This spring, they're giving all customers a free tankless water heater included with the purchase of a full furnace and air conditioning package. It doesn't matter if you got a flood in your basement or a clogged drain or your AC unit won't turn on. you got a problem with the thermostat. Call Birmingham Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling today. They'll check, they'll check things out and fix it all for you. Schedule an appointment online at BirminghamPlumbingCO.com. Birmingham Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, your Metro Detroit boiler experts.
Doug Carr, Scott Anderson, 97 won a ticket. Open lines, 248-539-9797. Uh, sorry, 96, what was the number? <laughs> I apologize. 96 what? <laughs> 9651. Thank you. All right. You're going to have to run it in. Let's get it yeah. together. All right. Yeah. I found out late in the break, man. I don't know what you what I need. I gotta I gotta print up a live read, so the people at CGC Water will be happy. Okay, uh, I mentioned this before the break, and Kang, you are the host of Kang Collects, the podcast. That's right. Wherever you get your podcast, what uh, what do you have on uh, this, this, this week's week? episode? Is I, I I talk to a dealer at uh, who sets up every weekend at card shows, and so get his perspective from his side of the table. What he deals with when customers come up and try to buy cards off his from a showcase. Okay, gotcha. And uh, what's your what's your your motto? Uh, if you can collect it, I'll talk about it. Okay, that's right. So Tops has tweeted. out. Do you see what Tops is doing? I think so. They do a lot of stuff. Right. But I okay. Think. Well, <laughs> what they 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 print cards. <laughs> so the other night we talked yesterday about Jackson Holiday, um, how the number one prospect in baseball debuted. For the Orioles, I ended up watching the uh, probably eight, eight of the nine innings of that game between the Orioles and the Red Sox. Uh, Orioles were down 5 nothing. came back. Jackson Holiday did have an RBI. Probably had a pop-up. They wish he played differently. It wasn't an easy play. But playing second base, Matt Holiday's kid. And by the way, dad was sitting directly next to the dugout at Fenway. Dad, brother, family members right there. So when he was in the on-deck circle, <laughs> like dad's. The, the family's right there, which I was wondering. I was wondering if it was uncomfortable or awesome. I don't know. I don't know how you'd how you'd feel about Depends it. on your relationship. I guess. Yeah. But at one point, he was walking back to the dugout, and you could see his whole family just watching him walk back. But anyway, they showed this during the broadcast. On his jersey, he had a little, a tiny patch on the right shoulder that said, "I think it said MLB debut." They had a debut patch on the jersey. And Tops has taken that patch off the game used jersey and will put it into a signed one of one rookie card. Now, clearly, the actual value of said card depends on what kind of career this guy has. But while that is undefined in the here and the now, I was going to say it's expensive now. Wow. I, 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 Kang, I wonder, I wonder what an item like this you think might go for. All right, so this is something new that Tops is doing this year. They told everyone they were going to do it. They told everyone they were going to put this patch on, and as soon as that player makes his their debut, they're going to get that patch right off and put it into a card, which is a one of one. Did they do it with Colt Keith? I was just going to say, did they I do it with remember. all the rookies? Uh, they're supposed to. Colt Keith isn't a uh, he has card. He doesn't have a card yet because he. His his rookie year is going to be the, like the update issue when they re release another set this year. Okay. So the only two rookies out for the Tigers this year are I think Reese Olsen and Brendan White are the two. Cards are the way it works is kind of unexplainable sometimes. Okay. But either way, uh, Cole Keith will probably have one. I mean, they're go- they're supposed to do it for every MLB debut. I'm sure he does. Jackson Holiday is huge because he's obviously the number one prospect and his cards are already insanely overpriced because he hasn't done anything right. It's just all on potential. That card, whatever, you know, whoever pulls that card, that's a monster, monster card. Yeah. I mean, even the worst players with MLB debut patches are going for like around a thousand dollars. I'm talking like not, you know, not anyone with that the Jackson Holiday type hype. His card is gonna go for who knows, but definitely, you know, in the thousands. It's funny because they obviously tops clearly has paid for rights to this because Major League Baseball is letting them take this patch. Yeah, well, they're the uh, tops is fanatics, so they're they were doing oh, the uniforms. They? Okay, yeah, so yeah, they so. did the uniform, so they're the ones to blame. Oh boy. Well, for no, Riley no, Green's blowout. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Tops is separate from Fanatics. Fanatics is doing Panini and all the other stuff. All but right. I mean, um, they're 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 obviously in an agreement. This yeah. is a hand, you know. I bet there's money involved. For Tops to be able to get this patch and put it in a oh sure yeah, yeah. rookie I mean, card, yeah, what are the chances you get that patch? So and everybody's what, gonna be buying it up. So. What I was wondering, and I didn't see this, and I just had the game on in the background, but I saw them doing like this little story of and, and zooming in on the patch. Would he wear nine different jerseys? 
Or would you just wear one jersey the whole game so that they could have an authenticated, um, I mean, whatever the price is, they could multiply it. Although I guess if there's nine of them, it's not a one of one, but it doesn't sound like they did that. No, I mean, he. I think this this is just the one. That's why it's worth so much. And, and if you see the video, they usually just pull off the MLB debut. Yeah, it looks like it was a sticker. Yeah, yeah, and he can, like, uh, he can maybe, I don't know if they let him keep the jersey or they're going to cut that up too. But I was correct the first time. Fanatics and Tops are hand-in-hand. Hand. They're the same. Fanatics owns Tops. They bought them out. Okay, so that's how they have the rights, yeah. the rights to do this. So I don't have an issue with this. I think it sounds really cool. Um, but I think, you know, with anything – if people can can find it to be you know, desecration of the jersey or something like that, but well, yeah, I don't it doesn't even. I, I'm looking at it from a collector standpoint, and for somebody who used to collect cards, I never got into the the whole swatch thing, or the the cloth swatch, and, and part of that just it just didn't ring my bell, so to speak. I like the cards. I like the cards when the rookie cards. That that to me is cool. But to add the swatch to it doesn't add anything for me. But I get why it does because it is unique and the whole thing about why a card is valuable is because it's rare you know and the, the the fewer they have obviously the rarer it is and the more valuable it's going to be yeah and the good the cool thing about this is and I mean, you're not into the the game you know the patches and jerseys and whatnot on cards but other people are yeah, yeah. the cool thing about this one is it's player worn like nowadays a lot of new cards guys they go to Dick's Sporting Goods or wherever, grab a jersey off the rack, cut it up, and put it on a card. And they, on the back, will literally say, this is not associated with the player. Oh, and, and that sucks. As, yeah, as why, a fan, why bother? As a fan or a collector, you feel a lot cooler if, like, wow, Jackson Holiday wore this. He touched this. Whatever, you know? That is really strange. That is strange. Yeah. So. Huh. But so that's why I like the fact that this is actually from his debut. It's pretty pretty dang cool, if you ask me. Um, But they're worth a ton of money. So when does the second set come out so I can get the Colt Keith cards? <laughs> right. I'll I let you know, man. Well, when when uh, who was Upper Deck? When Upper Deck started with the hockey cards, uh, you know, the Red Wings, Sergey Fedorov and Nicholas Lidstrom, uh, their first years in the league, they, they came out in like second series, you know. So that was kind of waiting for that second series to come out so you can get the Fedorov card because Fedorov's playing while you bought the first series of cards. Like, where, where's the Fedorov card? Oh, you have to wait. Oh, here he goes. Awesome. Well. If you get that Jackson Holiday one of one, sell it. That's my advice <laughs> to you. <laughs> no, not that. I ain't got that money. Unless you're selling for cheap. I mean. Well, see, the thing is, if they're selling it, if you just do decide to sell it, and he goes on to be a Hall of Fame player. Yeah, but nowadays but, but, Doug, but, the prices are so crazy. It's like it's built in that he's going to be a Hall of Fame player. That's all. That's all crazy. Like how much? Yeah. Going. How much higher is going to be? Yeah, it's not. And what are the odds he's going to be? You know, Hall of Fame player. Yeah. Not great. The odds are not in your favor. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he hasn't started off so great either. Well. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, speaking of baseball, Tigers back in action, scheduled to go tonight. Doubleheader tomorrow. We will get to that coming up shortly. 248 539 9797. It's Carson Anderson. Uh, just a reminder you can stream the show on the Odyssey app. Download it for your mobile device today. A U D A C Y. You can also stream through our website, 971 and stream with video using YouTube or Twitch. Go to one of those sites, youtube.com, twitch.tv, search up 971 the ticket, and bam, there you are. You can see us and participate in the streaming chat. It's Carson Anderson, 971. Trust me, having a new Connecticut water softener installed by CGC Water has so many benefits. For my family, call 855 339 4242 or visit cgcwater.com and save a thousand bucks or more when you bundle a Connecticut Premier softener and a Connecticut K5 drinking water system. If you're not filtering your water, you are the filter. Don't be the filter. And don't forget, April showers can bring flooded basements. Let CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing take care of all your plumbing needs. CGC Water, your authorized independent Connecticut dealer.
Get to some Red Wing stuff today at 102. Another disappointing result. But this team... <laughs> you know what? I was about to say, and I said all they won't die. And it's not really that. It's nobody's killing them. <laughs> that's what <laughs> it really comes down to. <laughs> oh, they just keep staying alive. Well, that's because... Nobody is taking advantage. Like the all of these teams are kind of spinning their wheels. Washington takes care of Detroit. Oh, we'll get to it again today at 102. I promise some Detroit Tigers talk. Makeup game from yesterday, doubleheader tomorrow. They haven't officially announced it, but it's going to be Matt Manning pitching one of those two games. Uh your so, confidence. Well, I mean, who else would it be? I don't know. I just love that you're confident about it. You know, it's Matt. It's going to be Matt Manning. You called your shot last week. You got it. Love it. And now you're you know, getting chesty about it. Yeah, I don't know if this is particularly chesty or it's reading the obvious tea leaves when Matt Manning gets scratched from his start on Thursday because they saw that this was coming. And Just accept the credit I'm giving you. You're right. It's a brilliant observation you're turning by in, me. You're turning now, into you're a man before our very eyes. That's right. Um, so Tarek Skubal goes tonight, and uh, Gator feels like a good chance for him to – Bounce back after a, um, 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 what do we want to call that start against Oakland? Well, it was not his best, mm-hmm. but team was good enough to pick him up and win the game. Um, but his first outing was very good. Yep. So we know what he can do. Yep. I just, you know, it's, it's he's had a full week off here. It's an extra couple of days that he's more than he's used to. It's sort of at the point here when we talk about what needs to happen for this team to be successful. They have to win most Scooble starts. Whether he gets the win yep. or not, it's just if the path to success for this group includes winning most Scooble starts. If they can get that, then, you know, whatever ceiling this group has is in play. You know, we talked about it yesterday. Chris McCoskey tweeted that stuff from Fielding Bible. The Tigers led the majors in defensive runs saved. I read the entire booklet trying to figure out exactly how that's determined. And uh, actually that's not true. I read some of the booklet um, and got some of the, the model and how it works, but suffice it to say that's another path to this team reaching a ceiling. When most of the school bowl starts play well above average defense. I don't think we're going to see this group tear the cover off the ball most of this season, but a, but part of the path includes Torque and Green getting back to the best that they can be at the plate. Neither of them have been particularly good, although Riley Green has gotten on base at a prodigious rate with a, a, a on-base percentage 135 points higher than his batting average. His batting average needs to yeah. correct. So both guys are hitting like 200, so yep. that's a, it's an issue there. But, yeah, the, the, most of the lineup, I mean, seven, eight guys have got to, to start hitting. You know, so who's who's going to do it first? Who's going to be the first guy to to step up and you know have a weekend where they collect six or seven hits and a couple of home runs? We need to see it from from a lot of people, You're not just Torque and Green, but you know, want to see a Colt Keith get off and his his first home run in the major leagues. You know, I, I like what I've seen from him, but I want to see see more. I want to see Kerry Carpenter uh, hit the ball over the fence and then have base hits. Cause he was hitting for average before I want to see Jake Rogers launch one out of the park. And I don't expect Jake Rogers to hit two fifty, but I expect Jake Rogers to be a problem every once in a yeah, while. The catcher for the position, if you're playing, if you're a good defensive catcher and you provide anything, any skill set offensively from home run power to stolen bases, although not a lot of catchers do that, but you get the point, anything you provide offensively, you can deal with like as a, as a team in an organization that's trying to compete. Um, yeah. Carpenter. There are guys that I'm, I'm, I don't know what to expect out of Parker Meadows. Like you mentioned, who's going to break out of this. It, Parker Meadows. It was, yeah, he's going to play elite defense, but can he hit? And so far the answer is no. Um, Not this year. He hit for a little stretch last year. It looked really good. Very promising. And then cooled down. And then this year he just, he got off to a great start with a triple, and it hasn't done much since then. But he does play fantastic defense. He is a solution late in games. You need somebody in scoring position, uh, you know, to, to come home on a base hit. You can pinch run him, and he gets the job done. 
I, I like that aspect from him. But to stay at this level, you got to hit. Yep, you got to hit a little. I mean, you know the this is he's got what two hits and hold on, I'll look it up. But you mentioned about sorry, two need, hits and twenty five at bats. You need to win the starts of Tarek Skubal, no, without question. In fact, I think that's a given that that happens. Yeah, Tarek Skubal is going to give them the chance to win more than half his starts. And they, they they have to win that. That, to me, that's, yep, got it. It's the rest of the rotation that that's where things start to step up. You know, what are we going to, what are we getting out of Kenta Maeda? What are we getting out of, the, the, you know, Jack Flaherty, the two free agent starters that they threw in this rotation that, frankly, are preventing Matt Manning from playing, too, because they signed these guys. Yep. Yeah, which is a weird deal. I, I mean, Look, if it's not going to be injury, it comes down to performance. Let's say Matt Manning shows up tomorrow and is dealing once again. It was a six hits, no hit baseball against the Mets. It's yeah. some control, but it's six hits, no in, no hit baseball against five and two thirds or something. Like that. Yeah, against the Mets, Flaherty and Maeda each got fourteen million dollar deals, and you don't. <laughs> You, you certainly a couple of starts isn't enough to decide, but hey, guys, there's somebody ready to take your place. Yeah, and you know if Manny pitches well again, it's not going to be one of those guys that get that gets bumped off. It's going to be Reese Olson or, or Casey Mize because those are guys that they can move around. Yeah, I, but I mean, how many starts do you? Uh, it's too early to even well, really right. talk and about I, this. Well, I, but uh, it's out there, right? Because yeah. We didn't have a whole lot of confidence in the free agent signings that they made. No. Right? We're hopeful that it's good, but the confidence level isn't all that high. Reese Olsen, I think mean, Reese Olsen, based on his, his track record of, of the minor leagues, is nothing to, to bank on. What he did last year, the last six starts of the season, that's what gives you hope. Casey Mize was the first pick overall in a draft, and he just he hasn't been healthy enough to, to, to throw a full season out there where you're like, oh, that's the guy. I mean, he's got two starts, and his second start was much better than his first start. So that there's still hope there. But Matt Manning, you know, is another guy that looks like he had gotten better each year he'd been with the Tigers and doesn't make the club out of spring training, but goes down, pitches a, a nice outing at Toledo, and then comes back up with the Tigers and pitches well with the Tigers. Yeah, it's it's it, it's up to Matt Manning, and I, I think he's taking the right attitude. It's about forcing the issue. In the meantime, they did call up Wenzel Perez, and we've seen him minimally. He's got the two plate appearances. Uh, one of them was a strikeout on three pitches against Aroldis Chapman. But Wenzel Perez, a 24-year-old middle infielder, uh, Gator, you like his skill set quite a bit. Yeah, he's uh, he's a guy who you know projects at a number of different positions. Um, in, in, on the field, he can play in the outfield. He can play in the infield. Um, he's a guy that has... Uh, you know, with that versatility, you like the versatility, but he also shows that he can hit. Uh, he's shown that he can hit in the minor leagues. 273 average isn't outstanding, but it's not bad. All right. And he got a little pop in the bat as well, and he can run. Mm -hmm. So he's one of these guys that can kind of do it all, and, and he's getting an opportunity because of injuries. And it looks like he'll continue to have an opportunity for a little bit here. I want to see more of him just to, just to get a look. Do you know much about him defensively? Not a ton, not a ton. But I thought I had read before that there was a, there was real promise with him. But it, I mean, he's played around. He's been an infielder. He's been an outfielder. Feels like they like him better in the outfield than they do in the infield. I mean, not, uh, everybody in Detroit, it feels like, is wondering can he play shortstop. But um, they're probably sticking with Bias for a while now. Uh, Tigers, Twins. Look, the Twins are most people's account the team to beat in this division. They didn't get off to the hottest of starts at just four and six. It'd be nice to create a little cushion, maybe win this series against Minnesota and um, long, long season. So get the the you know, the games in the division are really, really important. Uh, take care of business against the Twins, and then Texas comes in, and of course they are great. So there you go, Tiger baseball coming up. You'll hear it tonight and tomorrow. The doubleheader here on ninety-seven won the ticket. All right, we've been getting some feedback, Gator, regarding the Detroit Lions modernizing their uniforms. If you sent a text or a tweet, we will get to that today at 102. And some Red Wing talk at 105. Last night's disappointment, and yet somehow, some way, 
this team. Nobody will kill them yet. There's the re- difference between refuse to die and nobody kill you. And so far, nobody has killed them. And here they are just to point out after taking just one of a possible four points against teams they're battling with for the final playoff spot in the East. 248-539-9797. It's Carson Anderson here on 97 won the ticket. Okay, so 
We're reading that story in the noon hour about how the new Lions uniform gets revealed next Thursday. Next Thursday, and it's it's there's been reports out there that it's inspired by the Ford Bronco, and there's also the the term modernizing the uniform. We've asked people what that means. We've kind of kicked around some ideas of what modernizing a uniform means, including the the black mat, the flat mat look. They're going with something there. You looked at that Bronco, the color. Yeah, it was called like azure gray, something tint. Yeah, it, it, it looks great. Um, could that have something to do with it? Here's the feedback that we have gotten on modernizing the uniforms. Mike says modernizing the uniform should mean getting rid of the Honolulu blue. So if they were going to go with that gray, maybe that would, I wouldn't, I don't know if it means getting rid of the, the Honolulu blue. Should the lions be married to Honolulu blue? Should they always have a base color of Honolulu blue and silver? Yeah, I, I think I think for the the main jersey, yeah. But I mean, isn't this this is an alternative jersey? No, this is the main jersey. This is going to be the main jersey. Yeah. I mean, it's what uh, isn't it what Mister Ford wanted? He loves the uh, the old Honolulu blue. Yeah, but I mean, they're modernizing it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I honestly. I mean, you think don't... about teams in the modern day era that have completely changed their colors. Yeah, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers completely, totally different yep, completely changed their colors. Um, Went from cream is gold to uh, pewter. I mean, and that is that was a stark change. I don't know if anybody else has done that. Like you've seen well, slight variations, a different color, a shade of this, a different shade of that. But Bengals changed their helmets, and it was a big change. Same colors, change yes. for the better. It was a, a, the, the newer helmet is so much better than what it was when it just said Bengals on the side. Well, they had the 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 stripes and the 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 That's stripes saying, on yeah. yeah the stripes on the uniform and all that. They've gotten away from that a little bit, but the the Seahawks have they always kind of had, but then they they, they introduced the darker yeah yeah and they introduced the um, highlighter green mm -hmm. into their uniforms. I mean, I just don't see them going with a ch a change that much like like the like the Buccaneers did. Has anybody else done that? I, I tell you, one of the weirdest uniform things of all time is for some reason in the 70s, it felt like half the teams in Major League Baseball feel compelled to have a light blue jersey. Right. <laughs> Philadelphia did, the Cardinals mm -hmm. did, the Brewers did. Um, Kansas, Cubs, Cubs did. Cubs did. Everybody had, Texas did. Yeah. Atlanta did. Yeah. All these teams just said, okay, screw it. We're going with a light blue version of our jersey, which was really weird. I don't know what that's about, but anyway. Uh, I mean, one color swept the league. I guess Teal did it in the in the nineties. Okay, so more guesses of what modernizing the jersey means. Gary at work says, "I hope they don't modernize like the Tigers." No, well, that wasn't the Tigers. That was a Major League Baseball deal. Well, remember the Tigers actually they changed their old English D on the uniform to match the hat. They made it, it bigger. No, they made it like it wasn't the same as the hat. Right, because the D on the, oh, on the jersey right. is yeah. different than the D on the hat. But now it is the same, right? Yeah, there was the big D era. Well, that that was different. Yeah, that was different. Yep. Yeah, the oversized D. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just too much. Yeah, people didn't like it too, too much. Big. Yeah, it's very uncomfortable. Derek in Washington Township says, "I think when Rod said the uniforms would be inspired by the Bronco, it means the tops will be removable." Oh, <laughs> I'm imagining better handling and more comfort. <laughs> Ready for off road? Uh, Bader says Bronco inspiration probably means old school characteristics with a new style. Would be my guess. Uh, from an unnamed texter, look at the 2024 blue Bronco color. It has a lot, and it has a lot of black on it. Yeah, it's a it's a darker blue, and there is a lot of black on the uh, on, with the the accents and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, something to keep an eye on. If you have any ideas of what modernizing the Lions uniform actually means, feel free to uh, send us over your your thoughts at 2485-399797 via ticket text or call 2485-399797. Means they're going electric. <laughs> Plug-in uniforms. <laughs> uh, all right, so we said we get to some Wings stuff. We opened the show with Wings talk. Look, last night... 
the Wings didn't control the play the way they did in the Washington game. The Wings weren't quite as solid defensively, one might say. Pretty safely say that. In a 6-5 overtime loss to Pittsburgh, the damage, well, was done by Pittsburgh and benefited Pittsburgh, but when Buffalo beat Washington... 4-2, Four to two. Thank you very much, Sabers. That helped. It not hurt as much as it could, because Washington could have moved three points out in front of Detroit. Um, but they they lost that game. Detroit got a point out of it, so they're now in a virtual tie with the Capitals. The problem is, in the regulation wins category, Detroit as one of the tiebreakers. Detroit trails everybody, so they kind of have to win this thing outright. But Philly beat the Rangers to to say, hey, don't forget about us. We're not dead, although they have everybody has a game in hand on them. Detroit, three games left at Toronto, Montreal, and at Montreal in a very weird finish to the schedule where the Red Wings will play Montreal at LCA uh, in the final regular season game on Monday night and then go Tuesday to Montreal. Now, I guess both teams have to do it. So but they have to go to Toronto, yep. then come home, Against Montreal, and then go back to Montreal. It, that That's the strange part. So you're already in Canada. Yep. I'm already subscribed. <laughs> uh, but Pittsburgh plays three playoff teams, Boston, Nashville, and at the New York Islanders. Now the question is, will the Islanders have anything to play for in that final game of the regular season? Well, they're three points up. Is it three points up right now, or is it on, on Pittsburgh? They are three points up. On Pittsburgh, yes. Okay, for the third spot in the division. So for that to matter, it's like Pittsburgh has to keep winning. But we need for for the Ranger for the Islanders, excuse me, to want to keep them at bay. Pittsburgh has to keep winning. But we don't need Pittsburgh to keep winning. No. We need Pittsburgh to lose. We need Pittsburgh to lose because one of those teams is going to end up as the third in the division, so they get in. You want to put distance between you and whoever that team is from the division that's fighting for the 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 uh, the wild card spot. Say that again. You want to, if you being the Red Wings, yeah, Red Wings want to put distance between. Yeah, they them. Want, they, you want Pitts, it's another way. Yes, Pittsburgh. We want Pittsburgh to lose. Yes, I'll concede. Let let the Islanders have it. Okay, right? if let they, the Islanders win their next game. I hope they win t- tomorrow. Win it because that kind of puts things out of reach. Oh, here's what it means though. It means Detroit better leapfrog Pittsburgh in these 100%. final in these final two they in the next two games because. If it doesn't mean anything to the Islanders and it means everything to Pittsburgh, we might be in trouble. So, math is not my strong suit, as you know. Try to follow me with it or hold my hand on this. Let me see if we got this. Okay. If the Islanders win tomorrow, okay, that puts them, and the Islanders win and Pittsburgh loses. So, the Islanders would have a five point lead over Pittsburgh. Yep. Okay. If Washington loses, they would have a six point lead over Washington, right? If Philadelphia, Philadelphia, I really don't care too much about. I guess it'd be the same type. If of thing. the Islanders win, Philly can't catch them. Yeah. So if the Islanders win, basically they're in, they, they've got the third spot locked. If the other teams lose, if the other teams lose, they do. So yes. and tomorrow is the day where everybody's playing the tougher opponent. So Pittsburgh plays Boston, Detroit's at Toronto, Washington plays Tampa, Philly plays New Jersey. So let's see, you know, the tougher teams prevail, except for Toronto. See, the Wings beat Toronto would be fantastic because then the Wings jump into that spot. You would have the Islanders already there and untouchable. And then you've you just got to do what you got to do. Yeah, the Islanders can't catch anybody and nobody can catch them. They're locked in as the three seed out of the Metropolitan and they'll play the Hurricanes in the first round of the playoffs. Once that's locked up, the Islanders have nothing to play for. And they're trying to do that as quickly as possible. And once they have nothing to play for... That really starts to heavily favor Pittsburgh in that season finale. Yeah. And so Detroit better jump Pittsburgh in the next two games. They better jump Pittsburgh in the next two games or we're in real trouble. You don't want it to come down to needing Pittsburgh to lose to an Islander team that's, quite frankly, probably resting some players. So, But our question for Red Wings fans is, <laughs> are you enjoying this? Because by definition, we should be enjoying this. But I think there's two categories that are probably prevailing as far as our emotions. One is, 
I think some people are emotionally spent and feel beat up. These felt like two must-win games. Turns out nobody has seized this final wild card spot, so technically they weren't must-win games. And figuratively, they weren't must-win games. Literally and figuratively. Well, I mean, I suppose if Pittsburgh wins out, they then it literally was a must-win game. But I, I don't know that that's happening. That doesn't seem like it's far from a sure thing that Pittsburgh wins out. Correct. So we sh- I think we should be enjoying our first meaningful hockey in so long. Well, And yet I don't sense I, – I mean, the feedback we get, I don't sense it's being enjoyed even – Remotely. Exactly. Right. It's because people, you know, move the goalposts as the season goes on with the expectations of the team. Even though before the season you didn't think they were a playoff team, as the season goes on, you bought into it. They had the eight point lead. It felt pretty safe. And then they went in the tank and people bought into it. They're like, well, they were the team. So now I expect them to be a playoff team. Here's where I say we can all enjoy it at least for one more day and really get after it. They're playing Toronto yep. tomorrow. All the history we've got with the Toronto Maple Leafs. I feel like this. we should be making more of this game than we have. We, we've hardly really mentioned it. Oh, by the way, it's Toronto tomorrow. This is this is the rival. Forever it was the rival when they played in the Norris. Obviously, two original six teams. But for our purposes and growing up watching hockey, it was the Norris watching the Wings in Toronto and those battles that they had. You, you know, know the, the, the the playoff games that they had, that damn Nikolai Borshevsky goal that they got in overtime that eliminated the wing. But you know what? Toronto, it doesn't mean anything to them. Like, so I agree. It's a big game. It's a rival. The wings kind of have to have it, but Toronto doesn't. So maybe we get the Toronto mail-in effort. Well, th- then let's, how about we do load management with Austin Matthews, Right. That's not going to happen. He's at 68 goals. You think he wants to get to 70? I don't care. Rare, well, I'm just saying. That's, that's, <laughs> I know I know you don't, but that's... I, that's I'll make out the Maple Leafs line for him. Uh, you yeah. know, I'll, I'll do yeah. that for him. Leave yeah. him out, and, yeah. I'm, and then we're great. You know, But he's likely to play, and if he plays, he's likely to do damage because that's what he does. He's, in, he's incredible. 248-539-9797. Hey, we counter with Lucas F. and Raymond. LFR was on fire last night, which Four was points. great. We'll get to your phone calls and feedback. It's Carson Anderson, 97 won the ticket. Spring is here, and so are the Silverados and Equinoxes. At your number one volume Chevy dealer in Michigan, Sarah Chevrolet Sterling Heights. And that means Sarah Chevrolet Sterling Heights has a huge inventory of Silverados and Equinoxes that are ready for you to test drive and take home today. Plus, it's truck season, so now's the time to get that Silverado you've been dreaming of. Sarah Chevrolet Sterling Heights, where they guarantee the lowest price or it's free, 17 and a half. And Van Dyke and Sterling Heights, call 87-SAY-SARAH or go to saysarah.com. Together, let's drive.
We'll get back to your phone calls momentarily here on 97 One to Ticket. And don't forget, it's open lines. We've talked about all the major food groups today. Lions, Tigers, Pistons, and Red Wings. And cheese. Well, we haven't talked about cheese. No, we, we haven't. Do, make do, some room for that. Yeah. We can do that if you so choose. Uh, Kenny Cott answers our phones and lives and dies with the Red Wings. I asked the question to you, Kenny, that we've been asking the audience. Are you enjoying this? Since the losing streak, Doug, I've been beat down. Yeah. I sit I, every night when I there's a Wings game and I get home, I sit down and go, well, here we go. Let's see what happens. Yeah. I'm I'm actively angry before the game even begins. I no, it's I'm not, not a, having it's a good not time. It's not a healthy place. It's, it's not. No. And at the beginning of the season, it's funny because you look at the Lalone comments. At the beginning of the season, if you would have said, Hey, you're pushing for a playoff spot, you're gonna have fun this year. This is not the fun that I signed up for, guys. It, it it's it's different than advertised. It yes. feels different than advertised. And yet, I mean, if they win that game and Pittsburgh loses tomorrow. You can talk your, but that's we've been talking our way into these wins and other teams' losses. But you were, I, you were miserable on Tuesday before the game even started. I've been miserable since the losing streak. <laughs> I have not been happy it's, in weeks. It's cantankerous, Kenny Cott. That's correct, and it sucks because I love this team and I love hockey. And but here's the tear crazy, me apart. Here's the crazy thing. Let's say they win the final three and make the playoffs. I feel like all will be forgiven. I will be exasperated but happy. I'll be like, oh, of course. All yep. right, now we get playoffs. Yep. Now we're going to lose to the Rangers in five games. No, what? I see. I, I wouldn't do it. That's what, what am I doing right now? The, what else am I supposed to? What What has this team given you right now that makes you think otherwise? That winning streak that through, what was it, January into February. I raise you a losing streak of seven games. Yeah, I mean, I hear you, yeah, but, that, but it, it, it says they're capable it's, you're and, right. You can look at it. This is very glass half empty, half full. They're capable of an eight game, you know, eight out of nine, and then they're also capable of a seven game bender. So, who are? What is this team? It depends what week they're playing, I guess. They're, 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 so, what would you do if you're Derek Lalone in terms of who starts in net tomorrow night? Because Lion has not been great, and I, there's evidence that the team might play better defensively in front of of uh, of Reimer. So. What do you do, Kenny Cott? Is he going to be ducking the puck like he did in Sweden? What do you do, Kenny Cott? <laughs> I'm starting Alex Lyon. He's the only one that's shown at least semi-semblance of consistency in net. Reimer, I feel like we've seen more bad than good on a regular basis. But he did. He was in net when they won. He's just Toronto. fine. He's just fine. He's just fine. But I'm just wondering, is his workload too much right now for Lyon? It or, is or too do much for Lyon. Screw it. We're gonna. This is your. You're the guy. You got to tough it out for the last three games. That's where I'm at. You got to tough it out. I, I just don't trust Reimer enough. I like the way that Lyons played in a large sample size. Yeah, he, you can see games like last night where he allows a couple of goals that maybe shouldn't have gotten past him, but. We've also seen what he looks like when he's electric, and when he's electric, yeah. he's the difference maker. He's he's the guy on your team. Kenny, hang in there, buddy. Let me ask you this. What, what was your reaction when Raymond scored the goal to tie it? When they were, they were down 5-3, they came back and tied it at 5. I believe I sent a tweet out saying uh, apologizing publicly to my neighbors in my apartment building. That okay. that, it, that sums up my re- – I was very loud. I get excited. I'm high when the team's high, but when they're low, man. Whoa. Yeah, that's right. It's good. I it's, said it's it. legal now, Gator. It okay, is. all right, yeah. fair enough. Just, that's right. We're in boy. Michigan. Yep. All right, Kenny. Thanks. Thank you. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Back to your open line calls. Justin's in Madison Heights, and he's on ninety seven one. Hi, Justin. No, guys. Hey. I'm not enjoying this. Uh-oh. I'm not enjoying <laughs> it at all. Okay. I. You know what I would be enjoying? Still nine points ahead of the cut line yep. with a seat at the table, and not sweating bullets every game. Uh, I was talking with Kenny before, and then you guys just had him on. He nailed it. Like, it's so stressful. It's exhausting. I Don't get me wrong. Like, I love that I'm watching games that matter versus watching a game that doesn't matter. That's exciting. Now, I disagree with Kenny. I was saying to Kenny, why aren't we trying Reimer? Lion, I, I agree with what Kenny said. When Lion's electric, he looks great. But he did not look great last night. And I, I'd be interested to – you know, throw Reimer in there. And one more thing, I totally empathize with Kenny apologizing to his neighbors. My son went to bed at the end of the second period, and I don't know, five minutes into the third period, he comes out and he's like, Dad, I can't sleep. You're being too loud. I was like, okay, buddy, I'm sorry. You know, I put him back to bed, turned the volume down on the TV, calm down. But what do you guys think about Reimer, even though you just talked about it? And 
I guess he got called out by a being... kid for being too loud. I love it. Absolutely love That's it. That's awesome. Yeah. But I, I would still go with Alex Lyon. And it just All right. um I mean I you're it, it really comes down to trust what most when they were at their best, he was the guy between the pipes and you you gotta try and recapture that. And the only way you can do that is by playing him. So yeah. Well, they got they got Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday. Does does Lion play all three? Unless unless you lose, I guess one of them. Right. I mean, yeah. If he comes out looking rough again against Toronto, I mean, well, I mean, if we lose to Toronto, then it's pretty much over. Like yeah. at that point, it doesn't matter. Well, I feel like you got to have a short leash with whoever's in net on 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 tomorrow night because this team can't afford to get down like three nothing after a period. You need to to stop things quickly and you know change things up if you have to in that because it just spirals out of control. I mean, six he gave him six goals last night. Yep, they're not. Of course, they're not all his fault. It's not like that, but it is still six goals, and he's given up. I think it's fifteen goals in the last five games. That's too high of an average per game, and they need to be better. Now they need to play better defensively in front of them. They need to clear the damn puck when they can. And even Larkin was saying after the game last night, he's like, "Look, you know, we we are the top line. We we deserve some blame, man. There were times we were starting to jump to go offensively before we had cleared the puck, and then it stays around in there. And next thing you know, it's in the net. And that shorthanded goal, that's just it's it's such a backbreaker when you give up shorties. Yep. You know, not only are you not converting on your power play, but you just compounded the problem, made it a hell of a lot worse by giving up a goal when you have the man advantage." 248-539-9797. Carson Anderson, 97 won the ticket. Let's go to Troy. You're next on 97 one. Hi, Troy. How's it going, guys? What's up? Well, I just want to get your guys' opinion on what you think Patrick Kane's gonna do at the end of this year with us being a purgatory team of not quite getting that draft pick, not quite making that playoffs, you know. Does he stay? Does he does he renew with us, or does he look for a team that actually has a chance? It's a great question, and and it's interesting. You've already counted them out on the playoffs. If they if they don't make the playoff, it could impact things. If they do make the playoffs, I think it certainly helps. Yeah, um, Troy, I don't think anybody knows. Yeah, it, here's the one thing about it though. He was available to the whole league, and the and the Red Wings got him. The Red Wings showed the most interest. Not everybody was going to take him. Not everybody was going after him. Yeah, I feel like Detroit kind of gets the right of first refusal here, not in a literal way, but in a figurative way. I mean, Patrick Kane's got to feel pretty good about this team taking. They're the one. We're the ones that that leapt. Well, I, I look at it this yeah. way, Troy. I think Kane picked the Red Wings because of the situation the Red Wings were in. He knew he could step in. He's going to a team where he's going to get ice time. He's going to get the opportunity to show that he can still play, and obviously. He can still play. He is still an elite passer in this league. He's fun to watch. Now, now that he's shown the rest of the league that he's healthy and he can go, It'll be a market. He can go where he wants, as long yeah. as the team has cap space. I don't imagine he's just going to go and, and play for the league minimum because he wants to win another Stanley Cup. He's already got a bunch of Stanley Cups, but he can, you know, roll that into playing. I can play on a good team and still get paid. Is it a two-year deal? Is it a three-year deal? I imagine he can get a two-year deal with just about any team in the league, but what's he willing to take? He's not going to get. It's not going to be like a two-year, sixteen million dollar deal. But will he be able to handle a two-year, six million dollar deal? A two-year, maybe ten million dollars on top? I I don't know. We don't know what he what he wants to do. Love to hear from him and hear him say, "I love it here in Detroit. Can't wait to come. You know, we're going to work on things and want to come back here next year." Um, because he's seems like he likes it here. It does, and I mean, he's got his buddy Debrink that he's playing with. You know, he's from Buffalo. That's not too far away. But you know, now that he's proven himself, does he want to go play home? Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. It's Carson Anderson. Open lines ninety seven won the ticket.
I don't know that this needs to be said, but I'm going to say it anyway. You ready? Okay. Kentucky basketball, if you are in the Izzo needs to go camp, did you see what just happened with Kentucky basketball? Who they just signed as their coach? Yeah. I mean, it was like choice eight. Yeah. Well, I think. Um, Nate Oates said no. Danny Hurley said he's not going anywhere. Scott Drew turned him down. Billy Donovan, Jay Wright. And they get Mark Pope, who played there as coach at BYU. But he's done really well at BYU. I think people f- just figured, you know, I'm guessing that the people that wanted Calipari out figured we're Kentucky. We'll get whoever the F we want. I think there's a, there's part of that, yeah. And I can understand it if you're a Kentucky fan. Yeah, the, there's a difference between planning for an exit and then being, oh, that just happened, you know? And I think that Kentucky was probably startled with Calipari's decision to leave because they're like, wait a minute, we're, the, we, we're Kentucky. We decide when you leave. You don't, you don't tell us that. So they were kind of caught off guard. But the other part, which may be even more realistic, is that – College basketball has changed dramatically. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Thank you. Uh, I mean, seriously, look at look at NIL and transfer portal and being a college coach is so different now than what it was five years ago. Without it's question. It's completely different. And do you want the headache of leaving your program that you've built up and now you're you're coveted by other programs? Do you want to leave that? To go start all over? Or do you want to stay where you're at? Because you know what? I've kind of navigated the waters of NIL and the portal, and I think I got a good handle on it, and my school backs me. I don't need to go anywhere. I can be competitive no matter where I'm at. I can be competitive at Creighton. I can be competitive at Gonzaga. I can go wherever it is, you know, or, you know, resurrecting programs at Iowa State and Baylor. And, How does this and- relate to Kentucky? Well, if you're Kentucky, I'm just saying Kentucky, I think they got kind of caught off guard. So how do you? Well, I I, I mean, I guess I, my point is. If so you're, my, my point is all these other coaches are like, why do I need to go to Kentucky okay, when, I I, when I can stay here and I've built it here and I know what I'm doing? So to me, I, I just I know it might be a very small vocal group, but if you're if you're in a Michigan State needs to get rid of Izzo place, it, you know, just it doesn't if Kentucky didn't get their first, second, third, fourth, fifth or sixth choice. You're right. The dynamic might have, have changed to the point where. Because the other thing about Kentucky is I wonder if people didn't want the job because they think, hey, if they didn't want Cal, do I want to go there? 248-539-9797. I mean, it's like in all, I mean, do you think Sharon Moore is Michigan's number one choice? I think like if, they, yeah. if they knew that they were going to replace, would that be the guy that they'd want? Or would they want to go after, you know, uh, what's his face? He just went to Carolina. I think or went after, to Alabama. I think if. if, if after he did what he did, yeah, I do think it was their number one choice. After he did what he did. Going into this season, I don't think so. But uh, Let's get back to your phone calls. Tom is on 97 on the ticket. Hi, Tom. Hello. Hey, what's hey, up? Tom. You guys hear me? Yep. You guys can hear me? Yes, Tom, we can. Okay. Uh, I wanted to say, uh, as far as goalies are concerned, Detroit needs a goalie. Number one, they need a goalie. And, you know, all these different things about – uh, they call it a net minder. I don't call them that. I call them a goalie. They're not a stop goals. And I don't understand why we, you know, I've been a Red Wings fan a long time. You know, Detroit, grew up and born and raised here. But as far as uh, what is this, I don't know how they do all these things. You know, everyone talks about money. Well, money is important, but in, uh, you know, what's, what's the cap? It can only spend this much. Uh, you know, if I'm an owner of a team, you know, we've seen what happened with the Lions just this past year, two years in a row, and it's been phenomenal. It's been a phenomenal ride. And everybody that I know has loved the Detroit Lions now. I mean, not, not that, you know, people fall off the bandwagon. You know, they, they've, they've, they've lost for so many years. And this team now is a different team. And I've loved them and always watched them. But now it's, it's just so exciting, and ratings are through the roof. And money comes in from all that. And the Red Wings were great, you know, 15, 20 years ago, whatever it was. It's not like that anymore. And you get sick of it. You just get let down after let down after let down. And yesterday was just another one of those days. And I'm texting my son, you know, late at night. And I, I'm giving up. I'm watching him. I couldn't watch him anyway. But 
as he was texting me, it's dad, it's five to five. And I don't know what time that was. And I'm thinking, well, there may be hope. But the bottom line is we're all hoping for that one game. What about the game before? You know, and the game before, you know, the game before anyway. What about the next game? One, I mean, like, you've, if you've a lot there. Do you, are you going to watch the next game? Myself, probably. Okay. And if they win it, will you watch the one after that? I mean, I'm going to watch, but, you know, you get, it just gets, it's well, the crazy, team, the know, team it, is what the team is. They're not they're not talented enough to be automatically thought of as a playoff team. They're a mediocre hockey t- hockey team, and but they're if building they had a better but they're, goalie. They well, would be yeah, all they don't got, right now. Yeah, right yeah. now they the, the situation is what the situation is. But they do have guys in the pipeline that they have high hopes for. Sebastian Cosa, who's playing with Grand Rapids, has had a pretty solid season there. A two four seven goals against average, a nine twelve save percentage. Good numbers for a young goaltender who was a first round pick a couple years ago. They also, you know, spent a draft pick on, on getting Trey Augustine from Michigan State, uh, who just finished his freshman year and had a very successful freshman year. Could I think. be the next guy. Look, it, it, but that's you know a couple what that call is. So it says to me that's somebody who doesn't want to accept what they actually are, and this is what a team that is what they are looks like. Well, maybe he was going to get to this. I don't know, but the trade deadline came and went. Yeah, a lot and, of time. Yeah, he did. And you could have gone and, and gotten a veteran goaltender at the trade deadline if you if there were a couple guys out there that could have been had that they didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that might play something into it. Um, but the Red Wings also thought that they had something going with Ville Husso this year, and he he's been hurt. And you know he's making rehab. He's going to make some rehab starts in uh, in Grand Rapids. Nothing's going to happen with that for the rest of this year. I can't imagine that he's going to come back and all of a sudden push for. Uh, a start if they make the playoffs, but it didn't go as planned this year because Huso was hurt, and then you got Lyon, who's now thrust into starting goaltending job. Sorry, goalie job. I don't want to upset the caller because uh, their job is to stop goals. Who knows? I guess I I, I don't want to ever tell people how they feel or what they like. It's not my place. You feel how you feel. Maybe one of the reasons why I don't get that upset is because I look at the roster, I don't think they're an elite team. I don't think they're a bad team. I think there's a chance that they are an organization that is improving, although don't listen to the coach on that because he doesn't seem convinced. Um, but if you if you think of them in terms of what their roster says they should be, then the losses don't surprise me. I just hope that they can find enough wins here in the last three games to make the playoffs. And I'll be disappointed if they don't. We're all rooting for the same thing. That guy fa- sounded like somebody who didn't want to accept that they are what they are. Well, he wants obviously wants better a better goalie for this team. And if they had a better goalie, would they have won some more games? Maybe. I mean, that's that to me is uh, a June call. You know, we're still they're still trying to make the playoffs and something to address in the off season. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Mike is next. What's up, Mike? Hey, how's it going? Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Awesome. So, Cole from Windsor here, diehard fan, big fan of you guys too. Thank you. Um, I actually wanted to uh, address, like, I have never actually missed a Red Wings game since I've been born, literally. Um, I want to address the management from the coaching staff uh, of this team. I think when you got a nine-point lead heading into March and after January, February, you're the arguably the hottest team in the NHL, maybe aside from the Preds, and the Oilers, how does that fall off happen? I understand that Larkin, he, hey, he is a huge hole in the lineup. He got injured around early March. But you can't tell me that, uh, like, for a good coach, they have to have a backbone and they have to have ability to motivate players. And for Larkin, when he was out, it was definitely a hole in the lineup. But how can they start losing that badly? There's two terrible losses to Arizona. Yep. So you're telling me that Larkin is also not just the captain and the leader of this team, but he's part coach. I, that's how I truthfully feel. And I feel like Lalonde um, struggles with not having a backbone. You know, it's going to be controversial to bring this up, but uh, there is a lot of hate on Mike Babcock. But when he was coaching, if there was bad refing or whatever, calling out players, he had that backbone. To, well, to call you can out. do that and not be Mike Babcock. I, I will say this, Mike, is the the Arizona games feel like the most damning thing in this stretch where they will get referenced a lot. Um, no, Dylan Larkin isn't 
meant to be the coach. Questioning the coach is fair game at this point. Mm-hmm. But you mentioned, you know, the the coach has to motivate and all that. If anybody knows that Derek Lalone is pushing the wrong buttons, it's Steve Eisenman. Like the people down there will know if he's pushing the wrong buttons. And if that's what kept them from reaching their potential was whatever motivation, motivational techni- tactics he was using or lineup combinations he went with. And I, I don't think Steve Eisen would be afraid to make a change. Steve Eisen will make a change if it's necessary, in yeah, my opinion. But that's an off-season conversation, and yep. there's still regular season left to play and make the playoffs. They've got three games to, to do something here. Win the games. you got to win tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. Win tomorrow night. Win it tomorrow is must-win hockey right now. I, I, I wish it is all forgiven if they make the playoffs. This is going to be an amazing question. Like If we're sitting here on Wednesday doing a show – Saying can't wait for Saturday night's game with Boston or um, whomever. If we're doing that on Wednesday, I do want to ask, hey, is everything forgiven? Yeah, I mean, that quote from the other day is really hard to digest. It's it still is. in my system. It is not evacuated from the system, Doug. It's still in there swimming around. <sighs> and uh, Such a weird thing to say. It's hard to let that one go. I mean, that quote has potential to be as damning for a coach as the Bobby Williams quote. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven, which was in Bobby Williams after a loss to Michigan. Somebody said, "Have you lost the team?" And he said, yeah, "Mickey Orcast." He said, "I don't know. I don't know." And, and he was, he was the gone shortly Ron thereafter. Mason said, "You got to go." Hey, it's almost playoff time in the NBA and NHL, and baseball's in full swing. And FanDuel is your place to bet every game right now. New customers get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets, guaranteed one hundred and fifty bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. That's right, $150 in bonus bets, win or lose for new customers. What are you waiting for? Visit Fandle.com slash Doug. That's Fandle.com slash Doug. And make your first bet an automatic win. Fandle is America's number one sports book. Must be 21 or over and present in Michigan. First online real money wager. Only $10 first deposit is required. Bonus issued is now withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fandle.com. Gambling problems? Call 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help.
I am starting to think, Gator. Well, don't start now. I am starting to think I might not win this piston bet with you, <laughs> Kang. No, you don't think so? Let me try to do the math on this. I, could, I You might have a chance. What was the bet? The, was the Pistons win three games in a row? Yeah, back in the middle of December when they were like 2-24, and 24, I bet Kang that the Pistons at some point would win three games in a row. You got in on the action like a month later. Yeah. And I'm starting to think I'm going to lose this bet. Well, how many games do they have left? They got two left. Okay, so did they win last night? They did not. Oh. Yeah. So they... I'm not giving up. They have two games left that they need three wins. Yeah, I got to tell you, man, I don't think it sounds good for you. you know, but this team has already this year done a bunch of stuff that people didn't think was possible. <laughs> right? This could be their next trick. Find a way to get three wins in these last two games. I mean, Malachi Flynn did score 50 points and then scored six in the next two games combined. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. So what, Chick-fil-A guys? Doug, you want to go double or nothing? They win the last two? I don't want to know. Want to you don't want to I'm, I'm going to minimize the, <laughs> the damage. This is how you win it back. Which is always smart. Think about how to bet, bet that way. The way so, I did it on. As Joey's interpreter. Yeah, he told me, me. Like, let listen. Me. Hey, man, the he's good for it. kept increasing yeah. in size. They kept getting bigger and bigger. Why do you think that is? Because he kept losing. <laughs> See, you read that he lost $180 million. I read he won $140 million. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Wait I'm, a second. That's a minus $440 yeah, no. million? Yeah, you read the, like, was it $40 million? Yeah, total. But, yeah. yeah. But he... But really, it was only sixteen million that he lost. Anyway, Chick Fil A sound good for you guys? Yeah, it sounds great. I won't speak for Kang. Oh yeah, I mean, I want Doug to have lunch with us. Yeah, so I mean, we're yeah, going to need buy, to yeah, buy Chick Fil A next week at some point. Sure. I do. I, look, hey, to the audience, I hope you enjoyed the ride and the the possibility. I think they won two, three times. They won two in a row, three times. Never got the third win, and um. I, I will say, if the mission was to make the remainder of a terrible season slightly more interesting, mission accomplished. Was it? Ever so slightly. <laughs> well, it was for me. I felt bad for you in the end because, I mean, they were putting up lineups that had no chance. Yeah, but I like, should have no known. Chance. I mean, if, if when you make a bet like this, that's always a possibility, right? To well, lead the league in how many players they had on their roster? I don't know if we knew it was going to be that bad. And you also kind of expect that there's going to be a lot of load, man load management from the opposition, that they're not going to give their best effort, and the Pistons can take advantage of that. And yet that didn't really happen. No, it didn't really happen. No, these damn play-in games, now they no, kind of matters for everybody. Uh, it's quite all right. I'm sorry, Doc. I, I mean, you're probably not, but that's okay. Uh a little bit. Sorry. I I got I I'm got sorry what the I deserve. Sucks so bad. <laughs> sorry for that. Should we ask Pistons fans if they're having fun? <laughs> That's funny. That's really funny. You guys having fun yet? I mean, it's just been such a dismal season. It's um, I mean, when is the season done? Two games left. Yep. So what, Monday, Tuesday, are they done with the season? Yep. So what day next week do we hear that Troy Weaver has been relieved of his duties as general manager? Do we hear it or not? I think we probably do. You think so? Yeah, and you know what? I'm prepared to take the L on this because I was on I, – I thought it was going to work. I'll take the L. It's getting so bad, like the beat writers are just – like in the third quarter the other night, they they just tweet out nine quarters left, you know, like it's like it's, it's mercy, like just mercy, man, mercy. Two games left. I mean, it's got to the point where they're hardly covered ever on the local news. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if 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 you're watching on TV, it's like just a score, no highlights, no need to do highlights. We'll talk about other stuff. When it comes to our show, I it mean, it was all get, about the bet that we. I mean. We, it's the only the bet is the and only the thing joke right that they start. are constantly rotating through the bottom 100 players in the NBA. And oh, by the way, this is the year they're going to win the lottery in a year where the draft is being called historically bad. Right. 
So it Well, you don't know European players. Who knows? Well, what's funny about this is that <laughs> this is why. Like uh a uh, bro remember bro at the beginning of the show texted when's the Doug Karsh? Uh they all tried hard. Right. B- portion of the show start. And and I'm thinking to myself, dude, the Red Wings have been interesting right to the end. The Pistons. <laughs> so is there a degree of being excited to have games that we care about this much? When it as it pertains to the Red Wings? You're damn right. You're damn right. So the Pistons, on the other hand, have brought just about nothing to the table for months. All right, uh, Rico Beard has sauntered into the studio. That is a saunter. Yep. So uh, we welcome him in. How are you, sir? I'm good, guys. How are you? No, oh, not bad. Not bad. Just, uh, just get ready for the weekend. A little Tiger baseball this weekend. Just trying to pull my Doug Karsh one-of-one card. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of that Jackson Holiday patch that they're going to put into a pack? I've never been into the one of one type of stuff because it's either you look like an idiot because you sell it or you keep it and it becomes worthless. Yeah. The rare chance it pans out. It's a trick. It's a bit of a trick, isn't it? Right. It's like when do I sell this thing? Yeah. I want the whole jersey. I don't I don't want a little swatch or a little a little a patch that was patch. on the jersey. Oh yeah, I want the whole jersey. That that's that's oh. something that would mean something to me. Um I guess as a collector, although I understand, look, card collectors, it's its own little world there that that it's it's got tremendous value. Bruh. For people who missed it, by the way, Tops put a patch or a sticker, it looked like, or something on the side of Jackson Holiday, number one prospect in baseball, on the side of on the sleeve of his Baltimore Orioles jersey. Tops now pulled the patch off and is putting it in a baseball card mm-hmm. that will be autographed by Jackson Holiday and is a one of one. And I was thinking about that, and I look. I don't know how interesting this topic is to Detroit, but let's say Max Clark is the next guy that in the next year he emerges as the top prospect in baseball, or Jackson Job, or whatever the case may be, and they do the same thing. That card should specifically be shipped to the area code of the home team, so that one that it it starts a feeding frenzy of the fans going after that card. Mm. Wouldn't that make sense? No, it would. It would. You would end up looking like the ladies trying to get the pink Stanley Cup. So Yeah, that's right. Lining up outside of Target. Yep. I get that. Hey, there's a lot of cards on sale. Target. But if not, I know. Hey, Kang, here's one for you for Kang Collects. Uh, how, the old Harold Minor cards that I have. Back when I thought he was going to be something. Back yeah. The baby Jordan. Harold Minor. Yeah, I mean, are you uh, you gonna have any bonfires soon or anything like that? I mean, wow. that's good usage for wow. that stuff. You know what? Wow. I figured I'd just put it in my bike spokes to make it sound like a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you guys got planned coming up next? Wings. Um, after last night's loss, I mean, it, it, I think you can kind of put a fork in them. Would you rather make the playoffs? I think it's like a fifteen percent, or just know that there's going to be a, a, a new coach next year if Would- you had the choice. Well, have a great show. Okay. Enrico, you have a great weekend. You too, Doug. And everybody out there, have a great weekend. You too, Gator. Thanks, Doug. You too, Kang. Stay safe, everyone, and treat each other with respect. 97.1.
He and his team amid a worst possibly timed slump for the second consecutive season just lost a critical head-to-head against a team they're battling with for the playoffs. But listen to how Derek Lalone sounded immediately after that Wings overtime loss at Pittsburgh last night. Red Wings playoff chances now down to 16% with three games left. Tigers and Twins set for a 6:40 first pitch from downtown tonight, assuming weather cooperates. Rain in the forecast for much of the evening, though. If it's played, we'll carry it here on 97.1. Coverage starting at 6:15. Pistons at Mavs. You can hear that on WWJ News Radio 950. <laughs> Coverage starting at 8:05. They're fresh off setting a new single season loss record last night. And right now at the Masters, Bryson DeChambeau, Scotty Scheffler, Max Homa, and Nikolai Hoygor top the leaderboard at six under. The Coral Health Update Desk, I'm Beanie Howell. For more, go to 97.1 The Ticket or odyssey.com. Welcome in on a Friday. I I'm I cannot believe the planet I reside on. I, I we're right. No, no, no. I, I gotta tell you. I I don't know Derek Lalone from a hole in the wall. So I can't call him certain things. I can just tell you what he sounds like. See, sounding like something doesn't mean you are. It's just the outward projection you're offering is sounding like you're something. Um, And that word is a loser. See, I don't use that word lightly. I don't think these men go out and try to be terrible. I don't think these men go out starting the day going, how can I take a chair to the spine? But when Derek Lalone sits here, like whether it was Osgood on TV because Bally going full Kremlin per usual, or whether it's Derek Lalone himself What kind of playoff chase do we never get to talk about winning? We only rationalize the losing. Derek Lalone's comment about how proud he is and how big of a point it was. You know what, dude? Out. The comment the other day was even worse about how they're in such a blessed spot and how you never know, we may not be in this spot next year. You know what? If I had anything to do with it, you certainly won't be. How can you go out after they lose 6-5 to five last night? See, th- that's the other thing. Losing is one thing. When you score five goals in a National Hockey League game, you should win 99.9% of your games. This team seemingly wins none of them. Last night was a microcosm because they sat there. They are in the trail <laughs> position all night. Then Raymond goes hero mode only to break your balls later because whenever you need a big save, we don't have a goaltender capable of making it. Nope. Uh, You just took my, what I was going to say, it is microcosm of the season because just when you want to say, okay, at least it's over. Wait a minute. They're coming back. Okay. You know what? I believe in this team. You get a second chance. You go to overtime. Can't clear the puck. But the, Rico, the worst lost. part is, the worst part, you can't even get a shred of honesty in the postgame. I mean, what, what are we doing, guys? Your playoff chances fell to a 15% shot, and you would have thought they solved the Israeli-Palestine conflict by getting a point last night. No, the object is to win. It is to win. This town is filled with losers. Let's say he went full good cop. No, it's losers. It is a loser ass attitude. This is a playoff chase where you're now 513 and two. Come on. Win games. I'm with you. Not I'm just yelling no, no, no. at you. I, I understand the passion because it was I wasn't expecting to hear that of, hey guys, 
Play the hey, audio for hey. our audience. Hold on, in case people yeah. ignored Beanie. Play the audio. Funny man, make me a bike. You, you basically say, hey, everybody, stand up. Give yourself you know a what? round of applause. Capri Suns for everyone. We got a point. Orange You know slice? what that beats? Nothing. It's it's about the hey. same as the other day when you scored with a second to go. We didn't get shut out. Honestly, Derek <laughs> Lalone is Rico Beard. Because this is the king of saying, well, Michael, it could always be worse. <laughs> Rico will be standing over my body after I get hit by a truck and going, could have been worse. True. No. This is... Dude, this defines where our town is right now. And whether it's been the Scott Harris stuff about just diminishing any expectation to Lalonde. I mean, what is Lalonde doing? Oh, no one gave us a chance at the start of the year. Well, you know, we're blessed to be here. Never know. You know, Houston, uh, Jersey had 100 points last year, and they only have like 10 this year. Hey, you want to play that audio? Listen to this garbage. Okay, so, so hold on. Let me get this straight. So they're the only teams that get to get better. Listen to Lalone doing the old soft shoe. Just making sure you're aware, next year we may not be that good either. Let's keep the bar low. No, no. So you can keep saying it. I don't care. I'm going to ask a different question. I want to know if the people are bothered by it. You can establish the root motivation. Oh, no, no. I'm not arguing it. Mike, they should be bothered by it. I have had it. it. They should be bothered by it because now you're getting it from two different organizations saying, hey, pump the brakes. We never said we were going to be good. Oh, you know? look at the other rosters. Geez, I think Jersey will be better. We may not even be in these games next year. If I were Eiserman, I would have thrown him in the river. I Honestly, 248-539-9797. The Wings lost again. And what we're not going to do is spit shine a turd. Yeah. They well, they, they have a 15% chance of getting in Rico. They have a 0% chance of earning my love. I I I I cannot take this. No, because they're not even going to be the hot team going into the playoffs. They, they're stumbling and it's almost if they made the playoffs, it's because they looked around and everybody else around them was dead and they're like, "Oh, okay, I guess we get that last spot." If I was Eiserman, I would have been upset when he came out and said, well, you know what? No one thought we were going to be this good anyway. He should be fired whether they make it or not. I don't want this guy leading my hockey club. I mean, I'll leave that to the hockey nerds. Maybe they can call and tell me about Lalone's opinion about a, a left-wing you know lock. But you know what? I, I, I wonder, and I just thought about this, maybe he has some type of assurance that he's coming back because he does not sound like a man who was on his last leg. He does not sound like a man who is desperate, who knows my job may be over in three games if we don't win. Because if that was the case, it would be fire and brimstone. It would be, no, we have to do better. But it sounds as if he's been told, don't worry about it. You're going to get next year. Now, we may cut you sometime next year. But you're going to go in to training camp, and you're going to be the coach. Rico, the, Rico go ahead. he said, I don't address the team after games. What? That alone should get you fired. What do you mean you're not addressing your team? After a game, period? But I felt like I needed to after this game. Applaud them for one point. Applaud them for one point. You need to tell them, play better, and we could have got two. What are we doing here, guys? Do you want to make the playoffs or not? Because if you don't want to make the playoffs – how about everybody just takes the day off and go be with your families and do whatever. But if you want to win, you want to make the playoffs, we got to do better. Like, do results matter in this town anymore? Go ahead. You tell me. Does Derek Lalone speak for you as a paying customer? D does Bally speak for you in the postgame?
<laughs> Who the hell was trying to spit, shine a turd and find a silver lining last night other than Bally or apparently Derek Lalone? Who? Tell me. You're the customer. You guys. Whether you're a paying fan or you just pay with your time and your emotion, you're a customer. What the hell is wrong with this town right now? I, I can't believe people are trying to run to the defense of, well, at least they got one. No, you know what? I would have preferred if they just laid down and died at that point. Don't mm -hmm. get my hopes up. No, because this is just life support. You know the moment is coming, and it's like, okay, nope, one more day. Now we got all be all locked in on Saturday. No, no we're not. I, I'm just saying, not you, Mike. I'm saying now it got extended until Saturday, and then that could be – that. that's now the new – Biggest game of the year. Right. All this is is rationalization of losing. That's all it is. Their playoff push is 5-13 and 2. Or 5-12 five, five, and 3. Whatever it is. It's awful. And I'm not doing it. Like a playoff chase, Rico, is what Pittsburgh's doing. Pittsburgh's been hot as a firecracker roughly the last month. They're the team that deserves it. Philadelphia, Washington, and you, you've been busy trying to see who can fall down the stairs ass first. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the coach... Dude, I don't need him to go Tortorella. But you, you, how can these be the... This is the third piece of audio from this guy. This guy ought to be coaching a Sesame Street team. Bruh, when they had 70 points, there was no way I thought at this point they, they would only be at 85 points. We talked about how it would take <laughs> mid-90s to make the playoffs. They were on a pace to accomplish that and right. avoid all of this. Right. And now we get the... Well, we tried hard. Here, you know what, Michael? Have a couple of orange slices. David, here's your Capri Sun. You guys okay? You're good? All right. Kenny, Tomorrow's another day. Why are you so quiet? I'm just silently stewing in anger. David over here is laughing for some reason. You know what, Kenny? At least segment. we made money. Yeah, I, you know what? Hey, <laughs> I told thank you. God. It, it makes no sense, but at least his system works. Minus 160. Thank God. I told you to put the whole account on that. I would have fired Lalonde after the losing streak, but that's just me. This is a wave the white flag comment. Another wave the white flag comment saying, oh, we're just ha we're just lucky to be here. That better not be the message in the locker room because it seems like that was what that's the message in the locker that room. That is the message. Think, Kenny, think about it. If he's saying that publicly, if you're admitting that publicly, hey, no one thought much of us. We're blessed to be here. The comments that disturb me more are his Derek Lalone's summer preview, Hockey 25. You know, the East is going to be pretty tough. Not sure we'll even be in this spot next year. So let's appreciate this moment. <laughs> Go to hell with that. It's such a defeatist attitude. Mike, if I didn't live and die by this team, I'd be exactly like you are. Just go ahead and die already. That's <laughs> that's what I would be like. I can't I can't go there. See I see what you did. I can't do that. You're taking this man to a dark place. Oh, it is. Kenny, I love this team and it hurts me. I have feelings. Kenny, I'm sorry. <laughs> David, give Kenny a hug. <laughs> I learned it by watching you. <laughs> we were rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. I How just, dare you? I can't take anymore. Uh, if you're Iserman, who's a, as big of a red ass as there is, how the hell can you hear Derek Lalone's comments and, and bring this guy back? How? That's the third comment in a row. It, I, I would have launched how, him into Mike, the sun. But it leads me to believe I, I kind of feel like he knows. He's been told, don't worry about it. Your job you is You're reporting safe. that? I'm not reporting that, but when you... When you speak that way, because if your job is on the line, man, you're desperate because you don't want to get fired. You don't want to go through the humiliation. You don't want to see your team collapse. You are preaching fire and brimstone. You are holding pets hostage unless they win games. Not, hey, you know what? Hey, guys, be proud of yourself. You got a point. That's one point more than what you had yesterday. No, And, and look, is there a bit of irony in the player who beat you? I mean, Eric Carlson was a trade splash. He was. Three-team trade, if my memory serves me right. Now, I understand his feet are made of a collection of broken, jagged pieces of glass. But the point is, he, when healthy, is a still a big-time player. Did you make a bold trade to shore up the blue line? No. Because Stevie Y wanted to do his value signing. Well, you got beat by a high-level player. I'm, I'm just saying there th these connection points matter. You gave up six goals. After you came back to tie the game up, that's 
I think that was the worst part because I think, Kenny, I, I don't want to speak for you, but I think you had reserved, okay, the season's over, we're done, I can move on, wait, you just did the most dangerous thing, you gave me hope. Well, that's the problem, too, is they're still in it, which they have no business to be. They don't, they don't deserve to be in the playoffs. The problem is there's two other teams in this division or in this conference that also don't deserve to be in that are in. It, it, it's frustrating because I know I'm going to tune in on Saturday and I know I'm going to be angry about it. I'm angry right now just thinking about it. Kenny, what could I offer you that you would do something else with your Saturday? I can't, man. I can't. Okay. There's not a lot. Okay. I live and die by this, man, and I've been dying a lot lately. Okay. Jeez, that might be the saddest damn thing I've heard. All righty. Oh, this is on. <laughs> Oops. Uh, listen, 248-539-9797. <laughs> Kenny's bottomed out. I want to hear from the people on it. The Lalone audio upsets me more than the result. Honestly. Let's talk about it. We'll get into some draft stuff. J.J. McMystery. Lots of things to Ooh, do today. I like that. Oh, J.J. McMystery. So, you know what, David? Somebody's on their game today. That's right. You just got to get one point and look at Mike. Right. <laughs> right. Hey, guys, you know, big <laughs> rally last night. What was your favorite moment? <laughs> Rico, tell them. Is your mobile hotspot not getting the job done? Get an on-the-go connection that you can count on with the Now Wi-Fi Pass. It's just 10 bucks for 30 days. Sometimes you need fast internet, like right now, no matter where you are, because your favorite gamer's live stream is not going to wait for you to get home, and neither is your boss who's standing in a video conference that you totally forgot about. So when you need, to need, when you need the speed, then you need to connect in seconds with Now Wi-Fi Pass to over 22 million Xfinity Wi-Fi hotspots nationwide. You don't need to get any additional equipment. There's no commitment, and there's no cancellation fees. That means you can just dip in and dip out whenever you want, no strings attached. Now through April 24th, get 30 days of Xfinity Wi-Fi hotspot access and unlimited data for only 10 bucks, and no commitment and no cancellation fee. Visit Xfinity.com slash Wi-Fi pass to find a hotspot today. Restrictions apply. Not available in all areas after promo regular rates apply. Currently $20 for 30 days. Pricing subject to change. Actual speeds vary and not guaranteed.
David told me it's time to talk, funny man. America's place to watch sports stadium swim right now. The Masters on every screen at Stadium Swim. One of the six pools, three different levels. Perfect view of the biggest outdoor sporting bet, sports betting venue in America. It is Stadium Swim. Book your spot today at CircaLasVegas.com. Uh, everybody, if you'd be so kind, I'd like to, can we put our hands together? Everybody, please put your hands together. Please, please. Come on. David, right. act like you're singing about Jesus. Give me something now. Come on. The, the hockey elite. That's, that's for you guys. The hockey elite. They're here. They're ready to talk. Weird what happens when you give them a little bit of juice to start a show. You get going. David, what do you got on the t- on the ticket tax. The Red Wings are the old Lions. They break your heart not just once, but several times in a game, let alone the season. Someone else says, thank you, Mike. How does Eisenman allow this kind of talk from his head coach? It starts from the top. It doesn't make a lot of sense. That's mm-hmm. why I think, look, Rico's right with how it sounds. I'm just telling you I can't live in a world where Steve Eiserman, who's one of the ultimate competitors, is going to go strike one, strike two, strike three with this Sesame Street no, nonsense. No, it's almost like strike two, foul ball, foul ball, foul ball. Like, okay, are we not going to get to strike three? Because his comments, very concerning. Doesn't sound like a man who knows that the end is near. Sounds like a man who knows, you know what, guys? N- when you start talking next year, I'm always worried about a coach. Now, I've been wrong before. Juwan Howard was talking about next year, and then a couple days later, he was waxed. So, Kenny, I could be off. But when I hear these comments, it makes me wonder if he's gotten the reassurance you're at least going to be back for the beginning of the season. I I think – and maybe you're right. I'm not saying you're wrong. I, but I think, actually, I'd like to put a bet on the board during the break. I think if they don't make the playoffs, at some point this offseason, he will be fired. Okay. Because I just don't see a world where Steve Eisman, we talk about him being the ultimate competitor. Apparently, he's fuming. If he's actually that mad, he'll do something about it. And I think that starts with Derek alone. If he's actually that mad, you know what, Derek? No, come here. You're not talking to the media. What are you about to say? What are you about to say to him? That's what you're going to say? You're proud of him for getting a point? No, no, no. Nope. Come on back. Well, if you have to baby him like that, just fire him. I mean, what's the point at that point? I, I, I'll pay the fine. You're not talking to the media today. I don't want to hear that. Because that's just going to take me off. Honestly, Iserman, when Lalone's not looking. <laughs> right to the skull. If well, you're Steve Iserman, you can get away with it. If I were Iserman, I would have thrown him in the river last night. Pick one. That's all Pittsburgh is. Rivers. Let the tide carry him away to Loserville. What a ridiculous comment. One more, and I'm going to the people. Yeah, someone, you brought the chair up. Someone saying, first Steve bot that calls in needs to get hit with a chair. I'd happily slam on their back. No, I I actually want to hear from the Steve bots because I need to learn to understand the world I exist in because there have to be people who are not angry about this. There, There have to be. There are, I mean, I just can't believe when you had a nine point cushion to the cut line. You ha- this is the equivalent of bumper bowling, except your kid still rolls the ball and it's four lanes over. That's what the Wings have done the last six weeks. And now you have a 15% chance of getting in, which is going to require winning all your games and heavy amounts of prayer and study of the New Testament. I- no, th- th- you cannot sell this. Th- oh, well, we were close. And hey, it could always be worse. What the hell was the point of hiring Steve Eiserman if I could have hired a faceless GM to guide me through five non-playoff years? And have a coach, you know who he sounds like? Like like, like an eighth grade uh, soccer coach. Yeah, it does. Did everyone have fun? Did little Bobby get to play today? Hey guys, you know what? The biggest thing is you didn't quit. You could have quit. It was five to three, but you decided you found something and you went out there and you tied this up and you brought it into extra period and you lost. But you know what? There's no shame in losing. We lose with dignity. We lose with pride. So long as everybody had fun. Everybody had fun? All right. Let's get in here. On three. Team. 
That's what it feels like. 248-539-9797. Let's go to the people. Pedro's going to lead it off on a Friday. What's up, Pedro? How you doing? I'm, I'm good. I got two things. Uh, did you happen to watch or see the Larkin interview? Because for him, it was complete opposite. I yeah, mean, he was, was gutted. Uncomfortable. Oh, he was. They were talking about how great that one point was, and he just looked at him like like he wanted to take that chair and hit him with it. Um, but then you hear Lalone coming out how great it was to get one point. So it's kind of interesting that your captain and your coach are preaching two different things. Um, my, my point is I'm new to hockey. I used to love the NBA. I can't stand that now. So I've been getting into hockey the past year or two, so I need to make sure what I'm seeing is, is right. Is that just a bad hockey team? Is that what I'm watching? A poorly coached, Feels like it. poor execution team? Like, I don't know hockey like, you know, some of you guys do, but I'm like, what is this? And I don't understand this, uh, the chasing in the corner. I don't understand the point of that because I feel like it never works. Um, but it just seemed like a bad team that's very poorly coached. Kenny, would you term it as poorly coached or under-talented? I think a little bit of both. I lean more towards poorly coached, but you are uh, you you were saying it yesterday. This team doesn't have a superstar, so there's that too. But I think it starts with coaching, especially considering – during that losing streak, they just didn't look like they were trying. I think that's all coaching. Yeah, it, it's really disappointing. I was super excited for the year. They're up nine points, and it just I don't understand how they fall on their face just like that. So appreciate the time, guys. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, appreciate you. I, I, I Look, I don't need people to yell and scream to tell me they're upset, right? That's not what I'm asking for. You're free to just talk like a normal adult. I just... I get so frustrated in this town. Like, what? Why? Like, how could a former player like Chris Osgood spit shine that last night? You don't know anybody. Be better. You're a Stanley Cup champion. Yeah, you, you know, understand I, what it takes. Now, I don't want to hear about. Well, he you know, Chris is singing for his supper. No, you don't no, need it that bad. He's not singing for his supper. He's just trying to find the positive in this. Of well, we're not dead yet. That's pretty much what should have been at the banner of the screen last night at the end of the game. We're not dead yet. Right. Known as fading. Vitals are fading. But we she ain't gone yet. But there's still a chance that the miracle cure can come in at any moment. That's what they were saying. Or Austin Matthews could smother Nona with a pillow. No, that's what I'm rooting for. Yeah, almost wanted that last night. No, no, now I'm gonna get it Saturday. Leave six wings too. Just put them put them to sleep. I've had enough. They don't deserve this. They don't deserve to be in. And if if it means getting in that Lalone stays, I'll make the trade. I'll make the trade. If missing the playoffs means I get Iserman to be bold this summer and I get Darren, Derek Lalone loaded into a space cannon, I'll sign the paper. Gotcha. Would you? Oh, no, I would. Yeah, I would. But you know. Kenny, would you? He's on the phone. We're going to get rid of Newsy. Okay. What are we going to do? I said we're going to get rid of Newsy. I don't know what that means. That's his. That's what they call him. That's Lalone's nickname, Oh, Newsy. oh I, I was yeah. like, Kenny's nickname is now Newsy? <laughs> no. What do him and Lalone have to do with no. each other? Okay. Got it. I'm sorry. This is um, why you only got one point instead of two. Kenny. <laughs> if we could make a trade right now that by missing the playoffs get blown out by the leaves, Iserman. I- Goes psycho mode this summer, aggression, and we fire Lalone. Would you sign the paper knowing you're missing the playoffs? Defi- is psycho mode just firing Lalone or is no, psycho mode? No, no, no. Bold. He's doing an Eric Carlson type thing. We're going out and poaching a 40 goal score. He's getting like Sam Reinhart, 50 goal score. Buddy, I don't care. Whatever. Just if- answer the question. Bold summer, Lalone space cannon, but you miss playoffs. God, you are. I think you I, are human garbage. I think I make the trade. I it's. I said I think I make the trade. I had to think about it. For it's a no I brainer. Think. It's not a no brainer. I want these young players to have playoff experience. Wah, Don't you dare wah, say that it's a no brainer. All right, good. Have a Capri it, it, Sun. It, it means that he wants to see the playoffs. Unbelievable. I want to see Mo Sider and Lucas Raymond in a playoff series. You, you, you know what? Forgive me. You have contacts in television. Call Bally. Have him take Kenny. We're done. <laughs> You're working for Bally now. They say the orange yeah. slices were he, good in the locker yeah. room. Go that park day. Keating's car. That's Kenny, where you're headed. Kenny would rather a sweep in the playoff, but they made it. I wish we had like a tinted limo partition that I could raise so I don't have to look at Kenny. Can I get one, please? Yes. <laughs> Surrounded by losers. All right, Moran Butte GMC. 
Get the best price, period, right now. Lease the 24 GMC Sierra 1500 or lease the 24 Encore GX Preferred. $189 a month. Bolt 24-month lease is $19.99 down. You schedule a certified service appointment at Moran. They're going to hook you up with a free loaner. Convenience. Get on your way. Get on with your day. Moran, sure to have a vehicle you're looking for as well. It's simple. MoranExpress.com or in-store on Telegraph, just north of Eureka and Taylor. Moran Buick GMC. We are professional grade. All right, to the people. How about the idea you didn't win again? Lalone is, I, I, I just, he might be a mastermind at hockey. I, I don't know how these messages are anything Steve Eiserman wants here. Let's go to Ferris, 97.1. What's up, Ferris? Hey, how you guys doing? Good, hey, man. What's up? Yeah, honestly, just a couple things. I'll start off with Eiserman. Uh, last two years, roster construction has been horrendous. I mean, half the guys he signed aren't even on the roster. Or they're, they're health bombed half the time. You know, uh, then you're then you're putting Petrie in the lineup that goes down to coaching, and then 
just like the decisions and the consistent mistakes. I mean, how many transition tool ones do the other teams have to have? How many pinches do defensemen always do? Like Jeff Petrie pinches at least five times a game and misses four of them. You know, that's all coaching. And then he has no passion. You know, why are the fans more upset than the coach? He just he just acts like it's another game. No worries. There's no passion. There's there's nothing. The problem as well is you're five years into this. And outside of Mo Sider, you don't have a defenseman that would play for a playoff team. And you don't have a goaltender that would play for a playoff team. And you don't have yep. multiple 30-goal scorers. You don't have a 100-point man. Um, it's really underwhelming to be this deep into it, Ferris. And I don't know what a point of strength is besides, well, not all our players are useless. Hey, I've got yeah. seven guys with 10 goals. Like, that can't be the selling point this deep into it. No, I mean, I mean, you look at games. Like it, You can see the delineation between the players who actually matter and are valuable. Like You look at Raymond the last couple of weeks, you learn a lot about him. He's going to be a stud, right? You look at Larkin, he cares, he shows. Yep. But then everybody else. They're just a box of scraps, you know. They're just these players will never be on any winning team. You know what it reminds me of, and it's why I've done this topic. It's the Detroit Tigers on skates. It's just yeah, you're a, not wrong. it's just a bunch of stuff with maybe an occasional guy who I might want to keep around. Ferris, that's the disappointing part, and it's yep. I, I just expect better. And I mean, if you think that's an unfair thing, go ahead, people. But these players that Iserman has lusted after and, and signed and brought in for all this depth, none of them will be here when it's right time to win. Hmm. None of them. wonder if it's a common denominator there. Okay. I'm going to ignore that <laughs> because that'll take us down an even darker path. Dennis, how are you? I, I got to tell you guys, I was waiting for this show after the f interview, after the first period of the um, Capitals game with Lalonde. And I literally flamed up on Facebook because I thought Scotty Bowman has choked on his one of his championship rings listening to this interview where he says, we're out shooting them two to, two to one. We got two to one on scoring chances, so I feel pretty good. Scotty Bowman with a winner's mentality would have been like, guys, you got like results matter. All the effort doesn't matter. Results matter. You want it, you got to take it. I, it was unbelievable, and I can't believe that this guy's still coaching after that. It was disgusting. So would you take the deal? If you miss the playoffs, Lalone space cannon, and it forces Iserman to speed the process up. But you know I wouldn't have you're before not I saw it. that interview in this last one. Yeah. And after you see that, the guy has no heart. He has no he has no fight in him to be a dog. Like it's unbel I, I can't do it. I'm ready to burn it down. Like that's it's just I, I can't do it. I'm with you. It's just a weird personality type. And again, maybe Iserman's fire is offset by this approach. But like, Dennis, I'm with you. Whether it was the common a month ago, how nobody believed we'd be here anyways in the midst of a seven-game losing streak, to the comment the other night, to what we just heard today. I, I, where's, I, your guts, where's your gut speech to say, guys, like, you, you got to go get this. It's not going to give itself up for you. They're, they're playing. They're skating their ass off out there. Two to you're out shooting them two to one, and they're still got a chance to win this. It's it's unbelievable. There's no gut speeches out there that are challenging them. It's it's I can't I can't do it, man. I know. No, no. I, and, and Dennis, you have every right to just say I've had enough. I, if it means missing the playoffs, but I get real change, I'll always root against my team. Always. I mean, like a great example. Last year, when the Giants showed they were going to be bad, oh no, then just die. Don't do this stuff and start winning meaningless games. Mike, you've and been now nothing but consistent no. with that. I, now, I can attest to that no matter the team, local, New York. Just be bad. That's you. And if you're going to be good, be great. You're going to be bad, be terrible. Once they've lost you, they don't get you back. No. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Because I remember, hey, Mike, what if they make the playoffs? No. Chair of the spine. I don't want to see this. Done. It's garbage. Cause that's why I asked. Like, would you, would you like to see them? If you had a choice, they make the playoffs, but everything stays the same. Nope. Or they miss it. Get a new coach next year. You move on. Where are you at with that? Miss it. Miss the playoffs. Fire the coach and force Steve to get bold. Yeah, that's that's what I would want. Let's go to Brad ninety seven one. Bradley, what's going on, buddy? Hey guys, just uh, wanted to 
chime in here. I think leadership matters so much, whether you're running a Fortune 500 company or a hockey team. The identity of the coach or leader trickles down to the team, and you can see that. they got a lackadaisical attitude. And by him saying he doesn't address the team after games, I mean, at some point in the season after they're getting blown out, you need a coach to go in there, kick down the garbage can, and say, what the hell are we doing? And I kind of disagree with one of the callers saying, Petriot's, you know, it is an accountability issue. I mean, get the guy out of here. I mean, you have the coach to sit his ass on the bench. So, you know, I think that there's a lot that they need to do from an accountability. And, and I am a recovering Steve bot. That's so, okay. That's you know, okay. When you, when you look at, you know, Steve, I mean, if, I'm going to lose all credibility for him if he doesn't launch this guy out of a cannon to use your work. It's like, I played competitive hockey. I was a goalie. I remember one time the coach calling a timeout and saying, hey, Lucas, are you going to stop a puck today? You know, here's the other thing. <laughs> And I, hold on, real, accountability. real quick, where, where was that breaking point that you became a recovering Steve Bot? Mm. The comments of the coach, I mean, and I, I'm glad to see the leadership from Larkin. And I think that the, like a, a light bulb went off yesterday, guys, when I'm like, okay, Larkin being out and had such an impact on that team. Yeah, obviously he's a great player. But the leadership in the locker room, like after games, this guy's not addressing his team, both good, bad, you know, ugly, you know, it's the leadership in the room that you know was carrying that team. This guy is just floating around. You see his dumb look on the the bench. You know, it's it just speaks to a team that doesn't have a, a vision or a you know any urgency. And I think within hockey, especially, I mean, that captain role goes the I think the furthest out of any sport, personally. And in lacking that coach, you can see. I mean, that that's lost us games this year, especially with the lack of accountability. Brad, the other thing, though, you talk accountability, and I know it's uncomfortable for a lot of people, but you know, you know why Petrie's here, or you know why Hull is here, or you know why your roster is filled with the JT Confers of the world. At what point does Steve Eiserman have to face some accountability for for building a roster of meh, largely players who can't play for a playoff team? Like, I, I think that's a conversation we kind of got to have here a little bit, right? No, I agree 100%. I mean, I know it sucks. 100%. And I like, it's just wild to me. There are people who will freely call in and complain about Scott Harris, but won't touch Steve Eiserman. And it's like, no, 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 no. Don't do the whole memory lane thing. We're here now. What's. But I mean, it, because then you have to criticize a hero. Who cares? Does Eiserman does Eiserman do your grocery shopping? No. He does he pay your mortgage? No. But does I he mean, service your car? No. Does he pay? Does he pay your student debt? No. But then you, stop kissing his ass. He's a hockey GM. No, for the, He's not that Carmanos curing pancreatic cancer. No, but he brought back the last memories of this team being. You know good. what? And this is your last memory. Bring me the memories again. Wait. No, wait. What? How did I become the bad guy? Because you sound like Osgood. No. I'm just saying, you. how uh, dare you reach <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm just saying, you want to know why, sir? It's hard for some people to say that. Because then if you if you criticize him, you're severing, severance from the last time this team was good. And you have to start all over again. At least you can hold on to the fact, well, I do remember when he did this. But if you, if you criticize, that's gone. All right, distracted driving's become an epidemic. Look around, we've all seen it. You might be seeing it right now on the road. People are veering all over the place, texting, just general nonsense. And it puts you and your family in danger. You need life insurance. You got to call Mike Papura National Benefit Plans. Mike can help you find a life insurance plan that not only covers your family's needs, but is also affordable. And that's what makes Mike and National Benefit Plans different. They'll shop over 70 different life insurance carriers nationwide. They'll guarantee the best possible rate. And over the last 30 years, National Benefit Plans brings experience to the table. They'll save your time, your headache, and hopefully your money. So get involved. Call Mike Papura now, 877-734-2200, or on the web at nbphealth.com. Remember, National Benefit Plans would like to be your health and life insurance agency for a lifetime.
All right, real quick, we'll handle some football. We'll get right to your calls as well. David Music. So, Tom Brady is... No, next topic. I know what you're going to do. I'm not talking about it. I don't care if he wouldn't frown upon it. No. The answer is no. No to anything Tom Brady playing NFL football. Please move to the next topic. All right. David, I think he's actually going to do it. Okay. I, I, he can't be out of the spotlight long enough where it just... I, I don't understand it. You, you've made enough money. You should be able to enjoy your retirement. Prepare for doing your mm-hmm. play-by-play stuff. But instead... He can't let it go. I hope the ceiling caves in on you mid-segment. On me? Or you? Well, if it caves in on me. No, it'll miss me. I don't know. Just go to the, I don't want to talk about this. I'm the All one right, that's talk, highly favored here. Go I ahead. don't want to talk about this. Let's talk about, well, let's talk about Joe Burrow. Well, there was Hi. a new hot heights podcast from Jason and Travis Kelsey. They oh, recorded it live it. at the University of Cincinnati. There was a lot of things going on. Oh, is on. that before Travis Kelsey showed his ass at a graduation oh. and chugged a beer in front of the Cor- school president like a loser? Correct. They did a Grow surprise up. graduation for both of them. Do you know and what he-, he is right now? Mm-hmm. He has turned into government cheese gronk. He is trying so hard to be Gronk Career Path 2.0. How about just a level of respect? A level. Getting a degree that we all know you didn't earn. Just a level of respect. Nah, Gronk showed him the dumber you act, the more popular you become. It's ridiculous. And he left a vacuum, and he's like, you know what? Sure, I'll have that. School president should have taken a piece of paper and get out. Just, just leave. Just get out of here, please. Well, Joe Burrow made an appearance on that live podcast, and he, quote, said, they have great players. We have great players. I think we match up pretty well with them, talking about the Kansas City Chiefs. He says, we're built to beat them. He's right. Mm -hmm. He got hurt last year. I don't hold any of the Bengals stuff against him. If you got Burrow and Jamar Chase and their core players, they've already proven they can go in Arrowhead and win. Something that Josh Allen's ass can't do. So, yeah, he's got every right to say it, David. He's also been to a Super Bowl, something else Josh Allen hasn't done. So, yes, I'll allow Joe Burrow to say whatever he likes. And I like the confidence that he has, not soft-pedaling and saying, well, you know, that's a good team. No, we can beat him. Yeah, he would never fit in Detroit. Well, golly gee, just, you know, (laughs) trying to be competitive. So let's get to a little draft here. I do have some fun, worse NFL draft picks, but I want to touch on a guy here real quick that – Really wanted to play one more year in college, but was forced to enter the NFL draft. And I want to know, does he get drafted? It is Rico's favorite guy who played for Maryland, Tualia Hagavaloa. What happens to him? He won't get in, drafted. Okay. He will He will not get drafted. I mean, he, he was a, a, a mediocre Big Ten quarterback. So if you're not the elite in the Big Ten, what makes me think that you can go to the next level and get it done? He'll probably, you know, Canada, this UFL, but I, I, I cannot see him in the NFL. Even though his brother is the quarterback at, at Miami, no. Now, they Miami may bring him in as an undrafted free agent as a favor to his brother, but I don't think he'll ever take a snap in the NFL. Personal growth. Proud that of you. is. That is personal Proud growth. Proud of you, man. <laughs> so let's go through this here. I have a list of the worst NFL draft picks of the past 10 years. Oh, Jesus. Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson is on the list. Solomon Thomas. Solomon Thomas is not on the list. Zach Wilson, six, by the way. Do you have a guess, Rico? Trey Lance. Trey Lance is on the list at number three. Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley is (laughs) not on the list. Daniel Jones. (laughs) Jeff Okuda. No. Wow, no. if Okuda doesn't make the top 10, I need to hear the rest of this. All right, well, I'll start at 10 here. Corey Coleman, wide receiver for the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, but where was he? T- he was taken like 20th, wasn't 15th. he? 15th. I- 15th. I- he was bad, and he was embarrassing on hard knocks, mm-hmm. but, geez, he was taken 15th. Okuda was taken third. Here's other wide receivers that were taken in that draft. Will Fuller, Josh Doxson, Laquan Treadwell, 
and then you have Coleman, all first round wide receiver. That was okay. a bad class. Not there for optimal. Wide Not optimal. Number nine, Greg Robinson, offensive tackle for the St. Louis Rams, drafted second overall yeah. in 2014. That makes sense. Guy was terrible. Johnny Manziel. Oh, dear. Drafted mm. number one overall. I'm yeah. sorry, 22nd overall. He was number eight on this list. Okay. 2014 really wasn't a good draft here. Uh, because you have another 2014 selection here. Picked eighth overall, Justin Gilbert, cornerback, Cleveland Browns. Yeah, the the problem with Gilbert, I remember back when a lot of people, I think the midday show wanted him. I'm like, well, he plays like a 12 yard cushion. That I just I you don't mean that res- doesn't work in the NFL. I don't respect corners who just play strict off cover, <laughs> and you're going to come into the NFL and do what? Yeah, when you're not even in the. Uh- the TV, it's like, okay, why is he wide open? No, there's somebody there. He's just 15 yards away. So the top five here, John Ross, wide uh-huh. receiver for the Cincinnati. Mr. Oh. 40 yard dash. One problem. He only ran one route. He I remember caught, that. Caught 62 passes, 957 yards, and 11 touchdowns before he was kicked, not kicked out, but. Yeah, hold on now. Out of the league. Go ahead. Let me hear the next one. Josh Rosen. Quarterback okay. for the Arizona yeah. Cardinals. You know what? I'll own this. Guilty. You wanted him? No, it was an idea of prototypical quarterback, play action, NFL arm. He had the huge comeback against AM that night in the Rose Bowl, and everyone thought he was going to go in the top 10. And I go, I wouldn't mind if the Giants took him. They didn't. We took a running back at two. But I'm not going to sit here acting like I was ripping Rosen in college. I wasn't. And he turned out to be a total mystery where one oh, yeah. year. Gets replaced, never gets another shot. Nobody can explain why. Yeah, I think he's going to end up being like Trey Lance, where the Cowboys took Lance, but I think some one day we're just going to look and be like, whatever happened to Trey Lance? You remember what Josh Rosen was most famous for in college, right? The hot tub. There you go. Hot tub in college. Good for him. Now if he played, he'd probably own the college, the way the players are getting paid. Or own the hot tub company. Right. There you go. Number two on the list. Wide receiver, drafted by the Chicago Bears, seventh overall in 2015, Kevin White. Yeah. All the physical tools, size, speed. Was that Virginia? No, uh, West, West Virginia. West Virginia. West Virginia. Okay. He just couldn't play. Yeah, 28 catches, play. 397 yards, and zero touchdowns in his career. That's tough, man. Not a single touchdown in I your know. career. I know. That's like never getting drafted at all. Like the fact that Kenny Cott is tied with Kevin White for all-time touchdowns in their NFL careers. Right, because that's this, rough, This man. is where at the end of the game, you're like, hey, guys, can, I know we're up by 20, but can, can you just throw me the ball, please? Not a single touchdown. Yikes. And then number one on the list, Kenny should know this player well, played for Georgia, was drafted 30th overall by the Tennessee Titans, offensive tackle. Isaiah Wilson. Mm-hmm. Oh. That, now correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't that the one where the mom like body checked the girlfriend out of the way to get to Isaiah? That was yes. him. Like oh. the girlfriend was going in to love on him, and mom was like, "Nope, stiff arm, collarbone. Yeah. That's my baby." Yeah, you didn't get your barbecue invite yet. No, <laughs> that was an interesting draft night. Better situation. draft moment. Isaiah Wilson's mom stiff arming the girlfriend or CD Lamb going, that second cell phone ain't none of your business oh, to his that. girlfriend. Nope. Nope. <laughs> As he's using one. No, I'll take that one. Do not touch the bat phone. I don't have that number, and you never will. <laughs> What's restricted mean? That is in football today. <laughs> All right, it's playoff time in the NHL. Not here, it's not. Oh, baseball's in full swing. FanDuel's got you covered. 15% chance. Right now, new customers, $150 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. That's $150. Win or lose, you bet everything. From home run props, which people love, to, hell, the Ma- I mean, the Masters right now, best betting event in the world. Bottom line, FanDuel's got it for you. FanDuel.com slash ticket. That's FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, 21 and up, present Michigan. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued, now withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms, sportsbook.fanduel.com. You got a gambling problem? Call 
With 424, Tarek Skubal has the most strikeouts through 75 starts in Detroit Tigers history. He's looking to build on that tonight on the mound with the Twins in town. Weather may not cooperate, though. Rain in the forecast for much of the evening. MLB will want to get this one in, given yesterday's rainout and the resulting doubleheader Saturday. If it's played, hear the Tigers and the Twins here on the ticket tonight. Coverage at 615. Over on WWJ News Radio 950 tonight, it's Pistons at Mavs. Coverage starts at 805. Right now at Augusta, Bryson DeChambeau and Scotty Scheffler atop the Masters leaderboard at 7 under. Shohei Otani's former interpreter, Ipe Mitsuhara, turned himself in to authorities Friday. He's expected to be arraigned in federal court this afternoon on bank fraud charges. And I guess we're doing this again. Tom Brady today, appearing on the Deep Cut podcast, hinted at another possible unretirement. At the Coral Health Update Desk, I'm Beanie Howell. For more, go to 971 the ticket or odyssey.com. All right, 3 o'clock, good to have you with us. The Hockey Elite are representing strong, and they should. I want to play a piece of audio for you. And if you listen to the show on a semi-regular basis, you know this is not a Derek Lalone safe space. Uh, the comment amidst the seven-game losing streak about, well, hey, you know, no one gave us a chance at the start of the year, so dot, dot, dot. Into his comments the other night saying, well, listen, you know, next year – uh, it's going to be tougher. You don't even know if we'll be here. I mean, New Jersey could have 100 points. Into last night after, again, losing, which this is my problem with this. I'm all for a good playoff push. Everyone loves a good playoff drive. Those normally involve winning. All we're doing is rationalizing losing. I mean, front and center with Osgood last night. Bally, come on, guys. Former player, Stanley Cup champion, you don't have anything to fear. Just call it. You know, it's not good enough to give up six goals. Don't tell me about how, well, this is bigger bravery than William Wallace that they got this one point. And what? Had their playoff chances reduced to 15%? But they stayed on life support. Uh, great. So Nona didn't die tonight. She's just going to die in the morning. Yeah. You don't celebrate that. You don't just die already. That's, that's where they are. Let's it's get like, to the grieving. It's not over yet, Wings fans. That not me. Before you start yelling, that's not me. That's just what was presented. Let me play this alone sound because here's what I'm presenting. If it means missing the playoffs, means I get this guy out of town and I get Steve Eiserman to go Kenny on EA Sports hockey game mode this summer, where we just acquire. I want to go back to the trade deadline of like oh two. And, and it was like, wait a minute, did, uh, Brett Hull just descended from the sky. Like, we need a bold off season. we need better players, and we need Lalone gone. I'm willing to miss the playoffs. Because here was his message last night. Tell me if you want this guy leading your seventh grade soccer team, much less the winged wheel. Do you know where that comment would be acceptable? If this were the youngest team in hockey. If this were a team like the Pistons, who have teams in the final four that are older than them. I might be able to think about that where you got to keep it positive for the kids. One problem. The Wings are the third oldest team in the league. I would even take this if this was a team that was so far out of the playoff race and they were just trying to make that last ditch effort and they got a point just to hold on to a glimmer of hope. Then, yeah, guys, we're still battling. But this is a team that, you know, we, we thought would maybe get to 95 points, would easily be in the playoffs. And now, no, you're just trying. It's almost like he's trying to find – any positive thing to say, guys, it's not over yet. You did a good job. As I said before, he sounds like a man who 
doesn't feel the heat and the pressure of you got to get this done or you're fired. David, anytime he says it, I end up hating him. And I know he's not saying he agrees with it. But all I feel is rage towards Rico. That's problematic. See me tomorrow on Bally's. <laughs> they say. <laughs> David, ticket text. Let's check in and then we're going to the hockey elite. I turned off the wings last night. Effing losers. Can't do it anymore. John from Shelby says, what a disappointment last night. Edge of my seat just to take a loss. Love watching Raymond, though. He was locked in yesterday. Larkin always seems to care as well. Yeah, maybe a couple more nights from Raymond like that. He might crack the top 50 in NHL scoring. He's currently 51st. Like your best player isn't in the top 50. Alone is a joke, and if he stays, the Wings may not be here next year. Then why keep him around, Jeff from Whitmore Lake said. <laughs> I got news for you. If the Wings aren't even here next year, why keep anybody? What the hell would the Iser plan have be? Because here's the next thing that's coming down the line. It's like we can all see the Bally's download. Hey, a couple years from now, Augustine or Kosa are going to be here, and this will be the year we have a goalie. I mean, what? what, what, what? What kind of endless loop is this? Go ahead, Kenny. Say something. You got propped up in your chair, which means you either had gas or you wanted to talk. I mean, two things can be true at the same time. Uh, no, uh, I think <laughs> moving, uh, I think that's what Wings fans will do, though. That's what the Steve bots will do if things don't work out next year is we just bump it down the line. Two years in the future, you're going to see Sebastian Costa, Marco Casper, Trey Augustine. You're going to see all these guys that are supposed to be the next core of the team what do we have right now? This needs to be the offseason where we supplement the talent that we're bringing up from the minors with guys who can actually play, who have been in playoff games, who are stars or star adjacent. And I'm starting to wonder if making the playoffs would be more damaging. I want Steve and company to feel pain. I want them to have to sit there in their own mess as they collapsed. Because frankly, look, let's be real about it now. These teams are basically passing around a hand grenade. Mm -hmm. No one's – the Penguins are the only one playing good hockey. But you're right. If they make the playoffs, I think you see the George Bush type of style of mission accomplished. Well, you got to make it political. This we guy got... is really provocative today, David. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, let's go to Michael. No, 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 but it, but it would be. It's, it's like that mission accomplished. We did it. We took a step, we made the playoffs, and we'll build upon that next season. I'm not going to do it. Personal growth. Let's go to Michael, 97.1. Mike, thanks for your patience. How are you? Yeah, good, good. Thanks for taking my call, guys. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, you know, Malone is like he's taking shots left and right today, and it's deserved, yeah. But we got to put more blame on the man who hired Uncle Fester, and that's Steve Eiserman. I mean, he put him in a bad situation. This coach has had zero head coaching experience at the NHL level before taking this job. He ain't that guy. I, I you know, see, I don't know where everyone is thinking Stevie's all clenching his fists, all mad at Lalone's comments, and and has this no care attitude. Has anyone listened to Stevie's interviews this season from the beginning all the way to the trade deadline? My man's shown no urgency to win, no. which trickles down to the head coach. To me, it's more on Steve Eisenman than Uncle Fest. Oh, I, listen, you know I agree. With I don't give anybody, I don't care what you've done in your past, you're here to, to do a job right now. I mean, it's like saying I can't be mad at Steven Spielberg because he made movies I liked. Well, the ones you make now blow. Like, I, I just, yeah. Mike, I'm with you, bud. I, I, how in year five? Think about this. I said this earlier. If I said to you, all right, do we have an immense amount of young, talented skill on this team? No. Do we have a good defensive core? No, you have Mo Sider and Pylons. And we know the goaltending situation is a titanic nothing burger. So, Mike, what have we built? You want to sell yeah. me hope? You want to sell me picks? You want to sell me guys who won't play for two, three years? I'm not interested. Yeah, and I, and I think it hides behind the mask. And it, it goes with all these Detroit GMs, Brad Holmes aside. It's, to me, it's just prolonging job security. Yes. You know, it's like, well, let's talk about development. Let's, you know, let's push the development game and our young draft picks. And you just see it. And it's just, show me uh, show me a map to win. That's what I want to see. And there's just no urgency. And that, that pisses me off. And it should, Mike, because in the end, it used to be, well, if you don't buy tickets, nah, I don't want to hear that. I, I, most people can't even afford to go to these games. 
Mike, if you're yeah. giving them your if you're giving them your time, if you're giving them your emotion, you have every right to complain. These teams are an entertainment product that make a promise to the city they're in that they are going to put something out there worth watching or worth attending or worth caring about. Somewhere along the line, we've lost that. We have lost the accountability quotient that these owners, whether you're a Goris, a Chris, a, a, a Martha, well, a, a Sheila, you owe. Mm -hmm. We don't owe you. You owe us, especially because vast majority of you took public money to build your play pens. So, yeah, the wings owe you. And after a decade of irrelevance, five of it under Steve, yeah, you have every right to complain about Steve Eiserman. And I don't want to hear about how he played with a broken orbital bone. One has nothing to do with the other. Nothing. You're right. But some people can't separate that. Well, grow no, up. no, no. You are you correct. You are angering me again. <laughs> you, know what? you know what? You're right. I think what's best for me, I should just leave. Go. Get I should out. just go, and I'll see you guys on Monday. Take Lalone with you. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Let me get to Jeff ninety seven one. Jeff, how are you, buddy? Hey, well, after last night's game, not so good because I felt like I was having flashbacks. Starting with Ken Holland's dumbing down the expectations, fresh off of four Stanley Cups, he said you shouldn't expect to win them, and it's very rare, and less is more. All this, and then I just can't imagine Mike Illich would allow the kind of talk back and forth, you know, well, you know, we're proud of our effort and all that. It sounds like Chris has allowed them to make these excuses and soft sell that Mike would have fired someone on the spot. He had to come down from where he was at and fired someone for saying that. So I, I guess that's where I trace it at, you know, as far as, and the same thing seems true with the Tigers, and they do have the same owners. So yeah. No, putting that together, like you said, that's a dark hole, it, but it it's is. true. It is, but it feels like, oh, publicly they can say, I mean, Scott Harris today at the Detroit Economic Club, oh, you know, my owner has said he's going to give me everything I need, just like Steve across the street. And that's one thing to say it publicly, but until I see it in practice, I don't want to hear it, and I don't think you do either. It's it's just I don't, it's a very laissez-faire approach from both Illich-owned properties. And it's not good enough. No accountability. There's no pressure. When it happens, it happens. And when it does happen, you'll be surprised because you didn't expect it. You know what? You should go work for like them. Sounds like the Lions. That, that sounds like the Lions used to be, and now they finally you know, got a good hire and are, they're going forward. But I, I unfortunately don't see a lot of hope until... You know, either Illich gets, you know, a pulse or sells both. No, and, and the best Thank part. Thank you very much. Oh, Jeff, you're very welcome. Thank you for the call. Like, the best part is they're going to treat making the playoffs like they found the cure for cancer. Oh, my God, we I, made I'm, the playoffs. You know All you poor should bow at our feet. Suck our toes. <laughs> like, the playoffs are not the end all. No, no. That's why I said it. it's going to be a gigantic sign in the LC. Mission, we made it. Right. We made it. Like, they'll create an area so we can all sponge bathe Steve when we make the playoffs. Kenny will be able to go up. They'll have, like, a, a Virgin Mary statue of Steve near the Miller Lite party deck. Now, they may only be in the playoffs longer, maybe a little bit longer than the Pistons in 19, but you know what? We made it. It's just crazy. It's insane. Lalone's comment about— But I'm about glad you can at least see that because oh. if they do— Oh, please. Just, just like they praise getting a point— they're going to say, we made a gigantic step forward, we made the playoffs, and now we'll see what next year brings. The, ti the Tigers will be printing out, we were close t-shirts. Like, golly. Second place in the division. <laughs> not not bad, <laughs> Tigers 2024. Right. <laughs> all right, tell them all about it. Call's next. <laughs> Specs at LTU. Hey, guys, you want that career in radio, TV, you're a graphic design artist. Specs at LTU can help you achieve your goals, and you do not have to wait until the fall to get it done. Why? Because Specs offers classes year-round. So what do you need to do? You need to be curious. Go visit the website, ltu.edu slash specs, to learn more about the broadcast media arts, digital media arts, and graphics communications program taught through specs at LTU in Southfield on the campus of Lawrence Tech. You're going to be taught by people who work in the business like yours truly. And with the hands-on approach and the expert faculty, you're going to learn 
the practical skills you need to succeed in today's media industry. And like I said, classes start year round. So when you're at the website, you can see when that next class is and sign up. You do not have to wait until the fall. So what are you waiting for? Be curious. Go visit the website ltu.edu slash specs to learn more then make magic by enrolling in specs at ltu certificate program do that today Hi, everybody. Listen, being number one is not easy. It takes experience, dedication, and consistency. Serta has it all. They have the experience with 111 years making the world's best mattresses. You can pick one out of a box and know you're getting the utmost in quality. Trust the millions sleeping on Serta mattresses. Go to Serta.com. To find a retailer near you, that's Serta.com. Fire this man. Are you kidding me? Soft selling next year in the middle of this year's collapse? Well, you know, it's going to be tough. Uh, East is tough. Jersey's going to bounce back. Hope Jack Hughes' surgery went well. We may not even be here next year. Derek Lalonde. What? I'd be, ma- I'd be mad if, like, my niece's soccer coach spoke this way. It's ridiculous. 
David, no one can hear you. Your mic's not on. I'm yelling because I'm yelling at Kenny. Because All I see is his mouth moving. Be because I don't want to hear people say, well, Dan Campbell said something similar. There's a difference. He was in the NFC title game. And, and he's warning his players that don't expect to be here right. every year if you don't do the work. Right. He's saying it's not easy. Right. This is not a given. Ask the Bills. This doesn't happen all the time. It requires skill, requires a little bit of luck. And, yeah, you know what? Feel this pain. Go work hard because I can't promise you we'll be back here again. Rico, half the teams in the league make the playoffs. I'm tired of hearing about how we're not going to be here next year. He's right. I know you don't want to hear it because now you work for the Illiches, but Kenny's right. Ha it is not here. I I'm you know gonna, what? I'm you're, gonna not, you're not allowed in the district. Don't even bother. <laughs> Oh, what am I missing out on? A lonely stroll oh, we, in gray we, concrete? We got some big plans for the district. I bet. Show me another rendering, boss. Well, we were so working he, on the Detroit sign. Go here's ahead. the deal. I'll get skewered for saying this, but I'm going to take Kenny's point a step further. It's not really even an accomplishment to make the playoffs in the NHL or NBA. When half the teams get in, it's not like the NFL, which is more of a blood sport. And you have a limited run of mistakes with an 18-game schedule. Over the course of 82 games, half the teams get in. Look at what we're talking about. We're acting as if making the playoffs is, is solving the world's problems. Kenny's right. It's, it's absurd. Not um, only are they not in the top half of the league, but they'd be lucky to back into being in the top half of the league. Correct. Correct, correct on all fronts. So my point is that right here and now, miss the playoffs, get rid of alone, and Steve Eiserman has to go psycho mode this summer and bring talent in because they so just no, no. So you're saying it's both. Oh, it's you both. just can't get rid of alone. You got to no, also both. go full bore and and fix this team. Both otherwise, because you can't say we're going to start over. How are they better next year? What I'm saying because if you fire him, you could say, okay, you know what, going to bring in a new coach and we're going to kind of. Fine, Start you over. call up Craig Berube, and he looks at this roster, and he goes, ah, I don't know. Yeah, at a certain point, we got to have players people want to coach. That's exactly what I'm thinking. It's got, you got to treat it like NIL. You're bringing in a new coach. you got to provide him oh, they, with talent no, on the roster. No, no, now. I'm just making sure we're on the same page. Not only do you fire, but you also, you know, foot on the gas pedal – we got to fix this thing next year. The, the new guy, unfortunately, will not get a three-year cushion. You got to be able to win, and you got to do it in a one year. And maybe it's not fair, but you knew that when you interviewed for the job. Oh, life's not fair. Let's go to Matt, 97.1. What's up, Matty? Hey, now. Hey, now. Hey, guys. Uh, so, boy, who would think in my 54 years on this earth that uh, the one team in Detroit that has it together from ownership all the way down would be the Lions? Um, what a mess. I, I work in sales, right? So mm -hmm. if this was the end of my season, my year, and I was going to the boss like, hey, I'm, I'm pretty close. I might make it. I might not. But I tell you what, next year, there's no guarantee I'm going to make it. Guess what would happen to me? Um Get your stuff and kindly leave. Enjoy your weekend. Kindly leave. You, well, they don't want people like that in sales. They don't want you. Don't want people coaches like that. And 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 to talk about Steve Eisman and he's safe. Listen, this is the town that fired Alan Trammell. We fired Joe Dumars and he brought a championship. Joe, here. You, you know what's be interesting? Careful. He'll be next. Matt, I'm so glad you brought it up. Joe Dumars won a championship and brought one as an executive. Okay. Yep. And was run out riddled with bullets out of town riddled yep. yeah so yeah no matt i'm with you and, yeah, so and I, much so he doesn't even like coming back to detroit oh that's right so no i mean <laughs> matt here's the other thing like i always say this you know a, a, we can't act like athletes will get treated the way we get treated now that that that's on a whether it's the legal system or whether it's how this guy's a bum but he's still getting paid the whole point is when it comes to expectations and performance no i'm like you matt this is the real world. Why the hell would a customer base, guys like you, me, Rico, like my my dad sold life insurance for a living. If my dad didn't hit his number, my dad didn't have a job. That's yep. the deal. So the idea that Iserman, fine, I understand it takes a few years. It's year five. And then I got a coach soft pedal in year six, Matt. 
you're damn right oh, yeah. guys like you have a right to be offended or at least yeah. mock it and go to hell with this. Yeah, and then for anybody to bring up Dan Campbell, Dan Campbell in a 313 and one season was saying, this isn't good enough. We're going to go yes. and we're going to put the work in and we're going to get better. He didn't say, oh, we could get worse next year. You, know, you never know. <laughs> hey, you, you know, think I this mean, is bad? Crazy. Wait, wait till you see what next year could be. No, I, Matt, right, crazy. I'm Matt. Thanks, I'm, guys. Thank you. No, and Matt's right. And I'm not, I, I uh, please. The Joe D thing is, it was interesting because you're right. He won player, won his management. And you know what? It got to a point where I don't even think that the, 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 the owners was on the same page with him and he became the fall guy. Oh, no, no, no. Once Karen took the team, there was a freeze. He was a dead man walking. <laughs> Can I get this player? No. What about this? No. But just realize, and I, I was the leader of the charge. I thought it was time to break that team up by 06, 07. My point to you is they were making the Eastern Conference Finals with no hope of winning anything. And people were slandering Joe Dumars. So now we're five years into this where it looks like we're not going to make the playoffs. 15% chance to get in. Right. That means an 85% chance not to. It's, it, so it, it's not acceptable. And I'm going to ignore that remark. <laughs> God. <laughs> he, he wasn't talking about me. Let's go to John, 97.1. Johnny, what's going on, buddy? Hey, how's it going? Thanks for taking my call. Yes, sir. Hey. Um, I'm, first off, I'm going to take your deal, uh, getting Newsy out of here. I thought we had an upgrade um, from Blast Show when he came in, but I don't think that's the case at this point after hearing those comments from last night. Um, and two things for what I'm calling. One is the effort, and it kind of goes back on the coaching. Where were, what, like, we're on the power play. And the defenseman doesn't want to hold the puck in, and then cutscene Jeff Carter shorthand goal. And then you see um, Larkin and Raymond out there celebrating, you know, because they're putting the puck in the net. But like, where was all that energy when they're on the seven game losing streak? There's no answer. I mean, it, John, that's been the whole thing. Think about how that we've even ended up here. I mean, thank God they absolutely stole the Columbus game. But, I mean, two no-shows against the Coyotes. Right there alone. Those games were the opportunity to take a command position. They no-showed. Twice. Losing by a combined 8-1. No, you have every right to criticize effort. And the fact is, if Lalone's not going to rip their ass when the effort's terrible, I, and I am sure as hell not going to listen to this nonsense. Oh, you got every right, John. Yeah, I mean, he's pretty much praising the fact, like, with this comment, he's like, oh, well, we tried. You know, good job getting one point, but, you know, it's it's ridiculous. Well, the other thing then, is, you know, John, one second. I'll give you all the time you need. But I've said this. This is not a young team. That's a misnomer. See, he's talking about it like it's a young team. They're the third oldest team in the NHL. Yeah. Um, and one thing, I, I hate to do this, but with the officiating, I mean, what was so egregious that Ben Schrott did on Crosby when Crosby pretty much UFC slams him to the ice, and then we get a, now we got, you know, um, offsetting penalties, and then the blatant missed trip on Raymond, and then boom, goal. Like, it just takes – like, I'm not trying to sound like no, low no, here, but, no. like, it, it takes, your, takes the wind out of the sails – when you got two calls that, you know, don't go your way, and, I mean, they did try hard. I'm not, I won't discount that, but, like, that just sucks, you know, seeing those. It, it does, trip. but, John, you know part of the deal. You know, you mentioned it. Two words, Sidney Crosby. I mean, league's darling. Yeah. And the other angle, okay, the Raymond thing, you're right, egregious. If I just take a goal off the board, you still gave up five. Like, it right. just gets to a point yeah. where you're like, it's they're not good enough. And winning five games in this playoff stretch – you know what? Referee bad calls happen. Right. You won five of your last 20 games. Right. I'm That's... with Rico here. Now Rico's coming back from pizza land and he's ready to. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the officiating was brutal, but they were 0-3 on the power play anyway. So what's the guarantee they scored to begin with? Oh, ooh, point for Kenny. All right. Welcome back. Uh, Hungry Howies, just in time for baseball. Nothing beats a flavored crust pizza for six ninety nine. You get a large one-topping pizza. Six ninety nine, fresh dough made in house. Check, hundred percent real cheese. Yup, twenty different toppings, and of course your choice of their eight 
signature flavored crust. Six ninety nine. Now here's the deal: you got to go to hungryhowies.com or download the app. You start the order now. It's online carryout only. Limited time offer. It's Hungry Howies.
David, ticket text. We will get some draft a little later, but the Red Wings, for all the wrong reasons, are front and center. And I've offered a deal after what I deem to be strike three for Derek Lalone with ridiculous Disney movie commentary after a game. <clears throat> I'm ready for the team to miss the playoffs if it gets him fired. And frankly, I'll miss the playoffs if it gets him fired and Steve Eiserman goes out and has the bold offseason we need to have. How much longer are we going to tolerate the Andrew Comps and JT Comfers and, and, and the, the Petries? Guys, third oldest team in the league. You know, on one hand, you want to tell me the guy's a wizard in development and young talent. Okay, I know it can't happen overnight. I know that. But it's got to be better five years in than only two of your picks playing. And you don't have a player who ranks in the top 50 in scoring in the NHL. Top 50. It's not good enough. No. We don't have any defenseman that anyone cares about outside of Mr. Mo Sider. And the goaltending, if your plan is for me to wait another two years for Trey Augustine to leave East Lansing or for Kosa to come to the league, that can't be a plan either. So, yeah, I'm ready for them. to. I am full Latte Larry. But my thing is, if you do the firing, you also had to bring in some players. You, 100%. Because, because here's what I, I <laughs> don't want to see. New coach. Got to give this guy three years. Let me ask a question. Now, I know Eric Carlson's contract is egregious with a cap hit of like $11 million. I understand. The point I'm making is Eric Carlson, despite all the feet injuries over the years, the Penguins went out and made a bold move, and he's still a high-level player who I think has got 55 or 60 points this season, and he's like a plus 10. And I know plus minus isn't the end-all be-all. I'm making a point. Eric Carlson beat you last night with a splash play, mm -hmm. with a big-time shot from the slot. Right. My, my point is... We don't do stuff like that. And we're continually told, well, this player's too expensive or he doesn't want to make this commitment or this guy's got three years left on his deal. Okay, how much longer do, do we have to wait? Right, because here's what I don't want is what you're hearing with Scott Harris and the Tigers. Well, I don't know what happened in years previously, but I'm starting fresh and I'm going to start all over again and give me some time. I don't think the Detroit fans want to hear that. That's my thing is you, if you fire him, this next coach, when you're interviewing, hey, this ain't fair, but need to be in the playoffs next season. And Derek Lalone soft-selling, saying, hey, we don't even know if we'll be back here next year as a team. It's unthinkable mentally for this team to miss the playoffs for a, the first six years of the Iser plan. At that point, you call it a failure. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Kenny. Yeah, no, I would say the patience runs out with uh, with the Steve Iserman stuff and not making splash plays this offseason. This offseason has to be the one where you sign people that that matter, that make a difference. Not the not the Andrew Cops and the Comfers of the world. No, guys who play for playoff teams. Absolutely. Guys who log big minutes and big moments for playoff teams. And I, I know people are going to call in and say, go ahead and make fun of me. No. Well, it's easier said than done. You know what? You're right. And that's what Steve is very handsomely paid to figure the F out. It's also hard to be a brain surgeon. Does it mean you get to suck at brain surgery? No. <laughs> Well, sorry he died. Kind of a difficult operation. That's no. <laughs> Christ. I mean, trucking logistics are difficult. Stuff has to show up on time. I love yeah. how we let sports people off the hook. No. I mean, I think what should anger you is the fact that the, the Pistons have made the playoffs at Little Caesars and the Wings still haven't. That should anger him. Everything he says makes me hate him. David, ticket text, please. Oh, I was waiting for these texts to come through. Here we go. Okay. The wings are exactly where Iserman said they should be. Mike's the only one who changed his expectations when his team was overperforming by all metrics. Okay. Hold on, there's more. Oh, no, no. I want to respond to each okay. moron individually. Okay. When there was nine points between you and the cut line, do you mean to tell me that when the team goes out and wins five of their next 20 games, I'm supposed to just say, well, guess it leveled out. What? Continue. People who criticize Eisenman are the same people who did that with Harbaugh. Proven track record. It right. will work. Right. So, yeah, Harbaugh, who was winning 80% of his games. Harbaugh's critique was can't beat OSU and 500 against bad MSU. Harbaugh's lucky COVID happened or he would have been clipped. Because, yeah. So he hung around for 10 years, cheated his balls off, and won. And then like Pete Carroll at USC runs to the NFL before anything can happen to him. That's your comp? 
by all means, I'll play that game all day. Show me where Stevie's winning 80% of his games. Say, I don't think people realize if you subtract Ohio State and MSU from Michigan's record, it's pristine. They they beat everybody else in the Big Ten, non-conference. I knew that was coming. That's but I, I didn't want to say anything because, you know, I was saving that for my ballots report tomorrow. <laughs> and then here's this one. <laughs> Stevie is building a team that will eventually be good for a long stretch. You got to believe in him, you morons. Oh. All right. I'll accept that because I think that person's a moron, so they think I'm a moron. We'll call it a push. I, I just laugh at the notion of, quote, we're building it to be good for a long time. Problem. All sports are designed for that not to happen. Mm-hmm. So yep. let me ask you a question. Let's say you're, quote, good for seven straight years. And you make the playoffs seven straight years. And you have some good moments. But you never win a Stanley Cup. What was it all for? I, 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 don't, I don't know what to tell you. I'd rather be UConn who wins six titles in 25 years and is ass the other 19 years uh, than be just Michigan State, make tournament every year, and be a giant nothing burger. It's the quarter of a century since we won a title. What's it all for? It's like Michigan hockey. Like, oh, now we're one and nine in the Frozen Four. <laughs> like, what's the point? I'm going to need you to be a little more positive. They got a point last night. That matters. I don't know about you. It matters for you. Okay? This ain't New York. It matters here. Are you getting that office ready out over at Valley's? <laughs> At the Fox Theater, man. Keith, it's good about? to see uh, Rico Beard here. All right. They say that's my office. <laughs> Forget it. We're, we're over time. I was going to say something that would have got me in trouble. Hey, it's playoff time in the NBA. Not here, it's not. And in the NHL, probably not. Baseball in full swing. Okay, fair. FanDuel has got you covered no matter what you plan on betting. $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. $150, win or lose, you bet on everything. From home run props to futures to the masters, FanDuel.com slash ticket. That's FanDuel.com slash ticket. FanDuel, America's number one sports book, 21 and up, present Michigan. First online real money wager only, $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued, non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms, sportsbook.fandle.com. Gambling problem, 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help.
All right, we'll get to your phone calls momentarily, but we do this each week. Sometimes if Stoney's here, it's more Stony centric This, it's just sports-centric. It's this week in sports. <clears throat> By the numbers. Oh. All right, let's see if this... This can't be like a couple weeks ago. Hey, guys, the number two. <laughs> what? <laughs> One half. All right, what do you got? <laughs> All right, so just some stats I saw from this week happening in sports. Let's play the game. You ready? Yes. You got to tell me what number. What the hell am I talking about when I give you this number? Aware. There we go. Seven figures per hour. Seven figures per hour. Monty Williams contract. No, no that's seven <laughs> figures per win. Seven, Two hours a win. Seven figures per hour. Do we get a? Are right, we need a hint? So we're talking about obviously we're talking about dollars. One million something is generating one million dollars an hour this week in sports. The Masters. The, don't don't they end up making like three hundred million dollars for one weekend? Would it be the master? Would it be Augusta National Golf Club or whatever? I'm you are correct. No. Augusta oh, rakes God. in one million dollars an hour in merchandise sales during Masters Week. Oh, but the pimento sandwiches are cheap, <laughs> right? Because you're paying two fifty for a quarter zip. Sorry. It's just always one of these funny things. They want to act like good guys because some nasty egg sandwich is a buck. No, you're not helping anybody. Right. The people had to kill their own children to get tickets, and then they're blowing two hundred dollars for a T-shirt. Next, this sports player hasn't done something in twenty years. <laughs> this sports player, you know, we call those athletes. Well, I got to be vague to start off. Okay. Sports player hasn't done this in twenty years. NBA player. Current. So I guess like a LeBron hasn't missed the playoffs in 20 years? And more on a personal level than professional level. Been faithful to their wife. More appearance. <laughs> that's, that's just slanderous. Appearance level. <laughs> more on the appearance level. I don't know. You could think that if you were to just look at this person. Wait, I got it. It just it came to me. Robin Lopez hasn't been to a barber in 20 years. That's correct. That, I, I read the news story this morning. Serious? Yeah. 20 years. Yeah. So Brooke Lopez's brother, who looks like, uh, not SpongeBob, what's the other one? Um Sideshow Bob. Sideshow Bob. Thank you. Oh my. Yes, he hasn't he hasn't had a haircut in 20 years. <laughs> it's not insane. He's got like, serious dreads going down. Oddly enough, neither is Beanie. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, he hasn't either. His yeah, he, hair's pretty yeah. long. Just it's, saying, it's the Encino man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue. Rico's uncomfortable. Okay, here's not. That was just a good pull. Like I, I was like LeBron James. Like who's been in the league that long? Go ahead. Three weeks. Three weeks. Of the, what? The time length of the NCAA tournament. Till you see this player again. Oh. Caitlin Clark in the WNBA with the Indiana Fever. No. Three Damn, weeks, I thought the draft. That's got to be close, though. I thought the yeah. season started right away. It's the in draft. May sometime. The draft, and then they go right. to training camp. My pretty bad. Much. Three weeks till you see this player again. Out for three weeks. Oh, Giannis. Trey Young. What are oh. we just throwing random NBA players? No, no, I'm saying, yo, no, Giannis. Giannis got Giannis got injured, so I'm saying Giannis. Anybody and else get injured? <laughs> I thought maybe he just didn't realize the last name and was like, who? Alphabet soup? Right. Uh go <laughs> ahead. Hawks 
Jalen Johnson out at least three weeks with oh, ankle come sprain. On. I was right. I was right. Right team, wrong player. Jalen Johnson. <sighs> that that that's just not a big enough name. I already gave you the Brooke Lopez deal here. All right, next. One of five at six figures. One of five at six figures. One of five households were watching the women's college championship. Not at six figures. Yeah, I I don't know that part. I don't know. (laughs) Been talking about it a lot on the air this week. Not just this show, other shows. Media's talking about it a lot. Can collects. Something that... (laughs) Oh, that generates way more. than Solar eclipse related? No. OJ? Draft related. One in five. Six figures. Five spots. Five locations of something that costs six figures. Uh, Kenny, do you have a Detroit sign? Clue on anything. I got I got nothing. I'm Rico? gonna need a hint a little bit of something here. Rico is correct. Detroit signs. The one is one of five billboard style welcoming signs. The first one produced for four hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. Absolutely, and I told you all there were going to be multiple signs. How did I not get this? Wait, they're spending more money on that crap. Yeah, yes. more signs. Pick the garbage up, DJ. Hey, well, where is caller DJ? Pick the garbage up. We're gonna oh. put. We're, we're gonna put one. That's his business. Yes. Oh, he runs a cleanup crew. He's, clean up the roads. He's powerful and attractive man. Gonna... DJ, DJ, clean the roads, or you're not calling this show anymore. Oh, <laughs> gonna put one of those signs in downtown Detroit. So. What? Clean up the roads? No, no, Detroit. It's part of my new marketing campaign with my new job. I have plenty of room for signage in District Detroit. <laughs> Ain't nothing there. Shh! Don't tell anybody. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Here's another one. Next. 177 miles per hour. 177 miles per hour. It's fast. It, no, really. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> Is that like the exit velo of a golf ball? I don't know. I don't golf. David? I don't know. Are they racing? Is the NASCAR going on? I don't know. I None of us are hillbillies. Of course we don't oh. know. Well, I saw Beanie, so maybe I was thinking. Wow. No, no. <laughs> you can't. No. You cannot put that on Beanie because he has long hair and a beard that he likes NASCAR. <laughs> you can't do that. Oh, well, you must love Willie Nelson. <laughs> right. I mean, uh, anything else, David? <laughs> Jesus. Come on. Give us, give us, give us a hint. Uh, you, you, you're right there. You're right there with what you yeah guess. Golf ball. Yes. That's how how fast the golf ball comes off a at driver. His, at his age, yesterday, Tiger Woods hit a ball that was 177 miles per hour at 303 yard carry. Holy mercy! I know this guy's not killing me. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. Overall, I think the only objectionable one was the Jalen Johnson one. I never would have got that. No. Because I don't care about Jalen Johnson. All right. <laughs> That is sports by the numbers.
Tigers set to start a four-game home set with the Twins tonight, but rain in the forecast. No word from MLB as of yet, so 640 first pitch still on. Hear it here on 97.1 The Ticket tonight. Some changes to the lineup. Riley Green now leading off. Mark Canna second. Torque third. Kerry Carpenter cleaning up tonight. Colt Keith fifth. Gio Urshela sixth. The penultimate game of the worst season in Pistons history is tonight at Dallas. Hear it on WWJ. Coverage starts at 8.05. In college hoops, UConn big Donovan Klingon has declared for the NBA draft. And maybe a corresponding move, ex-Michigan big Terrace Reed visiting Connecticut this weekend. And taking a look at the Masters leaderboard right now, Bryson DeChambeau all alone on top at 7-under. Tiger Woods, 1-over. At the Corwell Health Update Desk, I'm Beanie Howell. For more, go to 971 the ticket or odyssey.com. All right, 4 o'clock, you missed anything, odyssey.com, rewind. Hockey elite, I'm coming to you very quickly, I promise. Uh, Red Wings have been the centerpiece. Disgraceful, another loss, and then even worse, Lalone's comments. But can I just for a moment, I want to mix something in. Donovan Klingon declaring for the NBA draft. There's there's now a movement of, who could he be the number one pick? All right, A, this is not ripping Donovan Klingon. A very good player. You know, you don't average 20 and 11 by accident. He's certainly a better basketball player than Edie. Uh, but the point is, if I represent Klingon, I'm telling him to go pro. This is the worst NBA draft in a quarter of a century. The last draft that looked this god-awful was the Keon Dueling draft, 2000. So, naturally... Think he stumble into a top-ten pick. Um, try number one overall. So, ready? Klingon, we're going to play a game, Klingon or... And you have a right to change your opinion, and I know you'll talk to your international people, but think about this now. This is the year the Pistons have the number one pick. WTF do you do? Ready? Klingon or Nikola Topic, point guard. Can't do that. You don't need that. Okay. Donovan Klingon or Rob Dillingham, who's tiny, might weigh 170 pounds. Kentucky, point guard. Okay. Don't need another point guard. All right. Donovan Klingon or Alexandre Saar, kid out of France who's 7'1", 220. No, because when you're a biggest like, – I, I, when I played with uh, Wimby, that's your biggest claim to fame. And he's a no. center. Can't put him there with Duran. No. Okay. Uh, Klingon or Reed Shepard? Klingon. Okay. Klingon or – Castle, the other kid from UConn, combo guard. Can't take him. You don't need one. Okay, so now we've arrived back at this. You also can't take Klingon. 7 2 260. The Pistons are gold plated aft. There's no one to take. Or, or the one kid you could take, maybe who fits. Naturally, the kid's barely 19 years old. He's. Zachary Rissacher, Rissacher, whatever. He's French. It'll take three years. There's your number one pick. All the losing, all the heartache. So you draft him and ship him down to the G League. What are you going to do? Play him 12 minutes a night, and and he'll be your Danny Avita. He'll he'll be your... He's... I just... It's so... Rico, I've never in my life been here with a team like this. That there is no out. The wings have an out. The, what about what about a guy like Dalton Connect? What about you go to hell? I'm just saying, if you got to if you got to pick if I, somebody, if I have the fifth overall pick, I'll start to consider it. If you're selling me that as the number one overall pick, uh, we're not friends anymore. I'm just saying that at this point, you have no option at number one, so you might as well get somebody who can help you next year. We have no option anywhere. We're screwed. Thank you for that. All right, David, 
Let's get to the people. I can reset everything, but I want to play Derek Lalone's comment. Now, it's a blessing and a curse because, well, these are piling up. Play the comment from last night after another loss, a loss that took their play with a win. They would have had a 50 50 shot of getting in with a overtime loss. It dropped to 15 percent. Oh, but wait, Johnny Blue Skies is here to save the day. Here's Lalone to after the game. What? What? It's not over, according to him. Okay, same guy who said, well, nobody expected much from us. Nobody predicted us to be here when they were, you know, in the middle of a seven-game losing streak. Then the other night he comes out with the, hey, we may not even be in this position next year. You know, New Jersey could have 100 points. Mm -hmm. The East is tough. Now this? You know, at what point do you just say, you know what? I'm angry. Not even saying, you know what? Here's the thing. This is disappointing. We're trying to make the playoffs, and we can't give up six goals in one night. There you go. That's kind of what you think a real NHL coach would say. Mm-hmm. So that's where we're at with the Wings. I'd like to get with the yeah. people. Because, yeah, but, hey, you got you got a point, yeah, but we gave up six goals. So we shouldn't have to come back if we really want to make the playoffs. We should be winning these games. Let's go to Rich, 97-1. What's up, Rich? Hey, how you guys doing? Good, hey. Rich. How are you? Well, first off, you guys are on fire today. I really appreciate it. Love what you're saying. I agree 100%. Newsy annoys the heck out of me. These comments, they disgust me, to be honest with you. Um, His system, he's had the same system for two years. It's basically just dumping up the boards. You know, he was brought in as a defensive coach. If you look back the last year, we were getting smoked defensively. And I don't put it all on the goaltending. I really don't. Uh, I believe our defensive system, which he was brought in for, and, and the players like Cop, Comfort, those type of guys were supposed to be defensive forwards. You know, they're not working. So I agree 100%. I also believe that Eisman does need to not only fire him, but he also needs to make a big move. We need a top line center and get rid of some of these draft picks or some of these prospects. That's, that's I got to say. Rich, that's where I'm at because here's look, only two of his players are playing. Who's in the pipeline that I am just jonesing to not only play, but is going to play the 16, 17, 18, 20 minutes of ice time a night? Is it Casper? Is it Bergeron? You know, like, okay, let's say we add a couple of guys. Are we going to be better? Are are you meaning to tell me, not you personally, I'm saying, do you mean to tell me I'm supposed to accept now year six growing pains for young players and we take a step back? That's the problem I have in all of this. When you just sell hope and sell the future, you get very lost. There has to be actual progress. This is one of the most, Rico, I don't know another playoff chase that's ever looked like this, but it would be the most unsatisfying we made it, mm-hmm. maybe in history. I don't think they're going to make it. They only have a 15% chance of doing it. Kenny, hold on, he's chomp, he's salivating. It's There's rule coming down <laughs> his face. It's why they need to add this offseason. It, it looks a lot like the Tigers where they have all these young players that you want to, that they should have, cushion their growth so that they're allowed to grow and develop. Like if you bring up Casper, for example, he'd be allowed to grow if you actually signed a couple of big name free agents. He's not the only source of offense, the same way that Green or Torque aren't the only source of offense if you signed a major league bat. This is what the Red Wings need to do in that same philosophy, is this offseason needs to be a big one so that Casper and, and, and the likes can get called up without it just being on them. You know, I do I do wonder, is like, Kenny, what if this summer isn't that? And I'm furious, and all of Detroit should be furious because we got this close to a play. Whether we make it or not this year is irrelevant. This offseason needs to be one that we remember and po- and can point to and say that's that was the turning point. That's when this team became not just you know, a back-into-the-first-round team, but a team that can make it to the second and third. You know what kills me? 
Like anything you look up about Marco Casper, and certainly I don't take any of it as gospel, it's just funny, it all says the same thing. Major questions about how much he will produce offensively in the league. And you're like, kill me. <laughs> like, what, what? What? So hold on. So people want to blurt out all these great players we have. And the first thing, I mean, it's like, it's like if Max Clark's power never develops and he's just going to be a 15 home run hitter, your value, it, your wings are largely clipped in my world. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go to Don, 97 1. Don, what's going on, buddy? Oh, so much to unpack here. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, by the way, uh, the one in six uh, and, and like five figures or, or whatever it was. Mike, is that your tax bill? Um, I think that should have been your tax bill on, on okay. Thank you. coming up. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I think there's so much to unpack here with the wings. I think Lalonde is, is frustrated. Uh, obviously, he's hand clipped by Iserman that he didn't make any moves, right? He did sort of like the, uh, sort of like the Tigers. They made no moves. And then it all bubbles up to one person, right? It, right. It, it bubbles up to the ownership. And and I think we're not taking a hard enough look at ownership and Chris Illich. Uh, and he's frugal. Um, I, I'm going to put it mildly. He's not like his father. And, um, you know, he's entitled. And he did not come from well. I mean, like, we can look at the Pistons and, you know, at least, you know, uh, Goris made his self-made. Illich is not. I mean, his family is, which is great. But you know what? I mean, he, they, they, they don't have it. They don't have the players. They don't have the infrastructure. And I think Lalonde is, like, looking at it like, and he's right. Like, we might not be here next year. You know why? Because Kane's not going to be here next year. He's a great example. Like, no one's going to – who's going to want to come here? Kane's going to leave. No one's going to want to come here because it's not a winning organization. They're not built for success. It's like the Tigers, not built for success. Long run. And it all has to do with ownership. See, this is the tough part for me because you're told on one hand, Don, he's building it for success. Mm -hmm. And then on the other, you look at it and you go, they're the third oldest team. There's not a lot of young guys playing. They don't have anybody in the top 50 in the league in scoring. The defensive core is mediocre at best, I'd say subpar. And you have no goaltender. Oh, just yeah, wait a couple but, years. Kosa or Augustine will be but here. That, but that's why as simplistic as it sounds, Mike and Don... That's why Lalonde is saying, hey, we're not out of it. Because if they can just stumble and trip and fall their way into the final spot of the playoffs, it can be, see, we made progress. Now let's go on and let's see what we'll do next year. But this year, yeah, we made yeah. it. Yeah, but you know what? I mean, Lalonde is just, you know, he, he he's he's – He's protecting himself, but he knows deep down, like, no one's doing anything to help him. The team isn't doing anything to help him. They don't have that. They are old. None of Stevie Y's, you know, the vaunted Stevie Y plan is not working. So, and, and ownership isn't working. So we all come down on Goris. Let's come down and, you know, yeah. the Tigers and, and the Red Wings are in the same muddled area. So let's, we need to make a change. Yeah, you know, the, Don, the only thing I would say, the Goris thing, I mean, he's had 15 years of driving the Pistons to middle earth. Steve's had five. Um, look, we're critical of Heiserman. I mean, pressure's a privilege. Like, if you're not being talked about, you're Troy Weaver. We all want the same thing. I think the thing that's really disturbing is, look, man, like, Kenny, I, I was just pulling this up because I was really interested to kind of go down the rabbit hole. And I don't claim to know these players. I think if you know a lot of hockey prospects, you're the 0.01%. But, like, Casper's your best forward prospect. And he's barely inside the top 40 on the latest athletic piece about the top 100 drafted NHL prospects. Kenny, if 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 he struggles to, to be a big-time scorer, what else is in the pipeline? Yeah, he's uh, if he turns out to be a failure, that's a major flop by Steve Eisman. Okay, so the other guys, like, we know Evanson, and he'll – be here hopefully full time next year. I don't think this Palika guy will because he's even younger than Casper. Palika, yeah. Whatever. The point is, Kenny, where's the rest? And that's kind of where it becomes a Steve Eiserman problem, right? That's where he becomes not exactly, you know, that's why that's why he's not infallible is because his strength was supposed to be drafting as well. I mean, we all talk about Mo Sider being Drafted way earlier than anybody thought he should have been, and he's turning out to be a nice player. That was awesome. We need more. We need more than just Cider. We need more than just Raymond. 
Yeah, I'll just wait for the Daniel scenario to begin. 248-539-9797. More of your phone calls next, 97.1. Specs at LTU is waiting for you to, uh, if you want that career in radio, TV, graphic design, Specs at LTU can help you achieve that goal. The beauty of it, you don't have to wait until the fall because classes are starting year-round. So you can start working on your goal today or as soon as the next class starts. It's very simple. You got to be curious. You got to go visit the website, ltu.edu slash specs, to learn more about the broadcast, media arts, digital media arts, and graphics communications program taught through specs at LTU right here in Southfield on the campus of Lawrence Tech. You're going to be taught by people who work in the industry. What does that mean? We're not going to waste your time. You're going to learn everything that it takes from day one to make it in the industry. And I'm telling you, with the hands-on approach and expert faculty, you're going to learn the practical skills you need to succeed in today's media industry. So what are you waiting for? Be curious. Go visit the website, ltu.edu slash specs to learn more. Remember, classes start year-round, not just in the fall. So once you're on the website, find out when that next class is going to start and sign up. Then make magic by enrolling in specs at LTU certificate program today. Crazy weather can cause a lot of issues to your power. If you need service on that furnace or AC, you need it now. Mastercraft Heating, Cooling, Plumbing, and Electrical, they have got you covered 24-7. Locally owned for over 40 years, they're going to back their work with a five-year warranty. Mastercraft, your one-stop shop for heating, AC, plumbing, electrical, you name it, they got it. Plenty of generators in stock, too. If Mastercraft can't get to you same day, they take 25% off that next day visit. Just go to mastercraftheating.com.
Get to a little football today later in the hour. Got to get to who said it, too. But the Red Wing stuff has been hot. We'll roll with it. People want to talk about it. Uh, let's just go straight to the people. You guys good with that? We'll catch up on Ticket Text let's later. Let's go. All right. Let's go to Tom. He's been patient. Hold on. I got to make sure I hit the right button. I've been off my game today. Tommy, there we are. Welcome. What's going on, pal? Hello there. Hello. What's up? Good deal. Good deal. Uh, I listen to you guys most of the time, uh, and I enjoy everything you say, but I wanted to put my perspective on one thing. Sure. When they had Lalonde's statement about, well, we might not be there next year, it seemed to me that that clip was introed by another expert that had just happened to say that, you know, it usually takes 92 to 93, 95 points to get into the playoffs, and this year we have a regular – irregular low threshold and that because the wings are trying to get a point at the time trying to get up to 85 or 6 i don't even know what the exact number is but it's extremely low and it's very unusual and then i think lalan was referring to the fact that that unusual situation probably won't happen next year and he was not referring to the quality of his team, the quality of his players, the quality of the effort. I just happen to think he was referring to that weird situation, that's all. But I do think that they are, uh, they, somebody got to light a fire under them or something. Yeah, it's and, and look, you know, Tom, if we dis, let me let me put it to you this way. If we look at the aggregate of the big three Lalone statements we have in the last month, it's the overall picture he's painting where he continues to talk, like, for instance, when they were in the midst of the, the seven-game losing streak, well, you know, if you told me at the beginning of the year we'd, we'd be X amount out. It's like, no, you were nine points up on the cut line, and you are in a free fall. I don't want to hear that right now. Or last night saying, well, you know, I don't address the team, but I was so proud. Proud of what? Giving up half a dozen goals and losing again? And having your playoff odds reduced to 15%? Tom, there's just an element of pie in the sky with this guy, no? Yeah, and I kind of think he understands that he's walking up the stairs to the guillotine. But um, <laughs> uh, everybody else heard that one comment, and they're all getting ready to sharpen their pitchforks and light their torches, run the guy out of town. But that's all I got. You guys keep it up, and I uh, appreciate you taking of my Of course. Time. No, and Tom, that's fine. And believe me, if, if one of the comments doesn't send you to the moon, I'm not mad. I'm angry that it's the continual message that makes me question, is this really the guy we want here? Because the message is accurate if you're coaching an incredibly young team. You want to show compassion and some forgiveness. You don't want to just beat these guys down. This is the third oldest team in the league. But see, I think even if you have a young team and you're this close to the playoffs and you're in the hunt and you lose a game like that where you give up six goals, yeah, somebody coming in saying, well, coach, you know, you got a point. I don't care. We should have got two. We should have won this game. We never should have given up six goals. We should have played better. It's what you want to hear. You don't want to hear all is well. Don't worry about it. We'll get another chance on Saturday. And, and you know, we're still alive. That to me tells me, it sounds as if you don't even believe in this team. <laughs> We're here, and we'll just ride this thing until the wheels come off. And once they come off, hey, you know what? It was fun, right? Let's go to Matthew 97.1. Matt, what's going on, buddy? Hey, I just wanted to talk about how, you know, I don't know if Lone thinks he's coaching the Arizona Coyotes or some other poverty team, but I don't want him here. I don't want to hear him talking about all these expectations at the beginning of the year and, oh, it's okay. We're going to be like one point out of the playoffs or, oh, we made it this far because, no, because every time that I go to Little Sears Arena with my season tickets and I see all this, we're the best franchise in the United States sports history. We have 11 Stanley Cups. We're hockey town. We're hockey town. We're hockey town. Hockey, if you call yourself hockey town, you're not okay with just missing the playoffs or being close when you haven't made it in almost a decade. Right. It's time to make the playoffs. It's time to start training for some big-time stars. It's time to get a real goalie because Alex Lyon proved that he's been a backup his entire career last night when he couldn't stop a beach ball. And, you know, it's just time to start winning some meaningful games and make the playoffs. It's ridiculous. I'm with you. See, but but see, Matthew, you have a pride in this, and you're invested in this. See, I don't think that exists at the ownership level. I don't think there's some deep pride. I don't, I don't think he's – I'm sorry if I just don't imagine Chris leaping out of his Barker lounger last night when Raymond scored. I, 
I think that it will always come back to that. And maybe it's because I grew up in the late 80s and early 90s with George Steinbrenner doing Steinbrenner things. Right. No, you don't have to be that kind of owner. The Billy Martin. Style. Right. There's just, but there does have to be a level of care. And I'm sorry, until I see it, I don't have to believe it exists. And it's it's a bummer. But Steve and Scott Harris seemingly are just allowed to have as much time as they want. And yeah. it's it, the real shame. Steve at least has the excuse, I'm, it's a harder sport to me to rebuild. It's also a harder conference. The Tigers have zero excuse because the AL Central is the worst division God has ever created. It is so awful. But as you said, for Steve, pretty much everybody makes the playoffs. So All right. Not. You can give yourself the bell. Okay. It's great work by you. Nothing to add. Fred, 97-1. Freddie, what's up, bud? Hey, guys. How y'all doing? Good. So, just how quickly are we going to be able to uh, – are we going to be able to sit here and say that, you know, oh, yeah, you know, Eiserman's doing whatever. I mean, I, I'm, I'm at the point where I don't want to say I'm turning on him, but – Joe Dumars was a legend with the Pistons. He was help partially responsible for them winning a championship. And then he eventually, uh, the way that his tenure ended, uh, ran people out of are town. Kind of, Got yeah, run out. At, at, at what point? And I, I'm not I'm not a Detroit native. Uh, I didn't grow up here. But and I but I completely understand Steve's, you know, legacy. But at what point are we going to be able to separate the legacy of Steve Eiserman, the player and the captain, the um, captain? According from to, according to Rico, never. To some, some will never because, be able to separate it. Because I mean, to to me, it's it's kind of a the, the way I the, at least the way I'm viewing it is that you know you inherited a terrible coach, you hired a slightly better coach, an Uncle Fester, and. I mean, but but saying that, you know, Lalonde is better than Blasio is like saying Brady Hoke is better than Rich Rodriguez. At the end of the day, it's still kind of a moot point because you right. still suck. Well, here's the other problem. So, Fred, think <laughs> about this. All right, you made a minor upgrade in, in coaching. Are you really that much more talented this year than you were last year? Remember we were sold how the difference was going to be that you were going to, here, 2004 hockey term, roll four lines, how you had depth how you would get a community effort that would get you the scoring you needed in the absence of stars. Where's that? Like you're not a talented team. I mean, as for the cops and the comfers and everyone wanting to, you know, to chase them out of town to me, I mean, comfort was key in the avalanche winning a a championship the year, right before we got cop, we were trying to get him at the deadline. Instead, he was traded from Winnipeg to New York. And the thing is, is he was putting up numbers he has never put up before during that little time in New York. And we were like, oh, well, if he comes and hangs out with his best buddy, Larks, you know, he'll be able to uh, hasn't worked. maybe get that magic again. It hasn't worked. Now, keep in mind, defensively speaking, I have no gripes because they are willing to get their hands dirty at times, not in terms of fighting, but in terms of just the grinding it out on the defense. But you can't win a championship with four grind lines. I'm sorry, you still got to have that firepower, and Alex Dabrinkit alone, Not as enough. we've seen, inconsistent. No, forget uh, I inconsistent. Like I, I inconsistent have, suggests have, he's been alive the last 20 games. I mean, Fred, and listen, mm-hmm. Fred, I'm not trying to cut you off. I'm, David is flipping me off. We're way over time. It, it's The moves haven't worked. Like, it's okay to say it. It hasn't worked. Playoff time in the NBA. Not in Detroit, it's not. Uh, it's also playoffs in the NHL. All right, I'll go on to the next talking point. How about it's the Masters? Everyone participates in that. $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. It's $150, win or lose. FanDuel.com slash ticket. That's FanDuel.com slash ticket. Everything from home run props. You can do top 10 parlays in the Masters. All of it. It's FanDuel, America's number one sports book. 21 and up. Present Michigan. First online real money wager only, $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued, non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See term, sportsbook.fanduel.com. You got a gambling problem? Call 1 800 270 7117.
All right, David, catch me up with some ticket texts. We'll knock down the calls, and we'll get a little football today. I also, we could turn our attention, because we've spent several hours now on the wings. J.J. McMystery. I got a question for Rico about J.J. McCarthy. News came out today, and I, I want to know if I've been lied to. We'll talk about it. David, ticket text. What do you got? Uh, we were talking about signing free agents and what the summer should should be like, and they have a message for you, Kenny. They can't afford it, Kenny. Are you aware of the salary cap? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just disagree with you entirely. The salary cap is going up, and they have plenty of space. I don't want to hear about it. Plus, uh, guys like Cop and Perron are coming off the books, so miss me with that. When, when, when are people in Detroit just going to drop the we can't afford it thing? Don't the Wings have some of the most cap space in the league? Didn't they just have $10 million at the deadline that no one else had? I, I just... Okay, I'll let it go. That statement from Lalonde is enough to be fired alone, regardless of their current record or, or potential. He should be canned. That is from Al in Dearborn. Uh, Jason in Heartland says, last night was the worst thing that could have happened. Didn't win and have a good chance. Didn't lose to finally bury this season and Lalonde. Didn't. Huso get injured months ago. So why wasn't a goalie acquired at the deadline? Trust in Lyon uh, to play every on. night killed this team's playoff chance. I got to step in here now because acquiring a goalie is the equivalent of acquiring starting pitching at the MLB deadline. It's very expensive. Also, who was the goalie I was supposed to, you know, right. open the vault for to go and get? Could Everybody you, yeah, wanted could. one. You know what didn't happen? No goalie moved. Yeah. I'll defend them there, yeah, Rico. It could, yeah, it could be risky if you get one because now, yeah, yeah. Like How said, about the like idea starting... that you went into the season with three mediocre options? You know what, Mike? You've earned it. Oops. <laughs> Iserman is the biggest problem. Being stubborn at the deadline and not firing the coach yet. That is from Glenn. Look, this summer will be the one. I mean, otherwise, I don't know what we're doing here. Uh, no, I, I I don't believe, you know, Kenny brought up Sam Reinhardt. Like, I don't believe they're going to be able to sign a 28-year-old guy in today's marketplace because you know what Reinhardt's going to get? A 10-year deal. He's going to get a 10-year deal for $10 million a year. It's going to be a $100 million deal. And I am yet to see both Chris or Steve willing to do such a thing. Now, for those of you going, well, I don't want to do it. That's a terrible idea. Then fine. Then just continue to not have a top 50 player. Continue to just not have anybody who can tally more than 60 points in a season. I don't know what to say. But you got seven people with uh, more than 10 goals. Okay. There's the door. <laughs> uh, let's go to Drew, 97-1. Drew, what's going on, buddy? All right. Are you guys ready? Oh, yeah. Sure. All right. Let's go. All right. So, first issue is any type of coach in a professional sports setting, I don't care who he is, what city you're in, where you're at, the comments that Derek Golan makes should be enough grounds for firing anyway. You don't want a limp, all right. You don't want a limp guy mm. running your team. Okay, I would almost, I almost yeah, up we there. know, we know. You clean it. Up. <laughs> all right, so, okay. all right. Sec- secondly, this team that Iserman gave to Lalonde, I don't, I don't view Iserman as a micromanager type of guy. I think he's the kind of guy who, who hands his coach a team like he did with Tam- with Coop in Tampa. I think he has given – if you go through that roster, you look at the playoff experience on this roster right now, you have Patrick Kane with three Stanley Cups. You got um, – Comfer. Comfer. You got Comfer. You got Perron. You got Fabry. Okay, so we got guys who have won Stanley Cups. And then you go through and you look at Sherratt, Hop. Huh? And among the other guys that I just mentioned with playoff experience, this is a roster that is more than capable of making the playoffs. And it's absolutely a failure if we don't make the playoffs, regardless of whether it's one point, like the guys at the other station like to talk about, Oh, we're only one point out. Oh, what's the difference of one point? Oh, listen, this is Detroit. This isn't, this isn't Dallas. This isn't Florida. This isn't Nashville. This is Detroit. This is Detroit Red Wings. This is hockey town. If we want to call ourselves that, then we expect better. Yeah. I agree and then, so, so let's go through the 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 up and comers. Okay, Marco Casper is going to be a solid middle six guy. That's his ceiling. That's that's it. He's not he's not going to be any more than that. Now we have a kid over in Russia right now. Is Dmitry Bichelnikov, who potentially could be fingers crossed a shadow of Nikita Kucherov potentially. Um, 
So there is some things in the pipeline that are promising. I think Steve has had his back up against the wall with some of the contracts that he had. So Steve gets a pass for me. I'm not going to get on him too hard. I'm not a Steve bot by any means. No, don't, Drew, My Drew, biggest Drew, issue I'm, is, not, I'm not mad if yeah. you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. All I want to do is take Steve down off the cross and let's just treat him. He puts his pants on the same way we do. And we can just say that obviously, barring this miracle in the last couple games, if they miss the playoffs with one of the grandest collapses in Red Wing history, it's okay to say this isn't going the way it was supposed to go. And you move on from there. I also, this is terrible. I've just read some terrible, terrible news that will impact Kenny Cott. Have you seen Tennessee legislatures have passed a bill banning marriage between first cousins? What are we doing? <laughs> it's a good thing Kenny's left. That's just right you don't up. want to know why he had to leave. I'm, oh. I'm not going to acknowledge anything that just happened. <laughs> the proposal sailed through and was uh, ratified. Why? Why do we even need to discuss this? I just not Ken. I'm talking about your not marrying your first. Like what? What? And he's a hillbilly. I, you know. I no, no, I'm just saying, like, but we really need a law for this? Uh, isn't that something? That's what I mean. Like, In 2024. <laughs> it's, we needed a law to state you can't do this. Mm -hmm. Good old Rocky Top. All right. This is America. Way to All catch right. up to the 21st century, Tennessee. Thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> and Kenny left for a different reason. Got it. Yeah, okay. Unbelievable. All right. David, any other ticket texts of note? Or are we good? We're good. You sure? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> what? You okay? No. It, why, why do we need this to be a law? <laughs> they have to make sure that you know you can't do this. There's just certain things in life you should just no. No. Just hard no. No. Apparently, this wasn't one. All right. Listen, we got certain people in this building who don't view showers as a mandatory thing. So, yeah. I mean, you have to give people guardrails. Mike, please, just sell All them right. something. <laughs> Moran Buick GMC. I'm sure Brian's going to be thrilled with that segue. Listen, Moran Buick GMC, where you always get the best price, period. Right now, Lisa 24, Sierra 1500 elevation, starting at 329 a month. Or a 24 Encore GX preferred 189 a month. Both are 24 month leases, 1999 down. You get 0.9% APR for 36 months. Schedule a certified service appointment today. You will get the free loaner vehicle and get on with your day. Immediate appointments are available. Scheduling's fast and easy. MoranExpress.com. So it's Moran Buick GMC. We are professional grade.
Lost in the fervor over Jared Goff accusing the Detroit media of being too negative were other comments he made on that podcast, like his reflecting on being traded from the Rams to the Lions. Tiger set to open a four-game homestand against Minnesota tonight with Tarek Skubal on the mound for a 641st pitch. Forecast, though, showing a better than 50% chance of rain through 8 o'clock. The game is still on, at least for now. Hear it here on the ticket tonight. The worst season in Pistons history is mercifully almost over. Detroit takes the court for the next to last time tonight at Dallas. Hear it on WWJ News Radio 950, coverage at 8.05. Bryson DeChambeau all alone atop the Masters leaderboard right now at 7-under. Max Oma and Scotty Scheffler right behind him at 6-under. Tiger Woods is 1-over. The Corwell Health Update Desk, I'm Beanie Howell. For more, go to 97.1 The Ticket or odyssey.com. All right, 5 o'clock, odyssey.com, rewind. You missed anything. We have been almost exclusively Red Wings, uh, and rightfully so, because, again, uh, last night, another loss, and Lalone's comments in the postgame were something. And I'll get to that in a minute. I just wanted to bring this up. How many people will be at that Tiger game tonight? This weather outside is horrendous. And Friday night or otherwise. Now, they're saying they're going to play. Rico, you get 5,000 people at that ballpark tonight? Nope. 4,000. No. 3,000? I'm saying maybe about 1,200, not counting people who work at the park. Like, what would it take? David, what would it take for you to go sit with the kids at the ballpark tonight? Can't do it. Can't do it. You'd all end up sick? Yeah, I can't do it. I was about to say, it had to be a hell of a free giveaway. And chances are you'll pick it up and leave. <laughs> yeah, it's 401k day. They'll double your 401k <laughs> right. if you show up. I'm thinking it's less than two grand, and that's not including workers. It's tough. You man. could. I mean, this is one where if you want to sit anywhere you want to sit, go for it. Because yeah, yeah. And again, they say they're going to play. I, man, brutal weather tonight. Um, the other one is JJ McMystery. I wanted to bring this up. I don't want to just not do this, and we've done a ton of wings. Did you see McCarthy will not be at the draft? Yeah. They invite 13 people to be in that green room. He had an invitation to be in the green room. He just, I, don't, I think he just blew it off like, yeah, whatever. Does that mean we've been lied to? Explain. Okay. Last year, we got lied to. We were told that Will Levis was going to be selected, mm -hmm. and Will Levis... Uh, was there uh, and became famous because his girlfriend was there and everybody was more fascinated by her than him. And he was sad Will Levis. Mm -hmm. He was stuck there until the next day of the draft. But the buzz was cannon arm. You know, the offense didn't showcase what Will Levis could do. He didn't, <laughs> he didn't have protection. He didn't have anybody to throw to. So you're saying, will he become that next guy? Kind of like... It Aaron was the pre-draft kind of sitting there and sliding in the I draft don't know. room. I'm openly telling no, 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 you I, I don't know. I, right. I, I understand what you're saying. But if you have an idea that Minnesota's coming up to get you at five, why would you skip the draft? Not only that, you get to do it in pseudo hometown. Home away from home. Right. That you walk across that stage and every Wolverine fan, even though you're going to an, you know, a right. rival, they're chanting your name. Like, this is the moment. Like, finally, you know, a Wolverine top four pick. And you're just choosing not in Detroit. Like, it just seemed weird. That's it all. It did. I didn't really, I didn't think of it like that. Plus, you're backstopped. The, like, 
I said I know we have our board bet where I said he won't go higher than six. Part of that is I, w- I wanted him available for the Giants. He may go five. My point is the lowest he would go. Don't you believe if he fell to the Broncos, 12. Sean Payton would run to the podium. So why wouldn't you be at the draft? I was about to say, yeah, 12, well, in the Raiders, 13, right? So, yeah, I, I would say 13. Like, he's not getting past the Broncos or the Raiders. So you're going to be a first-round selection. You're going to hear your name called. You get to walk across stage in Detroit. Home away from home. Yeah. Just 35 asking. minutes from where you play your college football you may be right that maybe... I just wondered, has everything been a lie? It's easier just in case that happens. You're at home and you don't have to sit in the green room. Because I got to figure, like, for Will Levis, that night couldn't have ended fast enough. Like, every moment just seemed to slow down and waiting to hear your name. It's like the the the, the kid who's waiting to get picked up from school and you're the last one. And you look at every car that comes up like, is that those are the headlights? No, nope, those nope, are the headlights. Just kidding. Uh, but if you want to call in on it, go ahead. I just, you, I, no one knows the reason. We just know the decision. And I don't, please don't sell me the, well, Joe Thomas went fishing instead of watching the draft in 04. Guys, you're a quarterback. You're getting taken in the top five. You don't skip the draft. It just doesn't. Then again, I mean, I'm wondering, is it just, not just a JJ thing? But I mean, when you look at the, I'm, what, 13 people in the first round are going to be here? That's less than half of the people. Now, I figured J.J. would simply because it's in Detroit. And he's a quarterback. And, right, because the, the quarterbacks and the wide receivers are pretty much all you, showing up to this do draft. Do you realize J.J.'s been talked about more than Caleb Williams? You're right. And he's not going to be at the draft. It just strikes me as weird. So I thought back to last year where one of the most talked about volatile players was Will Levis. And we saw what happened on draft night when Will Levis did not get drafted. And you're like, wait, is this happening again? Because there are plenty of people who have concerns about J.J. McCarthy. Plenty. I have concerns. The difference is I try to live in reality where my concerns are outweighed by my desperation. If I were a Raider fan or a Bronco fan or a Viking fan or a Giants fan, you need a quarterback. But there's... You have a right to be concerned because the film does not live up to being taken in the top five because not a strong enough sample size. They didn't throw the ball. Right. So I just wondered, was there more to it? That he's so not going to get ushered off by the commissioner into a private suite so no one has to see you anymore? Can I give you something here that may lead to your possible theory here? Sure. So Pro Football Talk just sent this story out saying the league wanted to keep it to no more than 15 players. The goal, poor sirs, with the knowledge of the situation, was to ensure that no one lingers too long in the green room in Detroit. There it is. There's more, though. They say in the report that Rico mentioned is that he was sent an invitation, but according to the story, because he didn't respond, they're saying they rescinded the invitation. Remember, there's 13 players. Could they have rescinded it because... Uh Uh-oh, we're getting close to our 15, and we don't project you, which is what the story says. Didn't project Bo Nix or Penix to be top 15, so maybe they projected that J.J. wasn't a first-round selection. They got the – it came in the mail today. Welcome to day two. I still believe draft night. The Vikings are going to move up and go get him. But maybe we've all been seduced pre-draft. I don't know. It was just something or, I wanted to add to the mix today yeah. while it's been all Red Wings. But, but think about this, and we all fall for it, but it's nothing but lies that go on. It's, the closer you get to the draft, it's almost the things that aren't said that you should believe. But the things that you're like, Will Levis, oh my goodness, his arm strength, and people had him at the top of the draft. And then he kept sliding and sliding, and like, Okay, did, did, did Will Levis, you know, kill a small child? Like, what, what happened here? He may as well have when he said he put mayonnaise in his coffee. That's just, I mean, yeah. Now, can I say something that helps what you just said? Diana Rossini this morning tweeted out that she talked to a GM, and the GM over and over kept telling her, we have no idea. No one knows what they're doing two weeks out. So maybe I think, David, it's one of those where he's not a first round selection. Maybe you're posturing. You get if you can get somebody to take JJ, if you're the Arizona Cardinals, I, I would be the I would be his PR agent because I want people to come to me with a ridiculous draft. I mean, trade offer. 
I, I would. I would hype him up. And that's what I'm thinking. I think it may be posturing, but I, I, I just find it weird that you get a chance to walk across the stage. And no one likes attention like that kid. Let's just be real now. Wait, the you, look at me antics Mike, and the whole staged photography. Mike, he all, would do meditation before the draft. I, just please. You yes. know he would. I know That whole crew, they, they know where the camera's at. So let's just come on now. It's, right, but, and, and you're here. You Your name is called and about 80% of the people are just cheering you down there. You're one of their own. This to me is uh I was just yeah, we're, interesting. We're, no, it was like because when I saw it, I was like, well, why isn't JJ's name on this list? Because apparently he's gonna be a top five pick. Or, and then I thought, okay, well, maybe he wants to do something special with his family. But when I heard like he just blew it off and said, No, nah, I'm good. Okay. Cause I gotta figure, had Caleb Williams tried this, Rodge would have been like yeah, Caleb, let me show you the my top power. Three quarterbacks Get on the plane. You're going to be here. Yeah. May and Daniels and uh, Caleb are all there, correct? They're yeah. in the 13. Yeah. Who are the other names on the list? Do you have that in front of you? No, I don't have oh, it in front okay. of me. Give me a second. Bro, I know, like, the receivers. So, the top five there. receivers Neighbors are all going to be there. Yeah. Harrison Jr. is there. Yeah. Yes. Latham, uh, Latu, Mitchell. See, it's interesting. Is like Latu could go anywhere, he could go in the 20s. Uh, Dallas Turner and Darius Robinson. Okay. Hey, well, and Darius Robinson's hey, hey, Qu- from here. Yeah, Quinn yes. I. Mitchell, he's going to be there. Toledo. Yeah. All right. Neighbors, just, Rome, Darius, Brian Thomas. Yeah, Dallas Turner. It might be yeah. something. It might be absolutely nothing. I just thought it was interesting. Well, I also think it's interesting. Oh, I guess unless the Lions, there's a couple guys that could go to the Lions that are on here because they're not top picks. And I do wonder. Did Have the they league- been told? Have they been told? Well, the Lions have been linked with Darius Robinson. Darius Robinson, maybe Terion Arnold. Well, they have to move up to get him. Like, up. I mean, I mean Ter- Terion Arnold's supposed to go in the top 12. Yeah, but when it comes to the corners, it's, it's almost like who wants this last wild card spot in the NHL? It's like this guy, maybe. No, this guy, no, not this guy, this guy. So you got Mitchell, you got that, you got Darius Robinson. That's one that, you know, has been linked to the Lions. Maybe taking a corner. All right. Just like I said, could be absolutely nothing. Two weeks from today, you could wake up and JJ is a Viking at five. It just struck me as very odd. 248 539 9797. We'll get some phone calls in the mix. I want to play this piece of Lalone sound that we've talked about a bunch today. Um, All right, Rico, take him to church. Let's talk about the Chevy dealer in the area that's been leading the way. It's Hamilton Chevrolet in Warren at 14 Mile and Mound. Hey, rev up and drive with unbeatable deals at Hamilton. Andrew and the sales staff want to be your Chevy dealer, and they're going to get the time to hit the road in style. Hamilton is your go-to destination for top-notch vehicles and sleek savings, powerful cars ready to conquer the road, and Hamilton Chevy has them all, from the fuel-efficient compacts to the rugged SUVs. Trust me, even when the sun comes out, they have the convertibles. They got the wheels to match your lifestyle. And with Hamilton, you know you're getting excellence. It's not just about selling cars. It's about delivering an unmatched driving experience. They're more than just a dealership. It's a commitment to quality and customer satisfaction. And right now, take advantage of the April Rico deal, a new 2024 Chevy Equinox, $279 a month for 24 months. You walk in with $995 down, you drive away with 10,000 miles a year. The best deals are found at 14 Mile and Mile. Stop in to see my guys at Hamilton for details. More at HamiltonChevy.com. Chevrolet, together, let's drive.
In an instant, an auto accident can put you in the worst financial position of your life, period. You got to hire the right lawyer to make sure the insurance companies pay what they owe you. It's injury attorney David Femininio. Him and his team have made insurance companies pay for over 30 years. They can help you with your case right now. David is ready to speak to you personally. Call 855-65-CRASH or go to that website, getdavidgetpaid.com. All right, David, any ticket texts on the Mick mystery, and then we'll get to the Lalone sound and some of your phone calls. Someone's saying panic in Detroit sports teams here. How can we not have JJ at the draft when it's here? That's Mark from Howell. I t- Another person says can't meditate in the green room. That's why he can't be there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> good point. It could be possible, Mike and Rico, that we've been given misinformation on JJ. But JJ has always been a little different, so maybe not read into him not showing up. Okay, here. but here's the—I don't think it's misinformation because, like, I'm listening this morning coming back from the barbershop, and and Jansen's kind of saying the same thing. And if him and Doug are about as plugged in as anybody, and they're like, he, Jansen's like, you know, it's a little disappointing that he's not going to be here, which makes it sound like I don't think it's misinformation. And I mean. Look, we've made some assumptions. Guilty as charged. I just have assumed Minnesota's going to move up and get him. And if he didn't, would the Giants take him? And if they don't take him, you know he goes 11 or 12. Right? I mean, worst case is he sits there for the Broncos or the Raiders or Minnesota in one of their picks. It's like, okay, we didn't have to make a trade, but we're not going to let him get past us. Because unless he's the middle ground, but and then it's Bo Nix and Penix. Did we get lied to? It was just a fun question. Well, it's lying season when it comes to the NFL draft. Very much true. Uh, Someone else texts in and says, always thought J.J. was going to get the Levis treatment. Media needed some story to run with for two months before the draft. It it feels a little bit like it. It does. Lawrence and Burrow both skipped the draft, fellas. This is a nothing burger. Fine by me. Must be a Michigan fan. Well, no, I mean, it, it's you well, have the, no, 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 you have a right to that. The, the opinion. nothing, burger. the nothing burger, Nerf, nothing burger is like they coined that phrase. So, oh, my bad, because you know the cheeseburger, but it wasn't about a. Che- you know what? I'm not doing this. <laughs> I know what we're doing. I'm not doing that. No, I, I, listen, none of us are upset about it. He I don't stepped care. over the rig, David. Yeah, I did. I just <laughs> kind of. I'm so, I, I tried. Little sidestep right there. All right, let's get to the hockey. Wings lose six five again, and. Obviously, the post game, I expect part of the silver linings playbook where it's like, oh, bad, at least they got a point out of this. That's a huge point. No, it's not. Your playoff odds went from 50% to 15%. Uh, it's another loss. I don't know of another playoff push in history that featured winning five out of 20 games, but that's where we are. And you have very little chance of making it. And in the aftermath of the loss last night, Derek Lalonde had another puzzler. This is the third puzzler in six weeks. You started out with amidst the seven-game losing streak. The, well, if I told you we'd be in this spot at the beginning of the year, you would have taken it with one problem. You had a nine-point cushion, and you were in a seven-game tailspin and getting waxed by bad teams. Weird comment. The other night, he had another one about how, hey, you know, New Jersey won't be this bad next year. They could have 100 points. We may not be even in this position next year. What are we, soft-pedaling 25 now? And then this one last night, listen to it, and we'll react to it. Wow. Now, if you're coaching the youngest team in the league, that might be okay. Keep the spirits high. These are all 20, 21, 22-year-olds. Red Wings are the third oldest team in the league. But See, I'm going to disagree with that statement. I, even if you have the youngest team, you're so close to the playoffs. doesn't matter. You don't have a game like this. I know, but Rico, if they're kids, you might want to coddle a little. No. These are veterans. Yeah, you coddled them three weeks ago. Guys, we're, we have three more games to play. 
you play like this and we're done. So, no, this is where you go in there and you put the fear of God in them. Even if they are young, we can't have another game. We give up six goals. I know we scored five. We got a point. Doesn't matter. We gave up six. We lost the game. That's what should matter. I get what you're saying. I don't care. It's fine. I'm not mad about it. It's it's just all of it. It doesn't sound like a guy that, that A, you've said it. Doesn't sound like a guy who feels the heat or feels like he's coaching for his job. And it doesn't sound like a guy that's got a very high standard. I mean, I, I don't know how there's been just – if you don't want to erupt publicly, say less. Otherwise, would it kill you to just be like, no, yeah, great, we got a point. We didn't come prepared to get two points tonight. You know, when you're in the trail position all night and then you give up six goals total, it's not good enough. And I don't want them going into Toronto tomorrow thinking that one point is okay because clearly that's the message Lalone gave to the locker room. I don't want them going to Toronto thinking, well, if we can get a point, we'll be all right. No, get two points. You're in a playoff chase. This one point nonsense is it's, it's it speaks to the defeatist attitude of his last quote of hey we're just happy to be here. So Kenny, the, I'm with you. Every game now should be a win, and I know you want to win, but no, every game has to be a win. We are in playoff mode. We should have been doing this before, but guys, you want to go to the playoffs, you want to get to the big time. This is what you need to do. You you can't let them go out there and score. You can't have the mental lapses. You can't do all of these things and win. You got to you got one point. You, if you could, you should just give it back to the league and say, we don't want it. Well, that's part of the conversation, not Rico's deal, but my deal. I'm at a point, and you guys know this, I, I've just gone spite store. I just can't do it. I mean, I, 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 you can't call it a playoff push when you've won five out of 19 or five out of 20 games. Like, it, come on. If it means Lalonde is gone and it means Iserman speeds up the timeline and has a bold summer, I'd sign a piece of paper right now to miss the playoffs. I just there there should be a change. I don't know what the Lalonde approval level is, but if our callers are any indication, uh, it's treading near zero. And the Iserman one, listen, no one's trying to fire Steve Iserman, but you can have an honest conversation that this is disappointing. That at points this season we felt like we had turned a corner, and they are in one of the all time collapses this organization has ever had. It's not good enough. And, and when you put it with context, you don't have anyone in the league in the top 50 in scoring. Mm -hmm. That's – that you're just not talented, okay? Well, Steve put that roster together. So I would like to know where the people are at with it. And it's been a, a big day of hockey talk here. But as they get ready to play the Maple Leafs, I'll be honest, I hope the Maple Leafs put them out of their misery because I'm just I'm, – I'm done with it. Last night is another one of those WTF things where you're like, every time I buy in, mm. this is what they do. Even battling back to tie it at five, only to predictably lose in overtime. Mm -hmm. Ready to change the channel like, oh, wait, I, I got it. Okay. All right. Maybe we'll win this. Maybe not. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. You want to get some people in the mix? Let's, get the people. Let's go to Steve. He's been patient. Stevie, sorry that took so long. Welcome. Hey, no, no, no. I had to take an emergency work call, so I dropped off. But how you boys doing? Haven't talked to you in a while. Member of the Hockey Elite. How you guys doing? Excellent. Yeah. Great to have Glad you. Glad you joined you. us back. Thank you for responding to the bat signal. <laughs> and every time I call in subsequently, I'm always going to thank you for the Wojo's Dip song, like I requested. So, <laughs> once again, thank you, Roberto, on that. Um, but anyways, guys, let's approach this civilly. Uh, I won't call the Steve haters idiots. You guys don't call me a Steve bot. There's some nuance to my comments. But first, I'll start off with Lalonde. I, I, I can't defend him anymore. Um, so if you want him gone, fine. If you want to keep him around, I guess. But that's not what I really came here to talk about. It's the people that are really thinking that Eisenman should be on the hot seat. I, I think these people lack uh, an understanding of the bigger picture, to be honest. Uh, they're not seeing it. And what do you want? I mean, the guy has improved the team every year since he's been here. Absolutely. And Mike, I know we have the oldest roster in the league or what top three oldest roster. Their core is very young. Now, how would you feel if we were performing like this and their core were guys that were, you know, in their thirties, early thirties, late twenties, other than Larkin, really? I mean, you got a very, very young core. And one other thing that I heard you say, Mike, that maybe I'm being a little too picky on, we got nobody else here on defense beyond Mostider. 
I think Simon Evanson. Is Evanson counts. The problem is he's a total unknown, and it took six months to bring him up because of injury. Fair. Uh, no. Yes, I agree. And not some, mad. Some bad play in the preseason. Yep, not but mad. Listen, what I'll say about Eiserman, what I'll say about Eiserman, he is not perfect. There have been a couple of signings, acquisitions that I was a little questionable about, about Justin Hall, to name, a, to name one of them. But looking back since the Red Wings last won the Cup, with maybe one to two exceptions – and Vegas being one of them because, you know, how they got all their players. Every one of those teams that's won a cup has had a core of players that were drafted in the first round, and it took them a while to get here. And Iserman, those first two years, do they really count? I mean, Sider would have gotten here in 2020 had it not been for COVID. He would have been here by the end of the year. But some of these first-round pieces, I mean, he's absolutely hitting on. Sider is a, a great player. I think he'll be even better when we get some more legit defensemen in here. Edmonton obviously being one of them, as well as some of the other cats in Grand Rapids, like Johansson. And, oh, my gosh, I'm on the radio right now, so I can't remember the other one. No, you're Anyone fine. You're fine. Steve, Steve, the whole point is, but, look, but, look, if they miss the playoffs, then then you have to have a bold summer. I can meet you in the middle. If you, if you, if you are supremely I, confident that you are going to have a top-two pairing and a, a second-line pairing on D, and you're confident that somehow we'll have a goaltender we care about before two years from now with Kosa or Augustine, fine. But Steve's got to do more of the legwork in acquisition. you got to speed hope. this up. I Well, this is where I might disagree with you a little bit on. I mean, he always told you from the beginning, this is going to take some time, give me some patience. He's got the name and the trust of uh, the Illich is to, to Warner, garner that patience. But he is building through the draft. And I, I really think that he is slowly but surely making the team a little bit more competitive each year with some of these vet signings that I don't love, but I understand it. I mean, do we really want to be Buffalo? Do we really want to be Ottawa and just stick all of No, our but that's why you hire guys? Steve Eiserman. See, hold on. See, and let me let me respond to it. Steve, look, it's important yeah, yeah. because I, I, I have been in this battle before in the Pistons in years past. When you're comping yourself to garbage pail organizations, it's a straw man. Those organizations have morons running them. No one believes that that is Steve Eiserman. You hire Steve Eiserman, it's the equivalent of hiring Bob Myers to run your team, or Eric DaCosta in football, or Theo Epstein in baseball. The standard's higher. Mm -hmm. So what I'm not going to do is comp Steve Eiserman to Arizona ownership. We're not going to do that. It's just a straw man. It's like when the Pistons, well, well, you want a tank. I mean, oh, it's really worked out for the Phoenix Sun. Do not put Robert Sarver's name in the same sentence as other teams that have done it right. Eventually, the results have to matter. That's my only point, Steve. 248-539-9797. Get green, stay green with Natural Way Lawn and Tree Service. Limited time only. Purchase the full lawn program. Receive the free grub control and insect control. All you got to do is mention the station or the show or whatever the hell you like. Despite all the wacky weather, natural way, it remains the same. Get the first application down. Get yourself on the road to enjoying your lawn in the finite period of time that we call summer. It's natural way, fewer chemicals, professional applications, and custom tailored solutions to your lawn. Nobody else's. Visit naturalwaylawn.com for all your lawn care needs. Call 888-GET-GREEN. That's 888-GET-GREEN. Natural Way Lawn and Tree Service.
All right, David, give me some of the ticket texts. We'll get to the people. We have found someone who's actually going to this game tonight. Man, this man no. should be bought all the free beers he wants. I mean, the Tigers should pay this guy to go to the game. Behind tonight. home plate. I don't care where you know your what? ticket is. I'm going to get to David in a minute. I'm going to Joe. Joe, you are the the hardiest of souls. Not really. Nope. <laughs> Amazing. Joe's buying an umbrella right now. Let's a warm blanket. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try Joe later. <laughs> David, go ahead. Oh, my gosh. Someone says, I can't take listening to that audio or any of the other audio from that coach anymore. For my sanity, they need to fire Lalone now. That is Connor in a Amazon Let me van. Let me ask Kenny because obviously we're up against it. But, like, call her Steve. Uh, I was civil. I'm not mad at Steve. I just, I, I, how much more time am I supposed to allow for here? So I think there's a difference in what Steve is hearing and what we actually were saying. I think we're all okay with being critical of Steve Eiserman, right? We're not about to fire Steve no. Eiserman. Um, I think that's what he thinks being on the hot seat means is that well, we're my other our thing criticism is, means he's out of town. Right. And also if your defense of the criticism is, well, just wait until you see dot, dot, dot. What is that? Year six, year seven. And by the way, all we're asking for is to make the playoffs. Everyone makes the playoffs. Oh, well, you don't want to be Buffalo. Well, I didn't hire a moron to run my team. I hired the best in the game. And last offseason, we went into it with expectations of go get to Brinkett and then fill out your roster, and that'll be good enough. This offseason, we have a different expectation, but it's similar in the fact that all you have to do, make a couple of splashes and then insulate your young core and then make the playoffs the year after I and think do you're better. Gonna, I think you're going to be very disappointed. I hope not. You 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 at one point, though, thought that about Debrinkit. You at one point. No, no, no Debrinkit, I won't go back on anything I said. He was the best guy who had posted multiple 40-goal seasons that was remotely attainable. Sure. And Did nope. we ever say he was a top 10 or top 15, top 20 player? No. In fact, we said the opposite. No, my point was, though, that I think everybody on the show at one point was like, it's a great idea. It's not going to happen, but it's a great idea. I think you're going to be disappointed. I think... Once this bar keeps moving, I think Steve Eiserman understands the next step in the rebuild is to make a splash this free agency. I just would love to know who. I would love to know who. And, Kenny, here's the problem. You still don't have a goalie. And defensive-wise, look, Evanson's a name and an idea and a great hope. We have no idea if Evans could play. So you end up in this spot where it's cider. We hope Evanson's good. Mm -hmm. I have nothing else, and I have no goalie. And, and and now I can already hear the refrain, not from caller Steve, but from the bots. Oh, we'll just wait till Coaster Augustine's here, and we're just going to do this. And all then you'll over have your again. goalie. That's two years away. Like that's. Then you're wandering into Ken Holland territory of oh, a rebuild takes ten years. Which no, then no, it does not. Which then leads me to then why the hell did we hire Steve? Eisenberg? Exactly. His job was to do it faster. His job was to do it better. And by the way. His job would have been that if we were going to take six or seven years, it was to be in Stanley Cup contention. Not, not oh, God, let it help me. I'm poor wild card contention. Come on. Final spot contention. Right. You know what I'm saying. Right. Like, geez, man, we're going to be headed to year six next year. Right. And then I'm supposed to throw a parade if we're a wild card? Right. Not even home ice in a series contention. No, next year they better be in a better spot than they are this year. Like, not just backing into the playoffs or making your second or even first wild card. I want to see them be one of the three divisional teams in the playoffs next year. That's okay. my expectation long term. I hope you're right. I just tell you. It's some people in this town, there's like a limitless, it's like an endless loop. David, go ahead. Yeah, what are you talking about? This texture says he has improved every year. What more can you ask? I'll leave this to Kenny. I'll stay right here. I, Kenny, your world. I'm glad they've improved every year. Let me start by saying that. But also, as a lot of people are quick to point out to you, well, what did Ken Holland leave you with? Nothing. You were you had to improve. You couldn't possibly do any worse. What did you expect, him to flatline every year? Also, yeah, you've improved every year while still not making the playoffs. Then what improvement is there? All right. So you're not the San Jose Sharks. Wow, is that what comes up on the birthday cake? Congrats, not San Jose. Blow the candles out. <laughs> I mean, come on. Congratulations, you're better than Buffalo, who was you last year. All right, here's, your, here's, your, boy. here's your fudgy the whale ice cream cake, <laughs> not Buffalo. <laughs> Come on. 
I actually get that reference. I know you do. <laughs> we were Carvel kids. Sorry. If you know, you know. Oh, that's so good. Eiserman needs to fire almost every scout on the staff. It's a lot of picks by Steve that haven't done much. But if he's firing every scout yeah, on the staff, shouldn't we start looking at the man in the mirror? Thank you. And I don't I don't know. I don't endorse that last text. I don't think you need some organizational clean out. But I do think an acceleration of timeline when you when you're building these teams, everyone has a plan. But then there's it's like driving on the highway. There's going to be times you speed up and times you slow it down. I I do think we have to hit the accelerate a little bit, regardless of if they turn the trick and sneak in. This isn't progressing at a rate that unless you are the most Die hard of Steve Bott. I don't think anybody would would use the word thrilled with the way the rebuild's going. No. And when we hired Eiserman, I want to be thrilled. Be no different if we hired Theo Epstein to build the Tigers. You'd say I'm thrilled with Brad Holmes. Mm-hmm. That you're thrilled. Okay. But the Eiserman thing is supposed to emulate in hockey term and timeline what Holmes has done with the Lions. Right, that in year three or four, you're one of the four best teams in hockey. And now, how about okay. year five playoffs? <laughs> Multiple young people playing. And then year six, I, I'm with Kenny. You should be taking another yeah, step. Well, you're not going to like it. That That's why. If they stumble into that final spot, trust me. I know. They'll advertise it. Oh, everywhere. There'll be a big victory lap from Pizza Pizza. Mm-hmm. Don't you worry. Woo! What about Magic Puffs? <laughs> or whatever they're called. Crazy Puffs at the ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> They'll go borrow the uh, Tigers home run Pizza Pizza thing. Mm-hmm. Which is <laughs> totally not contrived. You mean that wasn't genuine? And they just, yeah. Never just came just, up with that on their own. Just, just let it go. But wait a minute. Torch said it was his idea. He wasn't pressured by anybody. That's what okay. he said. All right. right. Stop. Kenneth. <laughs> David, one more, and we will uh, reset everything, get a little football today. Yeah, anyways. I wonder if you can agree with this text. Eisenman needs to walk into the locker room Saturday in Toronto before the game, gather the team, and wham, Lalonde, you're gone. Please leave. <laughs> Escort him out. Tell the team you're coaching. Listen, get results. In, in a movie, I'd love it. This is real life. Things like that don't happen. Uh, Northville Lumber, we talk about them all the time. Oldest company in the state. Largest Trek stacking outlet in the country. Nobody stocks more. Nobody sells more Treks than Northville Lumber. Last year, contractors, homeowners, they bought enough Treks from Northville to cover 26 football fields. And there's a reason they can move this much product. They stock all colors of Treks decking, railing, lighting. And they do it all the time and for the lowest price. Get someone out there to build that deck for you. They'll introduce you to a Trek certified pro. All you need to do is call Northville Lumber today or simply go to NorthvilleLumber.com. That's NorthvilleLumber.com.
Tigers set to open an eight-game homestand tonight with Minnesota in town. Weather, though, looking like it won't be completely cooperative. Rain forecast until about 8 o'clock. Tigers and MLB think there's a window for them to get tonight's game in. You can bet they'll do their damnedest to play considering yesterday's rain out and the resulting doubleheader tomorrow. Our Tigers coverage starts in 15 minutes here on The Ticket. Pistons visit the Red Hot Dallas Mavericks tonight here on WWJ News Radio 950. Coverage there at 8.05. Checking the Masters leaderboard right now, Scotty Scheffler all alone at the top at 7 under. Bryson DeChambeau and Max Homa right behind him at 6 under. Tiger Woods tied for 23rd at 1 over. And speaking of a tradition unlike any other, Lions QB Jared Goff visited Augusta National and ESPN's Marty Smith caught up with him. Asked Goff what his coach's golf game is like. I can't picture MCDC as a golfer, Mike. More like an axe thrower or competitive. Yeah, stuff like that. Competitive chair throwing. At the Coral Health Update Desk, I'm Beanie Howell. For more, go to 971 the ticket or odyssey.com. All right, David, we take you to Tiger Baseball, which will be in front of dozens tonight in brutal weather. Uh, David, let's run down what the hell we talked about today. Yeah, let's start here with the J.J. McMystery that you had regarding the draft. He is not going to be in Detroit where we lied to. It's just something interesting for a guy that we have presumed would most assuredly be a top 12 selection. Some, look, I've believed the Vikings would go up and get him at five. Rico said it. This is a home away from home. You know the Wolverines are going to be out. Oh, right. the skunk bears are going to be out in full force. And you're not here? Did we get lied to like we got lied to about Will Levis last year? I don't know. It was just interesting. Yeah, does he want to invo- avoid being that last quarterback sitting in the green room? Every pick, the camera's there. Oh, wait. The Giants didn't take him. Oh, wait. Okay. Yeah. Well, here it is. The, uh, the Broncos passed on him. Whoa. Must be going to the Raiders. Well, there is hope in Detroit yet. Donovan Klingon? <laughs> or who in this NBA draft for the Detroit Pistons at number one? Mike says, Mike and Rico both say it's an awful NBA draft class. It's the worst NBA draft of my adult life. Look, yeah. uh, if the Pistons win the number one pick, you probably got to take Alexander Saar, who's a center slash power forward. Pray to God he can develop a real three-point shot, not one where he only makes 18 of them in a year. Uh, also only played 17 minutes a game in Australia, averaging nine points. I, guys, it's awful. But Klingon is going pro because if the Pistons don't get that or – Let's say Pistons are picking one and they won't take a pure center. Number two will, because look at these other players. Yeah, here's this is one where if you're the Pistons, maybe help yourself out. Of all the times not to win the lottery, it's this year. You yeah. get the number three pick, and with Mike at three, would you take Dalton Connect at three? I, because he's the only uh, one that I think can actually help this team. I gotta go right higher. Now. I gotta go higher upside. I would have to go spin spin a wheel, you know, uh, pick this Euro. I, I, I mean, I think he could walk in, play, and maybe, you know, they won't have the worst record in okay, franchise yeah, history. Not interested. I, okay. I need a superstar, brother. It's You know what, Mike? They're going to walk in there, and Monty Williams is going to say, hey, congratulations on not being the worst Pistons team ever next year. That's if Monty's still the coach in about a week. <laughs> David? And before we get to Lalone, which was a giant, I mean, crazy comment, I just wanted to, I don't know if this is good news or bad news for you, Kenny, but you can't marry your cousin in Tennessee anymore. Legislation passed, Kenny. I know that throws a little bit of a a wrench into your plans. Just trying to ruin my weekend right before. All right. Not at all. As Rico put it most appropriately, why do we even need a law for this? Isn't it common sense? Did, I thought did, we were done with the whole inbreeding thing. Hold on. <clears throat> did, did we just skip over something? What? As Kenny said, great, now you're trying to ruin my weekend. Yes, he did. Did, did he, he not did just, say that. Did he not just say that? 
I will refer. <laughs> I will refer to you what I told Mike when he told me that during the break, and it rhymes with truck. <laughs> okay, and know. you. Like, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Did, like, I think he was just saying you will be putting him in a bad mood as he starts his week. Ah, okay. thought that was obvious, Rico, but you chose violence instead. I Thank you. Choose, I thought it was one of those like needle scratch. Like, wait a minute. Maybe for you it was, Rico. You hear what you want to hear. That's right. You tell him, Kenny. I just heard what you said. David. Well, speaking of hearing what you said, Lalone had some comments after yesterday's game. I'm just going to play them for you here real quick. Get out. Happy we got a point, guys. I just, I've had enough. That's the third weird Lalone audio clip we've played in six weeks. I don't get it. And I'm not sitting here telling you he's got to be torts and get out there and go nuts and slam a chair. But say less. If I mean, it's going to be this type of Sesame Street stuff, I, I, I'm i done. This team has won five of their last 20 hockey games. I don't need to hear that. Yes. Yep, going into Toronto, it's one point. That's good enough, boys. I mean, in the previous game, did he walk in? Hey, we didn't get shut out. We did not get shut out, and that's something to hang your hat on. You scored. You fought to the last second. Rico, how was your Friday night? I don't know. I didn't get hit by a car. All right, cool. <laughs> High bar to clear. Fun. No, you know what I mean. Right. I, come on. And as we get ready to get to Tiger Baseball, we ask the question. You guys ask the question. We want to know from people. How many are going to tonight's game? It's not people's fault, and the Tigers have a winning record. Now, here's your issue. Not only is it a pitcher's duel, and it's going to be an exceedingly boring game because Scooble and, and Pablo Lopez are both really good. Dude, this weather is brutal. Ah, is it 2,500 actual bodies in seats? It will be interesting because now it's official. It will begin in a delay. Oh no! <laughs> so now, oh no, we are down to hundred, no, hundreds of people. Oh no! Well, I'm sure they've got some piping hot crazy puffs for you <laughs> at the park for you to enjoy while freezing your balls off. <laughs> I just, Godspeed. Now look, weather's going to be beautiful tomorrow. 60 to 65 sunny you get a double header sunday's gonna be gorgeous it'll be 74 and partly cloudy you're good man if you can make alterations make them because the next three baseball games great i mean you just really needed to get out of the house tonight if you're going to that game like <laughs> you know what i can't stay at home i gotta i gotta do something well, i'm Don't surprised care. roberto's not going he never wants to be home oh, come on that's jeez, man Come on, David. With 60 seconds left in the show, you just go Jeff Galuli on this guy? Just, man. Wow. David just hopped right out of the bushes and hit him right in the back of the knee with a pipe. Just How Christian of me. <laughs> and I haven't forgotten about you, Roberto. Santa's watching. Have a nice weekend, sir. All right, next week, programming note. I mean, we'll be here all week, but weird. I think it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Day games, but we're here. We'll be on after Tiger Baseball, and let's face it, the new baseball rules have really helped with this. The games end quick. We'll be with you. Uh, and it's a series against the team I actually want to watch because I'll tell you, the Twins are awful. Injuries have hurt them, but they're oof. Yeah. Rico, division's up for grabs. Well, maybe they can take three or four. That's all I want. And then on to the next. We'll see what they do. Game's going to start in a delay tonight. Not my problem. I think Rieger's next. Yeah. Fully loaded on Chipotle. All right, we're out of here. We will talk to you Monday at 2.